right, hello everyone. Uh, the stream is about to start. Uh, first off, if you haven't yet, be sure to buy the Buy Plushie from Buddy Postros. Is here right now, and I'm unmuting them right now. Do it. Do it. Hello? Do it. Do Hello? it. Hello? Do it. <laughs> yes, do it now. Hi, chat. <laughs> All right, uh, and... Hello, buddy. <laughs> and we're in uh, terms of, like, being really... Stream. Uh, we're gonna be watching even our good buddy Matt Game Theory. I Game Theory. Can't wait! I'm so <laughs> I'm so excited to watch Matt Pat. <laughs> I couldn't be more excited. Everyone knows he's the best. He's the best YouTuber. That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> my favorite my favorite YouTube channel of all time. I want Man, Winifred. So I, I I think they mean Winfrey. <laughs> no, Winifred. I I assume they mean Winfrey. I hope uh, it's it's Winfrey combined with Freddy Fazbear. I, is my audio cutting out? Uh, it isn't on saying that my stream. end. It isn't in the call, but apparently it is on the stream. That's weird. Testing, testing. Everything looks fine on Discord's end. And uh, and OBS. So I think we are going to get started with find it. Okay. <laughs> JC for the four ninety nine. <laughs> oh no! You have to. I do have to, Zach. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Zach, oh. it, it's it's over for you, man. <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of bad news. The baron of bad news, even. Yeah, um... No. So, you know that thing that my audience likes to do, where they like to either shrink people or put them in jars? No, please. Please don't put me in a jar. You're going in a jar. Going please in don't a put jar. me in a jar. I don't want you're, to go in a jar. You're going in a jar. Hey, right, hold please, on. Please, please don't do this to you're, me! You're, you're going in a jar. Yep, hold on. I need, to I need to find the jar first. <laughs> You know, and is it the one I sent you? <laughs> it's the one that I sent you. That's the one I'm looking for. Oh, was it the other way around? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I because of the ban ban stream, I needed one from you. You're right. It's so funny on speedrun.com. My only ban ban three speedrun because I only did one. Um, it's just it's the run, and in the bottom right there is myself. David Baron and demuted all inside of jars. It's great. I love my audience. That was a lie. Um, nah, nah, I do. Top mm. ten lies. Sometimes, most of the time. Mm. That's that might be pushing it. All right. And anyway, uh, let's put Clyde in a jar. We're gonna have to shrink Clyde a little to fit the. Jar. So you're Jeez. really not. You didn't make don't him shrink me. You really... did make him huge. I, I do not want to be shrunk. Well, would you rather be shrunk or put into the jar? I Too don't bad. want either. Too Hello, bad, bitch. Both are happening. Oh. <laughs> okay. So let's let's actually get into the stream now. Um, I am I am so excited. So we watched a lot last time. Didn't watch... Yeah, we were on stream for like six hours. Uh, five hours, three minutes. So we covered a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. By the way, We're, what everyone era of here is tired. Map content are we at now? By the way, like we jumped like, around. We we jumped around. We saw some of his early stuff. We saw some of his late stuff. We saw some of his book stuff. And now YouTube is upset with me. It doesn't like long playlists. I <laughs> see. Okay. And this is an 89 video playlist. Yeah, no, that's big. <laughs> yeah. 89. 89. You know what we should do? We should watch the entirety of a live stream. No. <laughs> I think I'd actually go insane. <laughs> Thank you, S5, for the $5. Cookies and wine. Okay. Yep. Please. <laughs> but Zach can't eat food. <laughs> and you're gluten free. That's my head cannon. Gluten for gluten free cookies for Zachary Zinyak. That's my. Well, I guess well. No, I guess in this case, it actually is Clyde. 
True. Can Clyde eat cookies, Zach? Is that what's what's the lore? Uh, Clyde would not be able to eat cookies, no. Hello once again, theorists. Interesting. Welcome okay. To Matt Pat. Okay. Um. <laughs> Oh my god. I keep telling you to switch to Opera. This is not a sponsorship. Yeah, you do. However, I would take that deal. Opera GX, hey, hit me up. Email in about page. Just go back and we'll find random ones because the playlist is killing YouTube. <laughs> Thank you, Bomberman, for the five dollars. RE8 baby in the jar. No, yes. no, no, please. Yes. Please, please. Do this it. Is supposed, this is supposed to be Do a happy it. day for me. This is supposed to be a happy day for me. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Do it. You can't do this. Okay, I need to find the. <laughs> okay, hold on. And also, I need to fix fucking Chrome, of all things. Chrome eats up so much CPU. It's ridiculous. It's so bad. I didn't realize how bad it was until I switched. RE8. Right there. Zach's best friend. Zach's favorite character. I hate everything. That's your favorite character? It's not my favorite character. It's Zach's favorite character of all time. Oh. Zach's best friend, even. Oh. Uh, we'll have to. I don't want it behind me. There we go. <laughs> Wait to Astro around now. What? Yeah, that, you know, because I'm canonically turned into a plush now. Right. Okay. That is canon. Is there actually a FNAF? No. I'd hope so. I would hope so, because this jank ass no, there, there video is. playlist is not going to cut it. Don't make me use a Microsoft Edge. A poster for the FNAF movie came out. When did this happen? What? There's a new FNAF movie poster. Oh, there is? <laughs> it's like... Bendy style. <laughs> yeah, go to Blumhouse's Twitter if you want to see it. Or just go to Johnny Blocks, the boy. Shout out Johnny Blocks. Okay, <laughs> I'm doing something I never thought I'd do. I'm opening Microsoft Edge. Oh god, you can tell <laughs> it's getting dire. It's getting dire. Very. Incredibly. Uh, which is also probably a good thing, because that means I won't be signed in. I can't leak anything on X. Okay, how much CPU is this going to eat up? It's probably I actually going to be better. Chrome oh yeah, no, this is so bad. actually great. I don't know why Chrome is so bad. They set the gold standard, and then they decide, hey, what if we make the gold standard shit? Also, can I just say, in the new FNAF movie poster, it has the sign, and Freddy doesn't have his hat in the sign. It looks cursed. <laughs> they, took, out late. they took the boy's hat away. <laughs> Wait, what? Which which video do you think we should start with? And also, like, what, like, what kind of order are we doing here? Like, mm -hmm. we mainly, I think. The, like the newer ones is what we mainly didn't see. Um, we could uh, try to get the timeline this stream. I don't know. I think we should start with FNAF. Since we saw. No, no, no. Why am I going in the jar? No, no, don't put me in the jar. No. Wait. Oh. Well. Why am I going in the jar? <laughs> you know how it goes. You know the rules you around You gotta make here. the jar a bit bigger. <laughs> Or, could be four things or in jar. you know, you do this. Give me my own jar? Yeah. 
Get your own. Uh, yeah, I got my own jar. Zach, you still have to stick with the baby, though. Why? Why is this happening to me? Because fuck you. People, people love to see the Clyde <laughs> flush in danger. All right, uh, let's start with this one. We got Reese's. So he we watched we this wanted. one. <laughs> we did this? We won't let self-doubt. Yeah, this is the right, one um, where Matt Pat thought it was the bite of 87 was like, no, scientifically that doesn't make sense. Oh God, I don't have my ad blockers installed. No. Watch the instead, is such a disaster. In, instead, I'm just gonna say to people, do not buy whatever the ads are showing you. Northeastern. I think you can still do dark mode though with a little dot. Make an impact in environmental right? Let me see. Yeah, appearance. Oh uh, yeah. So we don't have to blind the audience. Oh no, but that reset the ads. It's okay. We can skip this ad. There's got. Okay. Bucks! Actually, I love the bucks! Captions are on by default. Also, um, also, before we start, not to bring attention away from MatPat, but the Clyde plush is now officially fully funded. Let's go! Oh, yeah. We just sold the 200th plush. Thank you, JP. Thank you, JP Cummings, for the $5. Put a little, put a little bendy in postures. <laughs> okay, we'll give them some comfort. Yeah, hold on. Shout out to someone ghostly for being the 200th, 200th buyer of the Clyde plushie. Well, 200th confirmed one, I think. I don't know. 200th confirmed buyer. We are now able to distribute them after one hour of being sold. Let's go, absolute win. Wow, this is just like a more scuffed chrome. Oh, why does the download <laughs> show up there? No, yeah, Edge sucks. Chrome is whatever, just takes up too much CPU. And Opera, I actually like it a, a lot less in than Chrome in a lot of ways, but it makes my computer run nicer. <laughs> I definitely. Also, just on the first frame of this video, I'm here to deliver my typical bad takes because I love having bad takes. And you know what? That's that's kind of my thing now, I guess. Well, no, Zach has bad takes in liking things. Um, I generally have bad takes in disliking things. However, I'm actually here to pull a Zach. Oh? I kind of like the FNAF 4 box. <laughs> huh. Because I kind of... This is one of the rare cases in the FNAF series where I kind of like a fully unsolved mystery. And I just... I like the idea of something being not so significant that it, like, ruins the timeline or anything, but something that's just, like very easy to discuss like what was originally in the box what was it what was the point of it what let it's just like a it's a fun conversation to have that doesn't actually hurt me i kind of like it <laughs> the the reason the reason i'm not a fan of the box and the reason it bothers me so much is the fact that it's a seemingly important mystery that has never been solved that was put at the end of what was supposed to be the final game in the series that was you know supposedly going to tie up loose ends yeah, in context, it's it's pretty horrendous. Yeah, all right. I, just, I, think, it's a, I think it's a fun conversation. All right, that 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 that's a lot of donations. Let's watch the video now. There's so many <laughs> things in jar. Also, I'm realizing this is the video that Markiplier's in. This is gonna be a great intro. It is, huh? Oh boy, get started then. Gotta be a code to open this. Bite of eighty-seven. <laughs> how 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 would you put that in? I, I must be close. Incident of eighty-three. One movie, eleven animatronics, what? eleven kids, <laughs> one movie, one pet guy, one killer. Hex code for purple backwards. Is that Mark? Mark applied. Damn. Yes, Matt Pat. It was me. <laughs> it was me the whole time, and that's no theory. <laughs> All right, that video is over. I <laughs> love this man. Oh my god. I good like theory, that he, guys, good theory. I like how heavily that pixelated no he is theory. right now. Really really adds really adds to uh the charm. I I I yes. <laughs> Yay. I love that goofy I love this intro. Bro. I love this intro though. It's it's so much more simple, but it's it's so nice. I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah. 
Bam. Hello, Internet. I like Welcome it. Welcome to the Five that, Nights at Freddy's good. podcast. Oh, uh, sorry. I, How many I, of those exist? Theory. Game Theory. <laughs> the, the show that covers True. theories on other games in the two-week interval. That made built by gamers? FNAF, but if I'm ever going to see requests That'd for games great. other than FNAF 4 in my Twitter feed, this video needed to be made because I have a confession, Internet. I love I this still. I made a mistake. <laughs> In my last <gasps> NAF video. What? Not my research, mind you. <laughs> Impossible. Have a mistake in a theory. We could not be the bite of 87 victim was actually 100% right, both scientifically and, as you've been eager to point out, lore-wise. No, I was wrong in calling this the bite of 87. I'm was it the bite of 87? Hey, it's why they're called theories, after all. Why did you stop using that one weird picture of him? Bite Hold of on. I'm mad enough. Where does that, that picture come from? What happened to it? <laughs> I don't know. I recognize it, though, yeah. I don't know. I like the one where he's at the podium with his hands shaking. I this, want that one more. This one's just very oddly saturated. Like, he yeah, looks... Yeah, he's, he's borderline orange. Yeah. Enough to admit my mistakes. Hey, it's why they're called theories, after all, right? Anyway, in this case, Scott was sure to let me know my he's error a, in his Scotty C. comment on any of he my was videos so humble on the franchise, to my knowledge, which was really exciting, but it did leave me wondering, should I feel... I think every single time Scott cool? interacted yeah, with the community to help them out with theories, it only led to bad things. Comments. I only delete oh, for sure. Game theorist box. No, I don't want your free PSN codes, okay? So, I guess Scott must have deleted it himself. Maybe there was a typo. Or maybe a clue to FNAF 5. Oh, come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, Pokemon Trading Card Live. Wow. Oh, my. Affordable insurance? Hell yeah. <laughs> Is the reason you paused on this frame? Yeah, I was gonna see if it's possible to get an ad blocker on edge. <laughs> One sec, guys. I'm I do not want to put up with this for the entire stream. You could get YouTube premium with that donation money. <laughs> but I could, but is it worth it for this? Yeah. Ad oh, got it's Donald Trump. On... <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so scout. <laughs> Could you imagine if Noah gets a virus live on stream? <laughs> Are you in? Oh Let's go. no! You son of a bitch, man! The Flash now playing. Why is this so painful oh, man, now? Not see that movie. Make s'mores a bite better. There's got. <sighs> okay, hold on. This is entirely your fault. I refuse to entertain your anger. What do you mean it's yeah, my an fault? Ad blocker. I'm gonna try Chrome again. <laughs> because at this point, I I really cannot be fucked. <laughs> what does that mean? To watch I, Matt Pat when actually watching him. I cannot be fucked over this. All right. Uh, uh, let's, let's just pick a random one. Um, uh, huh? Son, please direct all your I hatred anyone. towards Microsoft. I mean, direct Google. your hatred towards. What am I feeling salty about today? Um, distract. I got nothing. Direct your hatred towards the people and direct your money towards all your money. <laughs> all of it. We have currently sold 214. You don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And okay, thank... we're watching Ultimate Custom Night? Okay. Thank you, JC, for the $5. Okay. Now, you guys can still see this, right? Uh, You are no longer streaming for us. Yeah, because you closed the fucking window. This guy. Alright. You can see him now, right? 
Yes, because you have now started. Hey, I can't hear you over this bomb ass intro. You're not gonna like this intro. Dear diary. Oh Yesterday no, no, I am not. So amazing. I met such <laughs> a wonderful oh, guy, boy. and I know just how to get him. It He'll gets worse. Oh my the end god. Day, you know what? There's implications. It gets worse. I'll tell him that I've solved the lore of his game. Actual like eyeshadow. Oh no. And once I it's, have him, it did be get worse. Forever. You weren't lying. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you. It's it's bad. Thank you, Exxon, for the buy and or plush. Uh, Zach, would you happen to have PNGs of either of those? I feel like if anyone does, it's you. Yep, I've got. I I think I've got a PNG of the five plush, and I can get one of all. Yeah. Either one. Person did not specify. They just. Also, thank you, uh, JP no, no, Cummings, for the five dollars since he took his bendy away. Give Postro Alice instead. I had to, cause immediately after Bomberman, then donated to put Benny in his own jar. Which, by the way, don't do that to each other. Don't don't play off each other's donos like that. There, I, I checked the VC chat. I sent a transparent image of the five plush. Okay. Shout out Fi. I had that on hand for when I made that bad Photoshop edit of the two of. Like my plush and his fighting in uh, hell. Yeah, you did do that. Which got more likes than the original promo I posted. Uh, the dreaded googling a woman in and uh. Yeah, I was gonna say, be careful. Be careful. <laughs> the dread of googling. A woman. Hey, yo. Never look up Toy Chica on stream. <laughs> oh no, not going to do that. Actually, you know, I'm just gonna look up Toy Chica and see how long it takes to find something bad. It took me literally four seconds last time. Yeah, it's been one second. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, her in a maid outfit. Why is this actually so good? <laughs> it's actually really nice art. Anyway, back to the stream. Great. Uh, so this in one individual wanted out. Jar with back. Which is not strange in the slightest. And then one. Which I still think, based on its spelling, should be pronounced feet. Just die. Running out. He sounds dumb. It does. Okay, I don't have any indicating tabs open. Turn the display back on. So, we're all running on minimum sleep, by the way. Oh, yeah. I, 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 was, I was saying to Muted and Isaac before the stream started that I'm currently running on four hours of sleep, both because I was too excited about the Clyde plush to sleep and also because I had bad stomach pains. So, yeah, Zach, Zach ate food yesterday. Worst mistake of their life. Worst mistake of my life. I ate food and I was actually in pain for the rest of the night. All right, let's watch. Uh, let's watch Matt Pat uh, cosplaying Boy Chica, Bill Scott. <laughs> oh, what was that for? Oh. How can Mangle be walking around in FNAF 2 before all the animatronics are possessed? How can Springtrap be experimenting with Remnant when he's sealed in a oh. wall? Hey. Hi, hey. Spectre. Answer me! I don't know. That's exactly what I worried. Pat, Pat's like, transforming no. into Lank Man. Look no! around his face. No! The fan thing was still a joke. Hello, Internet. In the UCL. Welcome to Game Theory. Getting burned by hippos since 2018. Not every story has to have. It's gonna that. happen again, Matt. <laughs> sometimes, uh, it's see, gonna sometimes happen the again. Just Many story. times. You try to read into every. Didn't know he ever actually acknowledged this. <laughs> do you feel less funny now? Do you feel less clever? No. <laughs> I want to see how he actually reacts to it, though. He just brushes. The, if he just brushes this off and says it's not about him, then he's totally lying to himself. Well, I think he's he a thing and whatever. find meaning in everything anyone says. You'll just drive yourself crazy. Kind of, kind of harsh there, Scott. Speaking of story. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like how he's self-aware for a lot of these videos. I will give him credit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he literally called one of his more controversial recent theories, FNAF, you're going to hate this. <laughs> yeah, he, he's very self-aware with the stuff he's making at this point. He knows what I he's doing. It, but it, it's something I really appreciate about Matt Pat's content. He also knows that, like, by now he knows some of the damage he's done. Like, um, like making everyone think <laughs> FNAF 1 takes place in 1993. That's the big one that he, like, apologized for. <laughs> Can I just say how dramatic that wording is, though? The damage he's done. <laughs> Look, he, he's done damage. He's done damage. The irreparable damage he has done to Five Nights at Freddy's as a whole. Yes. Five Nights at Frombo's. For his last FNAF theory, I was at the lowest of lows. The survival logbook threw a lot oh, of... Oh, yeah. He couldn't figure out Cassie's I, name. I don't think anyone was really expecting. Reveals like Michael Afton being the bite victim were interesting, but also... Hmm? What? You don't remember... You don't remember that? Uh-uh. How do you what? not? What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay. Maybe we need to go back then. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> except you... I'm not on the playlist know... anymore. <laughs> I don't know how a FNAF fan could not remember that theory. Because that was the common belief for three years straight. That Mike was the bite victim? Yes. But then how the fuck do you explain FNAF 1? He's a robot. Okay, so this was what crazy people believe. I mean, there's millions of them then. This was the common belief in the FNAF community. I see. For three years. Well, you know what? Nazism was the common belief in Germany back in 1945. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... <laughs> uh, you just got the witch's cackle out of me. Thank you, Zaxxon, for the five dollars. Okay, okay, so one more. Put some pasta in the jar with pasta. Okay, that's wholesome. That's wholesome. From Please Don't Crash. There are no good browsers anymore. <laughs> They're all either fucking shit or they crash. Plain macaroni with Alfredo. <laughs> Alfredo's yummy though. Squeak said demuted is going Joker mode. <laughs> <laughs> I get compared to the Joker frequently. <laughs> Thing you didn't. I did. <laughs> you didn't. I did. But anyway, okay, let's get let's get the demuted uh, up to speed. I guess you said that you did leave the FNAF space for a period of time. Yeah, I left um, I left before FNAF World. That is that so is when I stopped being a FNAF fan and I only came back the, around around the time of uh Security Breach's release. Well, I basically, just, like, you know the you know the Gregbot theory? Yeah. Basically, it's the same thing as that except it was more commonly believed and had a little more evidence. Um, but primarily due to the fourth closet and the survival logbook coming out, people uh, believe the theory was that um, Michael Afton died in the bite of 83 and was put back to and was, I will put you back together, put back together as a robot uh, by William Afton, who then lives life, and that's why he can survive sister location, that's why he can only die in six, because the remnant gets burned away, that's the theory, essentially. Right, because, yeah, and that, that was his explanation for, like, the glowing dot eyes, too, because it was, like, his endoskeleton eyes. Yeah, the glowing <sighs> eyes, the only being able to die in fire, um, other shit, that. You know, I hate that theory so much. Can I be so, so real about that? Okay, see, the thing is, right, I think that theory's goofy, but I genuinely think it's less goofy than the actual explanation of him being a walking, like, empty, like, thing of skin that's basically just a remnant balloon. If Scott chose to actually flesh out that story, I actually think it could have been fine, yeah. I think it could have been I, I genuinely prefer him being a robot. And that's where things sat until <sighs> now. With let's let's see what he's got to say about FNAF UCN. Book, the fourth closet, and what seems to be the final FNAF game, Super FNAF Brothers <laughs> Ultimate. They're all here. And now, with both these releases, we're finally in a true. position for fun to see all the puzzle pieces we're working with. Which means one Freddy, last examination of the franchise from top to bottom. And like half the cast, bottom, actually. Starting 
with custom night this week, and then next week stepping back and looking Jack across the entire timeline to see oh, if we can wrap Jack things up in a neat little soaked bow now that we can see all the events and key players. So step through the curtain, Funtime Foxy, because the show's about to start. It's time for me to pull a candy cadet and tell you a story. <laughs> what is with all the strange fucking edits in this video? Look at that. <laughs> yeah, he looks great. What are you on about? That is... That is horrible. Uh, that I is think the word you're terrifying. looking for is horrifying. Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. I'm maybe I, I guess I'm desensitized. Like when when he mentioned Michael after me the butt victim, Noah screamed, and I was just like, yeah, because I've I have seen every game, every FNAF game theory from 2014 through 17, no 18. Uh, I've seen all of them probably 10 times each. Yeah, I've seen like most of these. The, the 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 whole like Mike being the bite victim thing, I heard a million times already. All right, let's um. Yeah, I've seen them many times. Let's just keep going. We're two minutes in. A story of anger that never dies. A story of never-ending suffering. And I'm not just talking about me trying to write these theories. Today, I tell you the story of how Ultimate Custom Night ends the FNAF franchise in the same place where it all began. As soon as you start playing I, Custom I Night, wish, you can man. tell that Scott's up to his usual tricks. <laughs> Yeah, that. But beyond being gaming's biggest troll, I mean, Scott has clearly taken a game that most of us assumed was just a fun little add-on to Capstone the series and has used it to deliver a full-on 100% canon addition to the brand. I find it really funny that he used Toy Freddy Gaming there during <laughs> this Toy is Freddy his, Gaming. This is his whole, like, synopsis. This theory of mine proves that Scott added a secret hidden narrative to the story and it's fucking Toy Freddy just sitting there being a gamer. Yeah, well, I messed with Mr. Hug, it's canon. If we take a look at Gamer Toy Freddy, Brand you'll guy. see he's, he's playing Snap 1. Which oh, confirms the Help Watching theory before Help Watching came out. You know, okay, Zach? <laughs> no. <laughs> your your map pet voice is like him 10 years in the future. When he's still yeah. trying, but also you're like the a, gravel you're is like taking over. You're like a chain smoking map pet. Chain smoking Help. Map pet. Help. 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 It's or been dead most for you. in character dialogue once you die, which is pretty nice considering you die a lot in this game. A lot. <laughs> Maybe you do, Matt, but I'm pro gamer. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad he included the Nightmare Mango one. At 3 a.m. on purpose. <laughs> I just really wanted to see what she would say in this case. What, you guys don't believe me? Seriously, I'm good at this game. I did it for the lore. I did it for the lore. Through these death lines, we can immediately start piecing together what exactly is going on here. Okay, I am interested. Lines I am interested in seeing what he has to say about this because I love the UCN death lines. They are so goddamn interesting. Well, let's hope this doesn't ruin it for you. Yeah. Feels that we're powerless to escape. You can die. We'll be making music. Together. I think he gets pretty much everything about the lines, right? Nightmarian is the best voice in that game. Nightmarian has the it's, best voice, but really it does good. not suit Nightmarian. To me, that should have been Nightmare's voice. Yeah, should... I, don't, I don't like Maybe. how Nightmare's voice is just him constantly inhaling like he's Darth Vader. Thank you, David Barron, for the $11 Canadian. Can you add a desk on the desk, please? Oh, we're brother. Not doing this, David. Brother. David, we're not. David, we're brother, not I still have the last time someone asked for that. Yeah. It happens. Way more often than you than you might think. This is the most ADHD stream overlay thing ever. Yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, hey, if you want if you want ADHD stream overlay, go to my most recent stream and skip to the very end. It's bad. <laughs> I just like the horse. The horns. The horse is a necessary part of the. Show. Without the horse, we have nothing. We are powerless without the horse. Without the horse, we have nothing. I don't know what I just grabbed, but it's moving. Also, shout out to the person who just bought a Clyde plush named Zombie Zack. That's got to be the most base name I've ever seen. <laughs> huh, I wonder why you feel that way. I don't know. Okay, desk is on the desk now. <laughs> without the horse, we have nothing. Seeing you powerless is like music to me. I don't like either of the puppet voices in this game. 
Neither of them really fits the character, I think. I like the regular puppet's voice a lot, because it's like... With the other ones, I could I could believe that it's like straight up the voice of an animatronic, but because the puppet is straight up a puppet with no voice box, I just like that it's the actual spirit talking. I mean, I like it more than uh, than I like the Nightmare Yon voice. Oh. More voice lines indicate I hate the name Nightmare Yon so much. Eternity, we also I like it. it. I feel like when when Scott was filling out the copyright or whatever, he ran out of letters. I think I do think it was to make the name. I I think it was just to make the name shorter. It wasn't for the copyright thing, but just to make the name shorter. Thank you, David Baron, for the eight dollars Canadian desk on desk on desk. Now you're talking. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, where where do I where did I put the desk? There's the desk layer. My OBS is a mess right now because of all. Of yes. This. Imagine me when I had like thirty of them. Oh no! I accidentally. Zach's jar. No, no not Zach's I jar. jar. <laughs> Anything Whatever but Zach's jar. What's Zach, what's Zachary Zinyak, creator of Dreams of Insomnia, going to do without their jar? Oh, no. Okay, I'm moving Bendy off the desk on the desk. Hang out there. Same with the five plush, actually. Both hang out in the... Uh, there you go. Fantastic. And die, or maybe more. <laughs> David Barron for the eight Canadian desk on desk on desk on desk. Yeah. Has too much money. IRS, you should definitely check this guy. Oh, fuck, he's Canadian. <laughs> CRA. CRA. Find this man. <laughs> The way it shows up in Discord as or in, in OBS as well, I have desk two and then I have desk two two. Squeaks, we've already seen the video. I know the video. Thank you, JC, for the four ninety nine. Give Fetty a glue bottle for the prisoners after this video. Okay. After we finish this video, well, actually we're only part way through. Fuck, I might as well. Okay. Um, 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 uh, okay. There's that, and then Glue bottle. <laughs> Glue. Uh, I love the donos. <laughs> love the donos. David Baron says, I don't have too much money. I'm just really fucking irresponsible with it. That's why, that's why you need the... Uh, what is it, CRA? Yeah, Canadian <laughs> yeah. Revenue Agency. Yes, you need to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't entirely disagree. It ain't enough to ban this guy. I want him arrested. <laughs> By the way, um, first be sure to check out Welcome to a Scary Movie when that... David Barron is yeah. hard on. Everyone, check out David. Everyone log into Twitter right now and follow at... If you don't have Twitter, then never log into Twitter, please, I beg of you. But if you do, uh, follow at WTA Scary Movie. Okay, let's uh let us let us keep watching Jail <laughs> More accurately, we can die just over and over and over again. What a gift to relish, mango. a victim that can't perish. Let Teddy's death again and again and again. Her voice sounds awesome, I don't care. Oh no, it's hers. Great. It's hers. It's she, the the woman. Oh, her die. voice makes me feel things. Tired dying. of dying, will By you? Way, for those... What are you about to say, Matt? I don't- I don't- I... <laughs> Yeah, he's about to ref- he's- no, he just does a cheeky yeah. little reference, it's fine. Thank you, S5, for the two dollars. Smiley face and the cookie, for sure. Cookie. Of you who don't no, have an encyclopedic just... knowledge of every element of this franchise, that toy chica line is actually a fun little callback to one of my favorite moments in the franchise. Foxy Fighters update 1.2 for FNAF World. You won't get tired of my voice. FNAF World's such a fun anyway, game. Our character here is kind of trapped for eternity in a never-ending cycle <laughs> of torment and death. It should be pretty.
pretty obvious what's going on here, but I think Jacko Chica really sums up the situation best. The fire within me burns eternal, and now you shall as well. That's right. We're trapped oh, in yeah. heck. H E, H -E double, hockey double hockey stick. Hockey or two like two, two pick. Since like. we valued. Please just fucking say hell. <laughs> YouTube does not yeah, care. We'll get demonetized. No. I don't think they demonetize you for like actually saying the place hell. Right? You guys I don't think they do. Okay, you guys are both too neurodivergent. He's just bad at making jokes. That's all this is. Yeah, but he does this all the time. He always calls hell H E double hockey sticks. Because that's a, that's a very commonly said phrase, Noah. Thank you. Quick uh, says, do you need it? I sent you a theory in DMs on Discord. The quote, hello neighbor, you should check your DMs. Okay, uh, I'll let the video play out while I do that. Proper capitalization. And from there, it's just a hop, skip, and a karmic jump away from who we're playing as. None other than Springtrap himself, William Afton. Not only does a one-way ticket to hell follow up on the advice Henry gave us from FNAF 6. Although for one of you, oh boy. the darkest pit of hell has opened, hell has opened to, swallow to swallow you all. So don't keep the, don't devil, keep the waiting devil waiting, waiting But friends. more voice lines in Custom Night confirm our relationship to each of these characters. We know who our friends are, and you are not one of them. Hi, Fred Baird. Okay. His voice not, rocks. I'm not sure how I feel about his voice. I feel like it... Like the bass voice itself, I feel like should be deeper, but I like the I like the vocal effects that they add to it. Any deeper, you just have nightmares voice. Yeah. Yeah. Which is worse. <laughs> <laughs> this is a callback to FNAF 4's "We're still your friends." Do you still believe that? But twisted on its head. If our character were someone like, say, Michael Lafton, aka the Crying Child, aka another character who can't die, well then Fred Bear wouldn't single us out as not his friend. He's not an enemy to Michael because Michael never did anything to hurt him. I am the fearful reflection of what you have created. William Afton <laughs> killed Henry's daughter, who goes on to become the puppet. Nightmare on here is the dark reflection of the puppet. Thereby Okay, I go I see what he's doing up. This seems legit. Thank you, Zaxxon, mm -hmm. for the five dollars. Okay, last one, I swear. Buff help you standing menacingly behind Isaac. Why? Why? My viewers are the greatest. I disagree. Is this what VHS fans are like? <laughs> <laughs> no, you... Is this, what, is this what FNAF VHS fans are like? No, usually they just say that my characters look like Lankman. <laughs> Oh, God. Let's see, what's a menacing buff helpy? <laughs> oh, God. This down a bit. There we go. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Close out of the buff helpy tab because not all those images are safe. <laughs> all right. Let's keep going. <laughs> By confirming that we're playing as William Afton. Even Ballora offers some clues that we're playing <laughs> as William. Admit it. You wanted to let me in. Ballora's song and sister oh, no. location was all about William oh, my hiding God. behind walls. William Afton wanted to get, to get pegged when he was alive. <laughs> oh my God. Adult oh. theory was always true. I don't, it's amazing how, like, how much MatPat insists that Ballora is, like, to represent Mrs. Afton. It's amazing how much he insists on that. He is so ridiculously adamant about it. I know. And like, there's a part, because like, you know, there's that whole thing in Security Breach where you've got that one, like, you got that one the staff family lock table. that kind of looks like Ballora that's sitting at the family table. She doesn't even and look like Ballora. Like, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> but he's like, evidence, look! 
They both have blue hair. Okay. <laughs> I know. That's about it. Which left an empty room and an empty tomb in his life. All I see is an empty room. No more joy, an empty tomb. He shut everyone really else out, but now that we're in okay, William's personal hell, she's able to call him out for all his hidden feelings. <laughs> William wanted to let the woman that Ballora represents in, but he just couldn't do it thanks to his grief. Hence her calling him out for his real desires. You wanted to let me in. So we're a murderer. <laughs> Oh, the okay. lore. Thank you, Static, for the $5. Hey, I don't have money for the posture plush, but I was wondering if you could put Loudmouth next to Postra to mock him. Damn. <laughs> okay, damn. Damn, you're... Zach, any, any, any guess as to who that was? Yeah, it was Static, Soul. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I actually yeah. don't have an image of that saved on my computer. Going into... <clears throat> They both have blue hair and pronouns. <laughs> Based Glamrock Freddy. I still I still think that like the best version of that character is uh is is when we were on David's stream and we made him a huge FNAF fan. <laughs> <laughs> Loudmouth. Loudmouth the... Someday I'll draw his full body. Someday. Someday we'll know. Yeah, um, I actually have a new idea. Intermission got shit for views. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete it and just add it at the end of my next video. Ooh, smart idea. Yeah. So if you haven't seen Intermission yet and you want to, I would highly recommend watching that now because it might not be up by the time of my next video. <laughs> There's Loudmouth. Wait. Thank Foolish Fiend for the 550 Canadian. Give Toy Clyde a fat joint to smoke. Let's Damn. go. Ostra fans <laughs> know what they want. <laughs> They know exactly what they want, and it's the Clyde plush in a jar smoking a blunt sitting next to Alice Angel, but also stuck with the RE8 baby, which is like two very conflicting feelings, but also next to Bendy, but also with cookies, but the cookies aren't gluten-free, and I, there's Euro C there, and... I, uh, I have to say this for chat. What? Demuted actually looked up fat joint. <laughs> <laughs> He actually put into Google fat joint. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I found what he I was looking for. He did, he did. It worked. Hey. It worked. Fuck you, Isaac. <laughs> don't shame the man for don't shame the man if it works. I'm exactly. still gonna shame the man. Uh uh Zach, how how safe is it for these uh posture plushies to smoke fat darts? Well, um, they might light on fire, True. so that is a hazard, but I mean, <laughs> if not, then, you know, they're having a good time. Getting, getting as long good, as they're not on fire, buzz. it's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They are very flammable. I wouldn't try it with any of your applied plushes. Yeah. No, what do you mean? Zach just does it with his own. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm buying, like, ten Clyde plushes, though, so, like, I I can afford to. The immunity is a character based on anything in particular. Uh, was initially based on Shadow Bonnie, but then the design evolved. We were trapped in a personal hell of our own creation, forced to deal with the sins of our past for all eternity. Sound familiar? It should. It was my first ever FNAF theory. No joke! Oh. Oh, boy. Yeah, he pulled card i mean he's he's not wrong for the record he's not he's not, yeah, he's he's not wrong right. we just didn't need to be reminded of that he actually did get this spot on <laughs> oh my god thank you Zaxxon, for the five dollars i lied the last time on this one but if you no know, make fi holding an ink ribbon from re2 remake oh yeah. piss off 
And thank you, S5, for the $5. Give Isaac his own cookie jar because they deserve it. Okay. I will do both of those. We're going to finish this video first because we really need to get through it. <laughs> Way back in episode one of the FNAF series, I predicted it was a game about someone trapped in purgatory, tormented by their crimes for all eternity. Didn't, didn't and that's mention it. anything else? Only just yeah. Begun the theory not that, that's it. That was the whole like thing. Murders, but it's actually oh, never really mind. awesome to think that we've come full circle. That, from a theory standpoint at least, these videos have circled back around to where it all began. It's that is pretty a weird. Beautiful, it is, yeah. child murdery bookend of a story. So thanks, Scott. I have no doubt that you structured your franchise's final send off that way just so i could have an i told you so moment at the very end after years of getting thwarted by your twisting story it's very nice of you to throw me a bone might as well call me mangle <laughs> more on that next that's, that's such a low quality mangle head it was very low quality look at that i don't even know where that's from i can count that's the pixels from, that's from i think that's her isn't that her ultimate custom night vent render i think so yeah maybe I think that's I think that's a rent and that's why it's so low like low res because mm -hmm. it's a tiny little sprite in game. An actual screenshot. But of course, it would yeah. be FNAF if things were just that simple. No, it's not good enough for William to be held in a perpetual state of agony. There's mouth looks like a hat, but that's here. right. Looking through all the voice lines, there's one True. other entity that's mentioned over and over again. The one you should not have killed. I am remade, but not by you. By the one you should not have killed. Greetings from the fire, and from the one you should not have killed. I Can I just say? I always found that that phrase really funny. The one you should was, not have killed. And Meaning all of the others is totally, totally fine okay. To totally okay. No I, issues. <laughs> I was always under the assumption that the one you should not have killed didn't mean like you shouldn't have killed this child, but more like you shouldn't have killed this one because now you're gonna regret it. Well, <laughs> I think that's I think that's the intention. Yes, but yeah. it sounds like. This one in particular. Look, the other ones, whatever. Either way, nah, I don't care. This one, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit about these other guys. Who are they? Also, I will be right back. Give me one second. Uh, Zach, you, you could probably identify which of these is from RE2 and which one of these is from uh, RE2 Remake. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think any of these are from RE2 Remake. Shit. I think you're just gonna have to use a regular RE2 ink ribbon, which like whoever asked for that, oh my god. Have our ink. I don't know the significance of this ink ribbon thing. Um, so you know how in RE2 remake on hardcore mode you can only save with an ink ribbon. Yeah. So, um, Phil had gaslit me because I had to get up for a bit to leave. He had gaslit me into believing that, um, he ran out of ink ribbons after making two hours of progress without saving the game right before a chase sequence in that game that leads to instant death. And he, I, I got up to get some water because I was scared that, you know, we were about to lose two hours of progress on the stream. Um, in that time, he found an ink ribbon and didn't tell me and saved the game, and then he purposely died to convince me that we were about to lose two hours of progress, only to reveal that he saved the game. And I held a grudge since. Damn. Tell me that you're going to watch SpongeBob. I, I, I will. I don't know if I'm going to watch it on this. That's, that's all I can say. Oh, excuse me, what? The one I shouldn't have killed? You mean Voldemort? Oh, sorry, got him confused with you must not be named. But seriously, the one I shouldn't have killed in a franchise piled high with underage bodies. Okay, yeah, sure. Why'd you All have to put it like that, kids, Matt? Nah, they deserved it. But that one, that one right there. Yep, shouldn't have touched him. Now you're damned for all eternity. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Anyway, this is the big mystery of the game. Who are they talking about? Well, by picking apart clues from all sorts Was of... That the fight of 87? We can start piecing together who this Fucking one who what? must stay vague for lore purposes actually is. First, from the rest of the voice lines, we can identify that this character is a male. I have seen him. The one you shouldn't have killed. Oh. Okay. I don't think I've ever caught on to that. I thought Cassidy was supposed to be a girl. 
Um, I think he says that Cassidy is a girl, but Golden Freddy is male. I think that's what he says. Oh, okay. He's here and always lucky. The one he shouldn't have killed. Notice how both of them use the pronouns he and him. We also pronouns. Know specifically have I can't believe they added pronouns. Us. To understand it's that, we have to turn our attention to the true stars of <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> Custom Night. Fun the mediocre melodies without question this crew of duct crawling rejects steal the spotlight in ultimate custom night going from wtf are these guys doing here in fnaf 6 to break out i mean mr hippo does custom night or I mean, yeah he does gang not only provide but, like who, who gives a shit about ned Happy I mean, Frog is like literally my least favorite animatronic. Yes, yeah. Zach. We <laughs> lessons. But no, the they do have me a import. Their lines are important. Lemonade. Ooh, you ever mix it with iced tea? They do like. Little half lemonade, half wool. Not this so one, obviously, but their death lines are important. They also <laughs> deliver on huge lore reveals. For the most part, their lines are pretty disposable, but very rarely you'll get a line from them that feels just a bit out of character. We've only just begun. I will never exact let you favorite. leave. Ugh. I will never let you rest. I don't like... Uh, uh... With you! <laughs> With you! Thank Ninja you. skills... Thank you, Meme Sauce, for the five dollars. Place the thing I sent you on Twitter on the desk. That's very threatening. It's gonna be big, Chungus. Hey, okay, hold on. Meme Sauce made a night shift at Chungus. That's who that is. I am. Oh, I am. Boy. I am aware of who Meme Sauce is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sent me on Twitter. Oh, yep. Oh. oh. I'm a genius. Okay. Yep. You know what? I respect you, but also, <laughs> yeah. I, I I respect the hell out of you, but also, why? <laughs> That's generally how I feel as well. Yeah. There we go. He'll he'll be hanging out over there. Okay. Let's keep going. And if you listen closely, you'll hear a female voice echoing back what they're saying, almost as if they're puppets under someone else's control. This is how it feels. And is that a FNAF reference? It over and over and over again, forever. I will never let you leave. Now, this. Who did the voice performance for that? That sounds like Heather I, Masters to me. I was I was gonna it say that be. sounded like Baby. Yeah. Which I know it probably is not meant to be her, but like, it isn't. Great, thank you, Slim, for the five euros. Okay, a giant, uh, yeah, a giant. They're just standing behind, you looking at you guys menacingly. I don't know what that is. Neither do I, but I'm about to find out. Oh. Oh, it's the Zelda head monster. Oh. Yeah, from Twilight Princess. Yep. I should. <laughs> the thing is, I know Zelda characters by the way they look, but I couldn't tell you any of their names. Yeah, neither can I. Like, I just remember them. Yeah, no. Oh! That guy! Love that guy. Favorite character. Yeah. Behind me, huh? Okay. Uh, now, drag this fucker all the way down. Wait, why did Chungus have to go by me? What the fuck? It looked good there. Why, why do I have Buff, Helpy, and Chungus? I'm already surrounded. That's Need true. Yeah, that's true. I can't complain. All right, there we go. Actually, no, but you have Alice Angel. Like, someone at least donate to give me, like, Dave from Day Shift to Freddy's or something. That would just be Purple Guy. No, it's a different sprite. Whatever, whatever. This voice could be Baby. Not only does she sound similar... I guess you forgot about me. Oh, okay, so he pointed it out, too. The, merch. the uh -huh. Funko action figurines of the characters from What, what are you about to say? Contain one piece of scrap, baby. Collect all the figurines.
Nah. Oh my god. Nah. You're kidding. <laughs> it's almost like she's the main villain of the game. It's almost like that. Let's collect all the pieces I mean, to kinda. form the character, which might seem like just a random detail until you consider that they did the same thing with every character in Sister Location. Who okay, see, the problem with this is he's assuming that this was planned out before UCN happened. I'm pretty sure this wave happened before UCN, right? I have no idea. UCN came out like six months after six, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I, I, I highly doubt that that's... No, it definitely was not. Thank you, S5 for the $5. Put Dave from Day Shift. Let's go! You're getting what you want. This time. See, chat, this is what we, in the biz, call a win. <laughs> hey, you're, gonna, you're gonna have your favorite toddler strangler. Literally the hottest character in fiction. Okay, pull, rain it, pull the reins back. Pull them. Imagine reins, pull my them proof. back. <laughs> Imagine reins, pull them back. Imagine horses. Now pretend they're held. <laughs> okay, there we go. Joy. The best. Thank you, Static, for the $5. Put Pan Pan on top of Posture Jar. Oh, no. Oh, no. We are already over an hour in, and we're only halfway through a map pad video. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> there are no good images of Pan Pan for some reason. I could go with the hellish one. You could do hellish Pan Pan, yeah. I'll just... Well, today is, uh, today's definitely been, uh, profitable. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Think about how many Clyde plushies you can buy with this. Think about all the Clyde plushies you will buy with this super, super, super chats. And if you don't, I'll be mad. <laughs> okay. Think of, buy the, buy the Clyde plush. Buy the Clyde plush, I agree. Buy it now. Spectre says, at least y'all got farther than him reacting to my videos. That's true. Oh my god, when, when Matt was reacting to Spectre's videos on GT Live, it took him so long to get through the first couple episodes, which were like eight minutes. Why? Because he kept, kept pausing to talk. <laughs> hmm. okay. Who would then go on to form Ener. Each one contained a piece that helped to create what would eventually form the larger whole. Just like Ennard himself, a bunch of the other animatronics all rolled into one entity. This See, the main problem with this evidence point is that implies that Springtrap is made from a piece of each of the... That is what that implies, yes. Yeah. This is especially important when you consider that a key reveal from the final FNAF novel, The Fourth Closet, is that William Afton created the living sister location Funtime animatronics by extracting remnant from the melted conglomeration of all the OG animatronics and injecting the new robots with it. Thus, all the new robots were alive like and the sharing effect a that he uses for remnant the same set of souls. Just like if the pieces of Baby slash Ennard had been repurposed to form Happy Frog and her friends. That's why Baby's voice would be heard <laughs> across all of them does that make sense i'm gonna give him some credit here i've only noticed one unofficial model <laughs> which is which is pretty big that is pretty yeah, big yeah that is pretty big <laughs> i don't understand like when is he saying this happened because it could it literally there is no point in the timeline where it could have happened good now throw it away because there's another explanation okay i, <laughs> I see <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm I, I'm the fool here. All right, Matt. I'm the fool. All right, Matt. I get it. Here, that this is the voice of the one you should not have killed. As you can tell at this point, Ultimate Custom Knight had a huge amount of voice acting, and the nice thing about voice acting is that you need to hire, you know, actors, which means job postings. So of course, oh, that's unofficial. What the fuck is that? That's very unofficial. <laughs> 
this game, Scott needed to make a ton of casting calls on the site Voices.com, all identifying the roles that the actors would be playing. Some of the roles were obvious. Nightmare Balloon Boy, Pig Patch, Withered Chica, etc., etc. All characters that we're familiar with. Other casting I wish calls, I, though, I, I really want a voice in, a, in an official Monster, property at some point. character in Whisper, <laughs> Little Girl, Annoying Girl, Vengeful Spirit. Is that really how they Ventral listed Dee Dee? Uh, Dee Dee was annoying girl. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Who was Monster then? Probably a nightmare, I don't know. A nightmare, nightmare, yeah. Character in Whisper was the voice whispering to the characters in um, voice lines. Vengeful Spirit. Wait, no, that's not true. Who's character in Whisper and who's Vengeful Spirit? They sound... character in Whisper has to be Lefty. Yeah, probably. That's or probably. it could be like the little like whispering voice in the background of Nightmare Fred Bear's dialogue. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. Watch. We pause here and he's gonna explain it in the next five seconds. Yeah, I now, think he if does. If you track all of the job postings, you can actually identify every single role. See, but he doesn't know for sure. Monster is Jack Ochica. Character in Whis. Okay. Oh. oh. But again, proof. Oh my God. Oh. Oh, that actually makes complete sense. Yep. Yeah, because it's the one who's like, the puppet I just have to tell you. All right. Annoying girl is Dee Dee. Scott yep. kept All right, we got so those ones. Any surprises. You can actually identify each and every role, except for one. Vengeful Spirit, played by Tabitha Skates. It's the only one that doesn't match up to any explicit character in the game. But we know for a fact it exists, since Scott himself left Tabitha an wow, excellent review. Exist. Five stars. Well done, Tabitha. <laughs> so what is the Vengeful Spirit? Well, according to the casting call, quote, This is for the voice of a young child who speaks in a whisper from the shadows. That sounds a lot uh -huh. like the voice that's whispering in the background of our merry band of rejects. This child is in control and is All right, now read Circus Babies list. Change their situation or prevent their Oh no, 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 no. We, we 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 don't we don't need to we don't need to look at that, Isaac. That's the one we need to hear, Matt. Come on. Yeah, well, being trapped in H-E double hockey sticks will do that to ya. The gender should not be immediately clear. It should work as either a young boy or a young girl. And you're welcome to do readings leaning one way or another. Ding, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we have our winner. A puppeteer that's manipulating things from the shadows. A spirit who's out for revenge. A spirit who just so happens to occasionally show its face during game over screens. Yes, that creepy image of a face that's been haunting thumbnails of Ultimate Custom Night, that is the face of of our vengeful spirit. A spirit who, based on its last line, Wasn't it revealed that this is a picture of Scott's son? I think so. I was, I was actually gonna ask where the hell he got that picture. I believe it's Scott's son, yeah. One of them. Yeah, it's always, it's always tricky in horror media. Uh, if you need a picture of a kid, you get, you gotta source it ethically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> has an axe to grind and intends to enact revenge by keeping us tormented for all eternity. He tried to release you. He tried to release us. But I'm not gonna let that happen. I will hold you here. I will keep you here. No matter how many times they burn us. Love his voice. <laughs> voice. His voice is one of the best. Good voice. Good elephant. No tusks. <laughs> <laughs> no tusks. <laughs> Maybe he's trying. He tried to release you, but I'm not gonna let Possible. that happen. I will hold you here. <laughs> Yikes! Somebody's gotta get themselves a new hobby. But this is an important line since by now many of you have probably seen the Old Man Consequences Easter egg. If you set the character Old Man Consequences to level one difficulty and then complete his mini game, you get taken through a glitch to Old Man Consequences Pond, a character from FNAF World who encourages the spirit to quote leave the demon to his demons, rest your own soul there's nothing else. He's encouraging the angry spirit to finally rest, to give it up, to move on, instead of just chasing down the demon William Afton and spending eternity enacting revenge. But that all- So I guess that means Orville is old man consequence. The lore! Oh my god. <laughs> it was right in front of us the whole time. How have I never seen that? <laughs> leads to the question, who is this vengeful spirit? The one William should not have killed. Well, it's Golden Freddy. For proof, look no further than- Oh the god, get that off my end. screen. If you manage to get the nearly impossible score of 9,800, 49 animatronics at full difficulty, you see Golden Freddy in his FNAF 1 form twitching.
He's twitching just like Springtrap did in the trailers to FNAF 3. Someone else who refused to give up, to pass on. Someone who always comes back. And just to dispel any confusion here, Golden Freddy isn't the crying child. This confirms it. Golden Freddy is actually a victim that we've never actually seen outside of the FNAF 3 minigames. Except now he is or isn't. Who knows? Face in the vent. But more on that next video. That final timeline episode I got cooking up. If you want to make sure that you see it, hit subscribe now. That way you don't miss it. Because seriously, that is the one that wraps everything everything up if there was ever a time oh, to subscribe sure. now is that time <laughs> but anyway golden i mean it did at the, the time <laughs> that's still trapped one that refuses to let go of his hate his rage we even hear it in his line he tried to release us but i'm not gonna let that happen no matter how many times they burn us in fnaf 3 the puppet tried to release everyone through the happiest day minigame fazbear fright was burned down in an attempt to cleanse freddy's pizzeria hmm. simulator was burned to the ground none of it has worked the spirit of revenge is and always will be there until he chooses to let go. That's why he's still twitching as he fades into the darkness. That's like some of the only like full animation series, right? At least from back when Scott was doing it. Golden Freddy twitching? Yeah. Specifically with like the FNAF. Um... I mean, if you don't count stuff like the trailer. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah the it's trailer. A, it's, it is one of the only times, yeah. That's why his eyes are still white as he disappears. He is choosing to remain here, to continue tormenting William, to ignore old man consequences, encouraging him to move on to the next life. You know, this might be what Scott truly meant when he said that 50-20 mode in this game was impossible. Not just that it would be unbelievably difficult to overcome, which, let's face it, it is, but that there's no victory here. That no matter how good of a player you are, there is no winning this game because there is no escape. That even if you play it perfectly, William is trapped, and there is no happy ending for Golden Freddy. In fact, you playing the game is continuing Golden Freddy's cycle of revenge. Old Man Consequence's message might be for Golden Freddy. Absolutely, rest your soul. There is nothing else, but it's also probably directed at us. I mean, we play and play and play this game for <laughs> hours upon hours upon okay. hours, achieving higher and higher and higher stats in a game that's incredibly <laughs> cool crying. Oh, that's my favorite that's clip. kind of underwhelming. Actually, perhaps Old Man Consequence's message was for Golden Freddy, sure, but also for us. Rest your own soul. There is nothing else. There is no deeper ending here. There is no satisfaction. This is it. And by choosing to play, we keep William's cycle of torment alive. We are literally Golden Freddy forcing William through this over and over <laughs> and over again. Refusing Funny image. to move on. Refusing to accept that there is nothing else. It's perhaps the most satisfying, unsatisfying I think this is a good theory. In all of gaming. I'm just gonna as say. Far as your gameplay yeah, I mean, I still believe it. Well, it doesn't get any... Hey, uh, I'm... I think that's good. That video. Um, thank you, the Bishop of Gord. Does this count as five dollars as highest number? I want a lighthouse to be on the table. Sure. I'm not sure why some people can't uh, pay five dollars. Some can only pay four ninety nine. I don't totally accept. YouTube 4 is very strange. Yeah. God, that render of Bandman. It's it's bad. Oh, it's excellent. What are you talking about? Say it true. Sorry, it's 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 the definition of peak. Exactly. On Isaac. God, get it together. I love the title. Did Reddit just solve FNAF? I do love that title. Oh, uh, definitely in top ten titles. Time. Of all time. Of all time. Sorry, somewhere in me, an, an Irishman was trying to climb out. He's trying to escape. Yeah. But naff, another mystery solved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe that's the theory. Okay, I think. I know Did Reddit Just Solve FNAF is about. Uh, is the crying child named Evan? Yeah. FNAF, another mystery solved, I believe, is deconfirming that Michael Afton is the bite victim. Right. I think we should watch uh -huh. some more recent ones because these are the ones that people like. We can watch God, recent ones. I mean, we, again, we could start off with the timeline, the fi the quote unquote final time, the fifteenth final timeline. Yeah, start with this. 
Today okay. we end the tournament. I hate these 19 videos, books, genuinely. 11 games, 8 whole years, all leading to this moment. The ultimate FNAF timeline is Till the next one. Finally complete. Yeah. Also, hack pieces font. are yeah. in place for us. Now all we reference? have to do is oh, put yeah, right. this story of tragedy, oh, yeah, jealousy, reference. and loss back together. Loss? Hello, Internet! Well, yeah. Welcome he to makes Game Theory! A very the show that character. feels like a kid yeah. revealing the class project that he's been working on all year. Except here, it's the class project that I've been working on for the past decade of my life. <laughs> Okay, okay. Bad picture, Jesus that Christ. That is such a good screenshot right there. Hold on, let me let me actually screenshot yeah. that. Thank you, Bomberman, for the two for the two dollars. I'm going to take a nap. You yeah, have a, you have a good nap, Bomberman <laughs> 2001. There we go. Right. That is life. Relatable. This one is Fair. big, my friends, and I gotta admit, kind of nervous. I haven't attempted a timeline video on this franchise since 2018. Back in the days when Mike was the crying child, Afton coming back was actually a surprise, and Fazgu wasn't a phrase I'd ever thought <laughs> I'd have to utter. But God, we really have come a long way, huh? We we really have gone in the wrong direction. It keeps getting worse. <laughs> Kill me. The last time I did something like this, we've had three more massive games, the death and revival of the movie, massive. and more robot kids than you can shake a staff by. We have not. That? Put that robot child down. No, <laughs> put the robot child down. Put that robot child down. We know nothing. Stop shaking them. Stop shaking Ten. the robot child. <laughs> Matt, Matt, put it, put it down. <laughs> Keep shaking Matt. kids. Matt, please. Oh, chat. Have you ever have a kid? No, <laughs> no. Don't go there, Isaac. Um, Don't go if there. If you ever have a kid, and you need it to stop crying. No. No. Just shake it. No. <laughs> no. Don't do that. No. Yeah, it is exhausting to trying to keep track of this whole franchise, which honestly is why I'm here today. The lore at this point the is lore! complicated. It is full of speculation and theory. It's here's the thing, like it's complicated. It's not that complicated though. Like, no, if you think that you're dumb, anyone that says, "Oh, the FNAF lore isn't actually that complicated," is objectively wrong. Or maybe you know, the dumb people are the ones who don't understand. <laughs> Just saying. You think, yeah, the dumb people are the people that can't, that can't solve the unsolvable story. Well, I mean, you just have to accept that some parts are not going to get solved. But then, once you start introducing robot kids, it's like, you're trying too hard, man. You're trying way too hard. I mean, yes, MatPat does try too hard. But again, if you think you have, you, you have yourself admitted that basically every, almost every theory you've made has been proven wrong since releasing. So if you think you Not have this idea of oh, the FNAF lore, if the FNAF lore it isn't that complicated, you guys. You guys are just dumb. It, you're wrong. The FNAF lore is literally unsolvable, therefore it's complicated. Guys, I'm gonna do a funny... Are you gonna pull up Mr. Hippo? Ah. Alright. There we go. Uh... <laughs> okay. Actually, no. I'll unmute Isaac. I just muted. I had Isaac muted for a second. I mean, oh. I, I would just, I would just leave the stream now. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so to hopefully make it a little easier for everyone and to give us all a baseline to talk about this franchise moving forward into the future it's time to reveal my current working FNAF timeline but just before I do I just want to explain a couple of things first this timeline is massive seriously it is huge this thing towers over any video project we have ever done on the channel but when you look at the totality of this franchise the story of FNAF really boils down to the story of one man William Afton his successes his mm. failures his rise to become yeah. co-owner of one I want to disagree, but I really can't. Because like, who, el who else could it be? Who else appears in almost every game? You know? I guess Michael, but he, he dead now. Mike, it's way less, like, concrete. Like, mm -hmm. for every appearance William definitely has, Mike has, like, three questionable ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the most successful restaurant franchises in the world and his eventual fall to the monsters he helped to create only to then be reborn in a new digital form later that's why i've decided to mm. split this timeline into three main i do find it really funny that immediately after this timeline was finished that's when we were drinking it's really unfortunate timing on the end 
Thank you, Wizard96, for the $5. Editor Dan said they went fully on a narrative focus. They were inspired by the work of Wet and the Hype. Um, I understand that, and I've seen Wendigoods. Kind of like. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's just weird that the angle he goes is making Afton more pathetic when he. I old murderer? I don't really agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> chunks the foundation of freddy's how the business started and how it came into being the afton era william's decades long murder spree and post purple guy basically modern fnaf everything that happens after the pizzeria simulator fire and because there are lots of new big revelations in this thing that seemingly come out of nowhere as well as just points i want to talk about further i decided to dedicate one episode to each chunk i originally wanted it to be one seamless continuous video but it just felt incomplete without some sort of explanation that'd be a huge ass video one. Once Oof, this that'd be actually, way too big let, uh are they are they all are all three of them 20 minutes of that would be an hour I mean, long top timeline. Right, I mean, first video in the suggestion you can see. 27. Them. Holy shit. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is actually. It wasn't three. I think it was four. Right? Well, yeah. Again, the fir literally the top thing in the recommend on the right was a playlist. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see that and I'm dumb. True. Yeah. Okay. No. The channel page <laughs> is crashing that. again. <laughs> Oh no, Chrome, why you be like this? Chrome is awful. Am I the only one that hear demuted times cuts? I don't know what that is, man. This whole thing's done, I promise I'm gonna merge all the narrative bits into one massive video so you can just skip my explanations. But for now, this just felt like the best, most satisfying, most complete way to do this. That being said, this is still about the story, the broad strokes of the franchise. So in order to make sure that you guys know that I'm just pulling answers out of thin air, not only am I discussing some of the more controversial bits at the end of each chunk, we're also putting in a handy little graphic in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. That video yeah. is so fire. <laughs> He keeps bringing it up. <laughs> yeah, can I just say, this is the biggest problem, genuinely, that I have this with this video. Besides, despite how awful I think everything in, these, in this series is, the bottom left is meant to be his source of information. Yeah, and half the time, you his source is himself. You cite yourself for your theories. You can't cite your theories for your theories. That's not how that works. Especially considering yeah. that many of the times these theories do not have their own sources attributed to them. So it, it, I mean, it's so dumb. I'm guessing that the reasoning is just that it's supposed to be like treated as, you know, one big timeline that's one big like amalgamation of all of his favorite theories that he's made to create one timeline. <laughs> So yeah. he's just citing which theory he pulled what information from. Yeah, but, but then like, he shouldn't oh, call it a source. It doesn't really work as a citation whenever you're citing something that is another theory that you made. Yeah. That's not how that works. Thank you. It's Thank you, literally man. that one video where it's like, that's a nice argument, Senator. But how about you back it up with a source? The sources, the sources I, made I made it up! Fuck up! Yeah. Thank you, Meme Sauce, for the $2. I'm making a game with three weeks of nights, man. I'm dead. Good fucking luck, dog. Good luck. Screen, which will show thumbnails, video titles, books, and any other citations that we need throughout the video. So if you wish to understand- Yeah, that's the problem. Don't call them citations if that's, like, not the purpose. The fact that he's not just referencing his own videos, he's referencing books and things like that. It tells me he's treating it as a legitimate source, which it can't be treated as that no, specific absolutely. statement in more detail you know exactly where we've taken it from that way you can look into those details for yourself Damn. so sit back grab some popcorn or your pitchforks if you're the type to get upset wait hold on i got popcorn I need to cook it in the microwave Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right hold on we're doing this oh my yeah. god can i just nah. say how like curse of a screenshot matt gave birth to springtrap is to somebody who doesn't have context no, no, no. What do you mean? That's totally normal. Yeah, that's like a actually, normal day. I feel like, actually, I take that back. It's cursed no matter whether or not you have context. Yeah. True, yeah. When I say something controversial, and make sure that you subscribe, since this is going to be a video that you're going to want to come back source, to. Source, it came to me in a dream. Dissect. Without any more waiting, <laughs> I present to you the story of a loving, obsessive father who slowly descended into madness. Loving. And along the way, mm. discovered the secret to eternal life. I'm not sure it's like a loving thing oh, to come back soon. as a zombie and try to kill your son. That's the most loving thing ever. 
really loving parent if you based a murder machine off your daughter and then were somehow neglectful enough to leave your daughter with said murder machine, knowing yeah. that it ate children. Thank I you. think William Afton is pretty based. Thank you, Insomnia, for the five dollars. Do you think William has said some racist stuff since he spent thirty years in one and died twice? Do you think he would get canceled? Um, I think I've been. That's that's a, that's an odd question. Point. Yeah, I'm confused by the correlation. Do you think he has said some racist shit since he spent thirty years in one room? Is that is that what turns people racist? You, you, you think, wouldn't even know like what race is. You think spending thirty years in one room would turn you racist? That's that's <laughs> but odd. Do I, but has William Evans said racist things? I mean, he was. A, uh, let's let's be real. He was a small business owner in the eighties, probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Our story begins not in the 1980s, or even in the 1970s, but all the way back in the 1930s. It was the throes of the Great Depression, that. people uh, were in uh. desperate need of cheap entertainment, especially in Utah, one of the states hit hardest, Utah. fourth highest- Okay, I'll be real, this is, um... <laughs> he cited a government Man is citing website. the Great Depression! <laughs> okay, okay. I don't like this, uh, this, like, opening area, because his entire reasoning for this is one image that can be found in Security Breach that we don't yes. know when it came out. But because it kind of looks like those rubber hose Mickey Mouse cartoons, he says, gotta be 30s. Mm -hmm. Gotta be the 1930s, gotta be during the Great Depression. Fun fact, Bendy and the Ink Machine actually work came out 100 years ago. Finding none and ultimately yeah, moving true. on to find their fortunes out in California. Oh People were tired and they were hungry. But as they traveled, there was one thing that could lift their spirits. A simple roadside attraction called Fred <laughs> <laughs> I find that so funny. This is the only uh, thing holding the United States together. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing stopping the Great from Depression from getting even sadder is Red Bear's singing show. God, thank, thank you, Insomnia, for the two dollars. Sorry, I'm tired. English, it is. Even I fuck it up, and it's my first language. Bro, if 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 Red Bear's singing show didn't come along, who knows what the state of Utah would have been like? Different. It would have been no Utah. Exploded. The ads were plastered all over town, featuring an animated Says bear who? drawn in the popular pie-eyed... Wait. Oh, that's fucking me up. It's Fred Bear's singing show, but I'm in the fucking description at the bottom. It says Freddy. Because They're the same made character, this, I guess. I guess they are supposed to be this. this. I've said many... I've said plenty of times. I don't have anything personal against Steel Wool. Except for whoever made this. I, I wish nothing but bad things to happen to you. I want to know if all the copyright stuff that you see on the bottom right... <laughs> I want to know. I think it is, but I don't know. <laughs> if it is, that would be... Cartoon style for characters at the time. He resembled cartoons like Mickey Mouse, Felix the Cat, Betty Boop. It immediately Bendy. said that this, Fred Bears, was a place where you could bring the family. And the price honestly couldn't be beat. For 50 cents, you could get food and entertainment as you watched the local trained real life dance. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this so video. Some of these screenshots from this video are so absurd without context. Yes. This video is so bad. Send this send this photo back to Matt Pet in 2014. Ask him what he thinks. I, I like <laughs> the idea that like I feel like if I were to show this video to somebody, you know, without any prior context, they would they would watch this under the assumption that the first Freddy Fazbear was an actual trained bear. Yeah. <laughs> For all we know, he was. Yeah, he could be. He could have been. Dancing Bear perform on stage. Normally, you only got to see dancing bears at large traveling circuses like Barnum and Bailey, where the tickets would go for about a dollar. That's a dollar without food. But this was a smaller show, like the type from the Vaughn Brothers or the Robbins Brothers, where tickets would sell for just a Nobody mere 50 that knows cents. what FNAF is knows what those things are. Brought a glimmer of joy at a time when so much was wrong. Thank you for the dollars. What do you send thing though? Oh, right. <laughs> So he's saying that William would have been in Utah in the 30s as a kid, so why is he British? That's actually a really good <laughs> question. Also, why is Freddy summoning the Radiance behind him? <laughs> he's entering Super Saiyan. 
Along with the world, I have a, a simple theory. show would go on for years. Matt Pat happiness has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> this is a better screenshot. That is. Why are they making the bear dance on a ball? The travelers entertainment for a quick meal, but it left a permanent impression on one little boy, capturing his imagination in a way that nothing else had. One little boy <laughs> named Billy. That was his nickname, at least. But his parents liked to call oh, him God. William. William Afton. The bear could dance. It could sing. For decades, <laughs> William dreamed of recreating that moment of. <laughs> this is such a funny origin story for him. Go, go back to before William showed up. Okay. Wait, wait, I, I just need, I just need the still of those two bears just like staring off. Little okay. boy named Billy. That was his nickname at least, but his parents liked to call him William. William Afton. The bear could dance. It could sing. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is the origin of Five Nights Frombos, everyone. <laughs> it all started because William Afton saw Winnie the Pooh. It, so, so, I love that people are comparing it to, to the Oof Troop one. One that's meant to it's be what, parody. I was gonna say, it feels like it very frequently, and Oof Troops is meant to be a parody series, so like, that doesn't reflect well. I just don't understand where he's getting all this info from. He got this from one billboard, that we have no idea what it means. Yeah, where the, why, like, why did he throw in that part about him being called Billy? Did anyone ever call William Afton Billy? I, think... I mean, Billy is a nickname for William. Yeah. I know, but, like, I'll why was that included? I'll tell you why he did it. I'll, I'll tell you why he did it. Because the therapist says that uh, Vanessa's father's name is Bill. Uh, I guarantee you that's why he did it. That, that might be why, actually. Pretty sure that's why. Okay. For decades, William dreamed of recreating that moment of bringing a musical bear to life, but how? William was smart, without a doubt, and he had a key He gets a lot of business, mileage at that one sprite. Creative. How do you make a singing, <laughs> dancing bear come to life? The best he could do was using rudimentary costumes. William was inspired by the work of Walt Disney, who throughout the 50s and 60s was pioneering the use of mascot suits throughout his... <laughs> You're <laughs> citing <laughs> fandom? Suit Why? Okay, this is also assuming that Walt Disney is a thing in that, in that universe. True, but also fandom is a collection of information that cites their sources at the bottom. Why didn't you use those? Yeah, God. <laughs> I, and I'm just thinking, like, we're talking about a universe where Taylor Swift doesn't exist. It's Sailor Thrift. It's Taylor Thrift, yeah. Yeah. Suits with star. five fingers. This allowed the performers wearing the suits to use their natural <laughs> arms and hands to interact with the guests, as opposed to the older models where the arms would just hang limply by their sides. Finally, with a simple mascot suit, he would be able to realize his childhood dream. He would be able to bring Fred Bear to life, to appeal to the kids, and for cop. Wasn't he already alive? Yeah, that, he was even more real because he was a legit bear. Yeah. Yes. This edit is so cursed, by the way, this bear right here. It just looks like a normalized bear now. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Actually, he kind of looks like the fucking uh, showbiz pizza bear. Right? Yeah. Like a modern it rendition. Does. Got... What was the name of that bear? I don't know. Oh, I can't I wait know. to be dead. Oh, I can't uh, wait for the sweet embrace of death. Oh, so help me God. It's thank you, so much for the $2. Wouldn't Afton be in his 50s in the 1980s then? Yeah, he would. He'd be old yes. as fuck. He, would be he should be literally like a hundred years old in the current game. In like the latest game, he should literally be like a hundred. I mean, he's dead now. You know, it's the mimic, but still. Yeah. His name was Billy Bob. Oh, uh, Billy Bob. Oh, uh, that's where the Billy Afton comes. From. Oh Does my God, mean... he's named after Billy Bob. I like this Copyright theory. Does reasons. that mean he Five Nights at Fred Treasure Bear Island from... is canon? Yes. Oh yes. Yes, always. that's what it means. It always was. From a realistic brown animal to a cartoonish yellow bear with a purple hat and bow tie. But I don't hate that. I don't hate that edit. I actually kind of like that. Looks, he looks very um good. I like him. I hate this video. And yeah, FNAF. I hate FNAF. Feeling like Come one on. character wasn't enough, he added another friend. A yellow rabbit. <laughs> what a good boy. Something about this art that's off, but I think it's the note. It is. It is. It is very strange. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. So different. 
outfit with a purple vest and matching tie named Bonnie the Bunny. While Fred Bear was certainly his first love, Bonnie was extra special because that was his. It was an original character that he had created from scratch. And I do I mean see. scratch. William's hand-sewn costumes were rough with seams and stitches visibly showing. I do appreciate showing, but starting with a crotch shot. Do. And you know what? It was just enough. Bonnie and Fred Bear would perform on stage to small but enthusiastic I don't hate his, like, I, I, I don't hate the narrative. I actually kind of like his, uh, reasoning some of this the problem is that it's not like source that's the problem with throwing together matt pat wrote a fan fiction and called it a theory yeah pretty much crowds finally he was able to deliver fantasy oh. and fun to housing uh thank you the bishop of gourd for the 499 please add please add blip squeak for my singing monster what the fuck Fun fact, a man has swallowed 14 a man what? has swallowed 14 knives whole in one sitting and survived to die later in, in a hospital. Also, thank you, Insomnia, for the $2. Canonically, that. bears went extinct in the... They did, yes. Was it 2030s? Does it say that? Whatever. They are no, extinct. No, I, I think it's actually in play. It takes place. That's... I guess that's fine. Yeah, but that also means no, that... No, it's not actually, no. <laughs> it's not. What's wrong That's with that? Lip no, if, it was, if it's late 23rd, 2020s, it's fine. Well, in, in my opinion, it just makes it really interesting that that means, like, three pizza sim and security reach all happen, like, one after the other. Yeah, actually, I don't know if that can. I don't know if that does work. I mean, look, I mean, like, well, no, there's no point questioning the logic of FNAF, so it can happen. But to like, let's say FNAF three takes does take place in 2023. Let's say that's the case, and let's even say six takes place the same year. Help Wanted was created, and then the Pizza Place was made, and all of that transpired in the next less than seven years. That's pretty fucking wild, no? <laughs> thank, thank you, Poison. For Dollars. Afton is a furry golden. Yep. I mean, yeah. It's Question about that. To all the kids, delighting and inspiring them in the exact way that he had been delighted and inspired so many years ago. And then he Things killed him. Could have ended there. That could have Which been the based. end to his story. It could have been perfect had it not been for one thing. Other people saw the success of his idea and they wanted in. Enter Chica's Party World, a rival <laughs> restaurant starring performing uh, animal characters. No. His idea, okay. except they did it better. Mm. William may have. Wanted to see. How can I? What do How I have? can you agree either, though? Like, I can't it's based agree. On nothing. That's the thing. I can't agree, nor can I disagree. Because, like, we, we know it was a place. That's all we know. It was a place. Actually, you know, that's actually a great strategy for Matt Pat. Just completely make shit up, and you can't, uh, you, can't you know, prove it to be wrong. But you, also, you can't prove it to, right, to be right, but you can't prove it to be wrong. Yeah. Where, what the fuck are you going to base anything off of? It's just nothing have been Big the first, Matt. but obviously he wasn't the best. It hurt the prideful William Afton to admit it, but this restaurant was able to do the thing that he always wanted to do. Make the animals actually come to life. <laughs> all of the performers in this restaurant this were robots. Guy. Simple metal skeletons that were powered by battery packs. But all of them able to freely turn and talk and dance on their own. No human required. It was like magic. Magic that came from the mind of a brilliant creator named Henry Emily. This Henry, in some small way, had been able to... We need different art of this guy. <laughs> we Emily really need different gives art. Gives off pansexual vibes. We have like we have like uh we have two images of him and they aren't that different from one another. <laughs> I wasn't even aware there was two. What's the other one? <laughs> the other one is just his face at a slightly different angle. Oh, okay, that's great. It's so good. Love that. And... Thank you, Granite, for the four ninety nine speak area in front it feels a little empty. Let's fix that by putting in a picture of that one horrific bio world I've never seen. I don't even know what you're on about. I haven't seen this, but now I'm on a mission. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, oh. Oh my god.
I want to thank you for this donation. Can I find a transparent image of it? Hang on, I, I, one second, buddy, old pal. Oh, are you gonna fix this? I'll do it, yeah. Oh, no. There's so many of them. Yeah, I've seen the Freddy one. Oh, uh, that one's pretty bad. I want one of these now. Alright, check VC chat. It's not the best, but it's doable in seconds or whatever. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. I need to buy one of these. I need to buy one. No, you don't. Don't do that, please. Why not? It's not worth it. I like coffee. Do you, do you like want to drink coffee out of that? Do you want it looking you in the eyes as you get a big old sip? Turn the face away. I don't want it. Looking so you at want me. the face to be looking at me while you're taking a big old sip? Exactly. I want you to look into her eyes. <laughs> her eyes can't even look into mine. They're staring in two different directions. <laughs> they are indeed. Hey, let's let's get done. To harness the power of life itself. Afton admired him. He was jealous, to be sure, but he also looked upon this man with awe. Off to one side of Chica's party world was a. I might keep cutting out. I don't. I don't know what people want me to do, man. Hold on. All right, I just unplugged and plugged my mic back in. If that doesn't, what? Does that change anything? Okay. Hopefully, that's better. All right. Small cabaret stage featuring an elephant oh. magician. Okay. Uh, now my. <laughs> Whenever I plug my microphone in, for some reason, my audio sort. So just tried to play it through my speaker. My headphone. On the other, a hippo known to ramble on and on. That one was more of a joke for the parents, but it was the main stage that was for the kids. A rocking band of characters featuring a yellow chicken thing with a southern drawl yeah. named Chica, backed by a band of other country themed characters, including a pig with a banjo, an upbeat frog from the local swimming hole, and a brown bear with a heavy. Upbeat frog from the local swimming hole, you say, Matt? Pep? Let's, uh. Can I get a source on that? Um, sources that I made it the fuck up. Yeah. Noise suppression. Do I have noise suppression? Maybe you do. That causes cutting. Okay, hold on. Where would I even find? Uh. Noise suppression. Oh, yeah, I do have it on. How did that happen? Okay. Hopefully that fixes things. Because I don't want expression. <laughs> Southern accent. Wait, a bear? But bears were his animals. Why not a cow or a horse? Something to fit the country. Thank you, Poison, for the $5. How do you feel about the story uh, that we are assuming was intended story being a sales story? Uh, if, you ask, if you're asking, do I like the story? Yes. If you are you, if you're asking, do I like it being told in the books instead of the game? Hell no. I think that they dropped the ball hard on that. The story's still good, but like, it could have been in the game more. Also, FNAF is bad. That's my, that's my take. Yes, we know Isaac. Days. We know Isaac. FNAF is, FNAF is real bad. It's like borderline embarrassing. Theme a bit better. Why did it have to Com be a comparable bear? to Band Band these insult days? Insult to injury. They had the nerve. Okay, wow, that's a, that's a bit far. Uh, that is uh, that is a. As far as storytelling yeah, but... goes, I do think it's pretty close. I yikes! Think... Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is that is beyond an L. Bendy reigns supreme as far as storytelling in the indie horror scene goes. I mean, I you agree, but one. like, you my can have God. That one. <laughs> to call this thing Ned Bear, a direct copy of his own Fred Bear. Whoops, that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> no, that was not okay. Afton's jealous admiration turned to hardened bitterness, a bitterness that would only grow over the next couple of years as families continued to choose Chica's party world over Fred Bear's. William just couldn't compete with the appeal of the robots. Eventually, his restaurant would go bankrupt, only to get bailed out by, of course, Henry Emily. Another insult, another humiliation that William wouldn't see. 
soon forget. 1979. I can't fucking take his William Spring. Please. It's, it's so... just the goofy FNAF World one. It's the little chippy man. It's so goofy. <laughs> Thank you, Static, for the $2. Isaac angers everyone. As if I care <laughs> about your fucking feelings. Get the Isaac, fuck over it. Isaac's baiting hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I am Despite being, being bitter, serious. Afton couldn't deny that what came next was a period of massive success and expansion. With the two franchises now merged into one, it was the best of both worlds. Afton's ideas with Henry's robotic expertise. The two men decided to launch under a new name, Fred Bear's Family Diner, a pizza chain that would eventually come to feature a mix of humans in performing suits as well as on-stage animatronics. They decided to stick with Fred Bear as the headliner considering the Yellow Bear was easily identifiable as a brand because he was the original performer forming animal <laughs> the OG see I would I, I would argue this like why would they go with the less popular one but then I remember that is exactly what fucking showbiz did when they absorbed Chuck E. Cheese yeah yeah it is also can I just say how funny this screenshot is when you really think about what OG means I know we just use OG and as like a part Short of our daily original. vocabulary now yeah. But, but yeah but OG actually stands for original gangster so which I this believe frame yeah. is amazing. Fred Bear, <laughs> the original gangster. <laughs> mascot. Afton appreciated that. This new restaurant would also Just needed a red bandana. As two franchises merged into one, with Pig Patch and Happy Frog performing right alongside Fred Bear and Bonnie. And as part of this that one big so Fred good. Bear family, they yeah. even got Wither, themselves Wither official Fred merch Bear. that released, ranging from. Fighting here. Source my fucking self. What 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 happened in that one? I don't remember oh, exactly. Oh, he, he's talking about the arcade machines. Yeah, it's like the, the first he's talking about the theory. He's talking about the fact that the mediocre melodies were turned into the masks that you see in this minigame. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Blue, Blue Ned Bear, my favorite character. No, it's Bear 5. That's Bear 5. Oh, yeah, it's Bear 5. <laughs> Mr. Hippo Fridge Magnet? <laughs> I hate Gregory so much. That said, not all the characters were winners. The reception to some characters was just mediocre. <laughs> see, see, here's what mediocre. I'll say. Here's what I'll say about these guys. Um, he's attested that uh, Freddy never existed. These guys probably never fucking existed. <laughs> like, you, huh? like, like, if any character from the previous games never existed, it's gonna be these fucking guys. Like, I mean, yeah. Because they're they're only ever treated as jokes, they're they're and just also, comically in bad. Six, and in this in six, the game they're from, they are literally optional. Yeah, <laughs> these guys. In one of the security breach endings, though, there's a glam rock Mr. Hippo. So there they, is a glam rock Mr. Hippo. Yeah, they did end up making them, but like, I I don't think that these guys actually like, if they existed, they weren't relevant, and if they. Um, yeah, just like, I don't feel like they existed back then. And if they did exist, I guarantee you they probably weren't relevant. The only relevance they have had, as far as I'm concerned, CN being the... That is all I think. Mr. Hippo is my favorite gay hippo. Oh yeah, no, he's amazing. He just didn't exist in the story. <laughs> yes, me. Probably so they not, faded away know. into the dumpster, storage units, and retro budget tech stores of lost nostalgia, waiting for their chance to step back into the limelight. <laughs> see how much win. money was in there that screenshot? I didn't. Mr. Pippo. The, the, oh. they, this person hacked the whatever screenshot that was from, hacked the game. Look at that shit. Holy <laughs> shit, yeah. Oh, he's becoming the alleyway. Retro Nine budget tech Oh, don't worry, he's back to normal. <laughs> Yeah, there's no way you can get that much money. No, that. you can't, but you yeah. can you can go into the game's files. Maybe I should do that sometime. One of it. Yeah, you could. Stores of lost nostalgia waiting for their chance to step back into the limelight if and when a headliner went out of commission. Others, though, would fare much better, like a new pirate a fox render. as well as a blue guitar playing variant of the yellow Bonnie Bunny. Ooh, Ooh. That, fuck, I hate that Bonnie so much. He uses it so much in the newer ones. Oh, I, I know what one you're talking about. I'm not sure this is the same. One. I think this is a different one. I don't think so. It's 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 FNAF one Bonnie's head edited over Withered Bonnie. It's horrendous. Okay. 
Ultimately, the franchise would get so big, it would spawn its own cartoon show, Fred Bear and Friends. Business was booming. In the end, Fred Bear and Bonnie's <laughs> popularity would be so strong that they would be able to support the Fred Bear's Family Diner franchise all on they their own, while inside. also spinning off a new sister no. location dedicated to their friends. In 1980... They don't have models. They don't have real models. <laughs> yeah, they do give off divorce. Three, Freddy <laughs> Fazbear's Pizza launched, giving a dedicated home to all this new supporting cast of characters. Chica the Chicken, Bonnie the Blue Bunny, Foxy the Pirate, and of course the headliner, a brown friend. I find it odd that they put in the effort to like try and get the, an untethered look at Bonnie. They just didn't try with Foxy. I know, it's so weird. He I was always Foxy's... meant to be broken. <laughs> yeah, I guess because Foxy's is always kind of broken, but like <laughs> this is still outrageous. What about... What about Freddy? Yeah, Freddy's <laughs> limbs are fucked, Chica's legs are fucked. What happened Just here? Use the FNAF. Hands. Just use the FNAF 1 models. I know they would realistically look different, but like, just use the FNAF 1 models, come on. When is- <laughs> thank you Static for the five dollars. When is Matt? Also, light Probably posture never. on fire for the funny. What? <laughs> light posture on what fire What did I do? <laughs> Uh, so oof troops I guess you dropped your blunt. Cannon. Oof troops, true, yeah, that makes sense. Oof troops first, undeniably, cannon, whatever the fuck, is almost at 5 million views. That is insane. Jesus. God, yeah. I saw it in the uh, recommended as 4.8 million views. That is wild. I'd like 4.8 million views on a video. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be pretty nice. All right, I guess I got a light Zach on. It happens, it happens. Please, you don't have to do this. Nah, he has to do this. They paid. Please. Well, it'll be a little fire. Just a little fire. Why did the blunt have to light me on fire? I don't know. Learn how to smoke, noob. I don't wanna. That's fair enough. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Uh, blame Obama. Why? What do you know? <laughs> what do you know? It looks like I got a little tuft of troll hair. It's your scalp on fire. Oh. Hey, Fazbear. Business was good, and Afton was happy. Most. Wait, did I turn it back on? There we go. Got to turn it back on on the on OBS. <laughs> It yeah. did bother him that the one original character that he created, the one that he himself played, Golden Bonnie, got passed over for inclusion in that cartoon show. The only character in the roster of regulars to get ignored for the show, but other than that, things were going smoothly. He had himself a wife, two sons, a daughter. Oh my god, the first appearance. Why aren't his children purple? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why is Mrs. Hafton purple, but the kids aren't? And why are all of the, why do all the kids look different? Thank you, Poison, for the five dollars. An editor, Dan's cyber channel. Why they don't hire modelers? But he cited NDA contract obligation. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So oh, yeah. that's every. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I I get that. They're um. Every... I guess they're just not allowed to make their own renders. Every member of the Afton family is a different skin color and has different eye color and different hair color. Jesus Christ. If anything, Every single one. If anything, this makes William and his wife look like fucking siblings. And all three oh, of their God. children adopted. And that's why they look so... Oh, wait. Okay, I got... I, I know the lore. Guys, you ready for a game theory? Okay, so... In the FNAF universe, people are strange colors, such as purple, green, orange, that kind of thing. And what happens for them when they inbreed, they look like people in our world. Oh, so no. William Afton had children with his sister, and that's why they have like beigey skin tones, you know, hair that is different colors, eyes that are different colors. That's the lore. So is it just 
Is it just because I'm sleep deprived, or is that the dumbest shit you've ever said? That's up um, there. It's up there. It's, it's probably up there. There's definitely worse, but what do you? T well, no, sorry, sorry, just slip of the tongue. Zach, what are you talking about? That's just the lore. That's how that works. Oh, okay. Someone did point out that Michael changes skin tone twice. Yeah, Michael <laughs> does change skin tone twice in the series. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, he gets so much lighter. Yeah. Yeah, and then he gets purple. And then he becomes purple. Yeah, maybe that's just a result of aging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a thriving business, and best of all, he was able to learn the craft of robotics from the man that he both loved and hated. Oh, yeah, and Henry's gray. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's the, the green guy and the orange guy, both from FNAF 6. You know, they're diff they're Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's the lore. Chat, why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> but that orange guy is also William Afton, so every now and then he changes to orange. It happens, it happens. I like the super Perfect. thin mouth William has on this screen. <laughs> he looks so pissed. <laughs> the tiny little line, <laughs> it almost looks like he's looking directly at the audience, too. He looks so it's angry so in this. Hated. You still like together, this they shit? were constantly like pushing the limits of, of what sitcom. these characters could do. Because it was quick and easy, new characters introduced into the roster would be given a simple hand-sewn suit with <laughs> I want to see I it. hate everything about this i want to see what these renders look like when they're not completely black silhouette by finger they'd... will they be shown no they won't be shown they're they... probably just like it's probably just the character's head crudely okay. put over spring bonnie hear me out hear me out on the Is right any there's clearly a bear guy okay well now in the middle there's clearly a bear guy there i thought that was the foxy guy's cock <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> performer could wear. Eventually, Henry would design one of his signature animatronics for that character, utilizing a divided mouth with either Bob a hinged or Freddy. sliding jaw design. This was the first generation of animatronics. There's something we pointed out last time Gen we did one. this, where he, in order to prove that the mimic is... He says that the mimic's jaw is described as having hinges, which he says Henry's thing. But... Hold on. Henry would design one of his signature animatronics for that character, utilizing a divided mouth with either a hinged or sliding jaw. This is not a hinge. This is what he used as evidence. This is what he called a hinge. As two sliding like plates. Yeah. No. Yep. Re-listen to what he just said. No, I know he said that this one's also a hinge. But in the video that I was referring to, this is what he used as evidence. He called this a hinge. Oh, did he say hinge in that video? Oh. Yes. He said hinge and then used, like, this image. Well, that is incorrect, yes. Yes. Also, I don't think... I, I think those are just... I think so, yeah. Well, eh, I don't know. Could, could be either or. Jaw design. This was the first generation of animatronics. But why stop Gen there? One. Afton had big ideas. What if the animatronics weren't just locked to the stage, but could freely roam the restaurant and interact with the kids? What if his mask... See, I recently went back through... Um, it was heavily, like, implied that the toys were the only ones who were able to walk around during the day. They were the only ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, I'm not, well, I'm not sure what, where he's going with this one. Well, no, maybe... Wait, why couldn't the withereds... Well, because... Free withering well, walk? If, it, well, it's because of what Phone Guy, guy says. He to, says he they even let them walk around during the day. You know, which implies that they weren't able to do that before. Oh, uh, I guess, yeah. Got so like a new could become animatronics. What if you could use more than just rigid metallic skeletons? Why not experiment with two... Which, keep yeah, in no. mind, does still imply that they walked around at night, still. Which makes way less sense, but whatever. <laughs> Guys, it's Yendo. I love Yendo. Tubes and wires that would give the animatronics fluidity and flexibility while still providing structure. The possibilities for this technology were endless. Afton fell in love with robotics. He had yeah. started with a dream of bringing one single. <laughs> <laughs> the bears really... in heaven. I think my absolute favorite part of this timeline video is just the fact that Afton is obsessed with an actual, like, real living bear that wore a top hat and danced on a stage. Oh my god. The that lore! Is, that is the best part of this video. 
singing Bear to Life, but with robots, he had stumbled across the tools that gave him the ability to control life itself. And thanks to Henry, he was practically speedrunning his way to an engineering degree. And while William wouldn't admit it out loud, one other thing that kept pushing him forward was the desire to beat his Okay, I thought he was going somewhere else. Former rival. To prove himself smarter <laughs> to and more beat capable. His... To surpass the man who everyone else considered to be a visionary genius. But pride cometh Smartest before the fall. The and Pride cometh before the fall. There you have it, folks. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. Tragedy like was about to strike. Okay, so that brings us to cues. the end of part one of the story. That said, at the end of each of the... This is a real room that he has. That he films in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> why is he still just put his? It. Why is he still? Getting cheap? I don't know, like, yeah, there have been a couple FNAF game theories where he actually does record himself sitting on the couch, but he's only done it like two or three times, and it's just really strange. Yeah, this just looks strange to me. This this looks because I know that this is a real place, and it's throwing me off. Mm -hmm. These chunks, I want to break down some of the logical leaps that I made since the more narrative format doesn't give me much of a chance to justify a lot of the big decisions. And admittedly, there are some large leaps in here. Let's just start off with Fred Bear's singing show, shall we? We know, based on the retro poster that was hidden in Security Breach, that at least at one point, Fred Bear was an actual bear. And like. It doesn't say yeah, that, that anywhere. No, it does not. No, it does not. Not at all. I called out in that narrative segment, dancing bear shows were a real form of entertainment. The only- There's no denying that. I think there's plenty of room to deny that it was an actual bear at one point. <laughs> The problem is that, timing-wise, none of our main characters would be the people in charge of that business in the 30s and a series of pizza restaurants. Yeah, but it doesn't say that it happened. For all we know, no, this could have- no, for all we know, this could have advertised like a modern attraction at the at the fucking place that was just like fitted to look old. Like that's the whole point of the new the new establishment is that hey, it's eighties theme, but we're in the twenty twenties. How cool is that? Like this totally I don't agree with that time at all. Restaurants in the 80s without yeah. him just being extremely old. Best case scenario, if Afton's running the singing show when he's 18, that still puts him oh, yeah, at he 70 this. when the first pizzeria opens and his murder spree begins. That just doesn't make a lot of logical sense because he doesn't become immortal until his first death in Springtrap. That's why I suspect that Fred Bear's singing show was either a family business that Afton then carried on to a new generation or something that he saw as a kid and just wanted to recreate when he grew up. The Fred Bear singing show thing also starts laying the ground work for some of the core elements of the story that Freddy's was a place of fantasy and fun and that Afton despite eventually falling to become the heartless serial killer and mad scientist that we know him as began as someone with good intentions and a love of entertaining kids he hmm I'm iffy on that one so... I have no strong feelings I'm so apathetic honestly I'm okay with the idea that he's a good person at first but well yeah I don't know I kind of like it better if he was just always a piece of shit. Yeah, sure. He wanted to bring things to life from the very beginning, a theme that recurs a lot for him throughout the rest of the franchise. Next up, let's talk about those mascot costumes. One thing that I keep going back to is the design of Glitch Trap. It's a handcrafted suit. You can see the seams and everything. It even has five fingers for the performer's hands. It is very much not a spring trap suit. Uh, okay, I might piss people off. Like it'll be, it just spells out that suit only ever existed in the VR game. It did, it was, yeah, wasn't it? It was not it literally a real made mascot. just to like, yeah, it was just made to like represent the killer. It wasn't actually based off of anything real. It, yeah, it was a weird choice to give it that's like the it's the type of stitch it has, though. Yeah, I think that was probably just to separate him from it's also probably like easier to animate him as a human than a robot. If I had to imagine. I don't know. Well, you can make them just a humanoid rabbit then, instead of making him a clearly handmade suit. I, don't I think that was a very strange design decision. I like I it. I think it was just to make him look more out of place compared to the animatronics on purpose. Maybe your mic keeps cutting out, I'm afraid. Okay. 
Oh well. Suit. This is something much more rudimentary. It came at a time before animatronics were a part of the story. That's why I suspect that it was actually the first, predating literally everything. It's also a suit that is very personal to Afton. He put his digital consciousness in that form. It's his personal <laughs> avatar. It's the way that he sees himself. There's also a whole separate discussion to be had here about the yeah, habits okay. and rituals oh, of serial killers. So the fact that he's choosing to lure kids and kill them in this particular suit actually says a lot I love about that scene. his emotional attachment to it. So, well, Fred. That is such a good scene. Isaac yeah, the uh, pizza party ending, I call it, in Help Wanted is the best part of that game. I remember when you ranked the endings. Did you rank that as number two or number one? Uh, neither, but it was top five. It was in, I, I thought you. I thought you honestly ranked no, it No, no, top one. two are always going to be FNAF 6 and FNAF 3 is happiest. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I understand. But no, yeah, it's a great ending. It is, it is a great ending. It's been a while since I've seen that video, but I do remember you really like that. It's ending. an older one. It's so good. Yeah. Red Bear seems to have started as someone else's creation. Golden Bonnie was uniquely Williams, giving him a personal connection. And that's not all. In this whole franchise, only one set of weird characters heart have imagery in this video. Five fingers, the nightmare. Oh, yeah. Even for sure. Golden Freddy, Fred Bear was a five fingered wearable. <laughs> this is also it a good looks like He's about to strangle me. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at his fingers, like, why are my hands like? This? I am, I am, I am a walking L. What the fuck? What? I'm look. I sorry. I went to my ranking every FNAF ending video because I was curious about my ranking. It was fourth because I put the spring trap ending from Sis Location Custom Night as number three. I Ew. fundamentally disagree with that decision. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> it has some nice piano notes and a decent monologue, but it's not the third best FNAF ending. It also spread a lot of misinformation. Christ. Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, it's it a bad ranking. Anyway, back to the video. Suit at one point in the story, as we see in this shot from the graphic novel, before he, like everyone else, was turned into an animatronic. This seems to imply that all of the main characters had similar wearable mascot. Oh, these are those images from before, but they're not silhouettes. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I respect that he like changed the colors and stuff. You know what? I think this is fire. That Bonnie one in particular is really messing with me, it's... and I don't know why. Because it looks the most human. <laughs> <laughs> Someone screenshot this. I, this I got you. Awful. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I want to make. I'm, I'm gonna make this up on my uh, desktop background. I hate the way that Chica's looking down at me. It looks like she's getting ready to call me pathetic. I want to see fan art of all <laughs> of these now. <laughs> yeah, Fre or, or Freddy's stare is like strange. <laughs> As He's looking the... through you. Yeah. Are his eyes usually that wide open? I don't think that's what the... I don't... I'm very confused by that render, yeah. Yeah. I've never doesn't... seen his eyes that wide open in that render. Yeah. There's something unholy about right this image. Yeah, I kind of want to die right now. That ...outfits at least at one point in time, and that whoever is having the FNAF 4 nightmares, if they even are nightmares, something that we'll touch on in part two, saw oh those mascot suits off. specifically. <laughs> Lastly, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. The literal elephant, Orville Elephant, as well as the rest of the mediocre... Why does he not have tusks? <laughs> that, that would be a great one. Why is he so ugly? Why is he and Nedbear the only ones with eyebrows? <laughs> Damn, I hate that you pointed that out. I, I don't. I don't think it matters. No, because now I can't look at the same. I'm going to constantly be thinking about it. What do you mean? It. I'm going to constantly be thinking about it now. Fuck you, Zach. Okay, Why is it that Ned Bear and Happy Frog are the only one with top rows of teeth? Why does Happy Frog have teeth? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> melodies. For a while now, I've suspected that the mediocre melodies played a much more important role in the story than just being a bunch more animatronics to fill out the roster. Especially Ned Bear, which is just so suspiciously close to Fred Bear. And yet, there are two key details that we're going to have joke. to justify that's with the yeah. mediocre Matt. melodies mention. One, they're very rudimentary with external battery packs, implying that they come very early in Also a good image. <laughs> Ned Bear, when you find him, like cast away on an island. You gotta get, you gotta give it to his editors at least. They know how to make a fire screenshot. They know how to make no doubt about that. Best out of context screenshots. This entire chat's giving nothing but these screenshots. 
Yeah. In the timeline. And two, we know that at minimum, Mr. Hippo does eventually become an official member of the extended Freddy verse. But if these things are supposed to be cheap, generic ripoffs, why would you be trying to rip off yourself? You wouldn't. You would be stealing someone else's ideas. So if Afton created Fredbear, there would have to be some rival franchise. The only other person who would likely be ripping him off? Henry. We've talked extensively about how the mediocre melodies are clearly Henry's design aesthetic. So it just. That thumbnail on the top left is good. It is there outstandingly good. Also, hey, no, you should check your recent donations. Oh, uh, oh, Isaac for the five fifty. Nabbit from Mario. You have an image ready for me? I can get one easily. I know. I know the exact. I know he is absolutely fire. I figure you're gonna know exactly what you. He is the best boy. I love him. I send the dude directly. He's so good. I love him. He is funny. Why is he only in one game? Yeah, he should be used more. I like him a lot. Actually, is he in like a spinoff or something? He probably is. I think so. He's in Smash Bros. It's true. True. Yeah, he does appear in some like Mario uh, Party and Golf games. Uh, in here. Big chunk. Oh my god. Another bunny for the screen. There wasn't enough of that as is. <laughs> big, big chungus, big chungus, big chungus has to be him. I don't think Henry's doing this maliciously. He doesn't strike me as the type. He was likely building the robots at the orders doesn't of someone else that was running a rival restaurant. The type. Like, Henry does a lot of fucked up shit. <laughs> Plagiarism? That's like the least of his crimes. Uh, plagiarism? He strike he, me as the type. This is the guy who, in the books, when, you know, he wanted to kill himself, decided to build a whole robot with a giant knife for an arm to impale himself with. <laughs> I'm just, Which, I'm really, I, that, that, you know what, you just reminded me of that. I'm wondering if Scott was inspired by iRobot. <laughs> I just want to know what the fuck the point of that was. <laughs> why did he? Why was he so elaborate? Why did he build his own personal Terminator? I, I guess if it, people <laughs> don't know that he killed himself, I don't know. It uh, it, it reminds me of this um, it reminds me of this story. I think it, I think it was back when I was in Florida. There was this guy who was just found dead on like a walking trail with a gunshot in his chest, and like it, it was everyone thought, oh shit, murder case. Um, and then like weeks later. Someone found a weather balloon with a gun tied to it, and they found his, like, thumbprint on the trigger. What, what he did was he set up a weather balloon, tied it to a pistol, and then shot himself in the chest so that the weather balloon would carry the gun away and make it look like his suicide was a murder. Like, why? That why was a did Florida man, that? right? What yeah. was the... What, why was it so elaborate? Why did you need to do that? <laughs> I don't know. Man was actually just Henry Emily. Was was he embarrassed? Maybe. Maybe he didn't want people to think about him like that after he was gone. I don't know. I don't think he'd care too much after the but fact. But that's enough yeah. motivation to start <laughs> Afton down a path of jealous rivalry, but also begrudging admiration. As the Freddy Files Ultimate Edition says, it's important to revisit the beginning of Henry and William's relationship. So that reminds me. If you want to watch one that is in the timeline... I would suggest FNAF The Monster We Missed. I, is, I don't think I've even seen it. Sure. It is unlike any other theory, and it's definitely not true in the slightest, but it's genuinely fascinating. Okay. So we'll watch that go. after this. I think this is where it begins. Also, this is future Matt Pat here coming back to add this one in. Seems like the recently released character encyclopedia hey. has backed up all of this speculation. I've had this timeline written. No one wrong. disagrees. <laughs> no, no one disagrees with this. Well, no. Here's the thing. If he's using it to say that it backed up his theories this time, why does he not use it when it says that Gregory's a human? <laughs> That's that's the big thing. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. What are you talking can, about? Can I just say, too, how much I hate the fact that on the cover of this encyclopedia, 
We have a FNAF AR render of Freddy Fazbear holding the FNAF 4 render of Nightmare Foxy from the It's Exeter such a menu. weird cover. It's it such is a, I mean, so scuffed. The FNAF like guides and stuff always have kind of weird covers, but yeah, this one especially has... It also just has such, has such a weird clash of renders. It's, it it's does, not a good cover. <laughs> like, even looking down there, you've got the Help Wanted Baby next to the AR Chica, next to the AR Ballora, next to Scott's Nightmare Bonnie and Funtime Foxy, and you've got the Help Wanted Puppet, and just, what the hell's Balloon Boy doing there, like, floating in the noise, like? It's so weird. This is an odd cover. I don't like it. It's, it's, it's also... Because I bought this book when it came out. It has a... It's also, like, it has a raised cover, so, like, it has texture on it. Oh, great. Ooh. It is texture on it, which is really fucking weird. Um, don't like that. Don't like putting my hand over the cover of a book and feeling the indents of fucking baby. Bad cover. Bad cover. <laughs> now, but I've also been holding off a bit to see what wrenches this character encyclopedia might throw into it. And on this particular point, I gotta say, it seems like we might actually have nailed it. They actively call out the suspicious similarities to the main Fredbear crew. Quote from one of the pages, Ned Bear looks like an imitation, altered just enough to avoid copyright issues. Alright, sure, I guess. Maybe. I was always just under the impression that the mediocre melodies were just part of some off-brand, like, irrelevant pizzeria, and that's why you could buy them in Pizza Sim, because they were being, like, yeah. off. Yeah. yeah, I thought they were just meant to be, like, like, a company was manufacturing them to sell to companies to try and, like, ride off of that success. If yeah, anything, this is... Just... you can buy one. If anything, this just more so sounds like, uh, got poking fun at boot. Or like yeah, ripoffs or ripoffs of his of, games, you know. By the logic of Pizza Sim, right? You've got the mediocre melodies that you can purchase, but in that same game, you've also got the Rockstar animatronics, which are like you know being produced at the same time period. So why are these off-brand characters from supposedly the Fredbear era now being sold in like the Pizza Sim era alongside the brand new Rockstars? It's a very weird idea. Yeah. It doesn't really add up at all with the timeline of events because, you know, this is implied that they were scrapped after Freddy and the gang were made, but they're still being sold. Oh, also, he says uh, that Nightbear is based on Fredbear, and then the sentence that he cites does not mention Fredbear at all. It mentions Freddy. Freddy no, that is bear. true. Which I mean, would yeah, imply... Which like would Freddy. imply... Yeah, and that, th that actually does throw a wrench in this, in this whole video because it implies that... He wasn't around for the time Fred. He was around after. Yeah. Wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, so wait, it cites Ned Bear as being in security breach. He's probably on the side of some arcade cabinet. Or oh, maybe yeah. there's merch of him. So mm -hmm. many. There's so, like, if the book says that a character's in security breach, I kind of just believe it because I can't be fucked to check. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You, but that seems to imply that we were right on the money. Knowing all of this, at one point the franchises had to have merged. That's really the only way that you get Mr. Hippo from the rival franchise as part of the Fazbear crew. This also mirrors a lot of what happened in the real life history of Chuck E. Cheese, with two rival restaurants, each with their own casts of characters, merging to become one unified brand. Again, we've gone into that in detail with other videos, just wanted to remind you all of that here. But why would I call out the rival restaurant as being named Chica's Party World? Few things actually. We know First, why. we know for a fact that a location named we Chica's know Party World exists. We it is do know mentioned why. in the source code teasing sister location. So it is out there somewhere and doesn't fit cleanly anywhere. Second, in the story of the Puppet Carver, Chica is very explicitly looped in with the book versions of He says very explicitly, he should not say that. Because she has never mentioned my name. Yeah. Yeah, but... not explicitly. Yeah. You can what, you could what, argue that. Okay, so in the story he's bringing up uh, there is a character who's mentioned as a weird bird thing. And he's like, oh, that's got to be her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basically, there is a bird character. That's it. <laughs> that she started as a mediocre melody. Thirdly, her design just fits better with a the theme of down-home country animals with southern accents playing the banjo and eating with bibs. And with See, I would agree with that. Scratch. 
I would agree that that makes more sense. Except in in Pizza Sim, like, the actual Jesus does not fit at all. No. So, no, not at all. I don't know. Like, the, I don't think that there was, is meant to be a... Wrong button. With her being the headliner of the show with her name on the restaurant, it would make sense that after <laughs> the restaurants merged, she was, was the uh, one that, that was, was added to the main cast of characters while all the other mediocres faded away. It's also why when Freddy's closes after William's killing spree, she's the one to branch back off into her old franchise and is therefore missing in sister location, a detail that's bothered me for years at this point. It might also explain why William decided to stuff his first dead kid into Chica. That one was Henry's creation, not his. Is okay, I kind of like that. <laughs> That is, I do like the idea of William Afton being so fucking spiteful. He's like, I like, fuck you, Henry. Like yeah. This one's for you. <laughs> he's just so petty that he's like, you know what? I know which one you're getting stuffed in. <laughs> is that him thinking like, man, if I get caught, at least this is this is not in my robot. <laughs> but wait, but wait, the puppets stuffed them in the suits. I don't, yeah. I don't think she actually. Uh, I don't think she's the one who did. Cause like that implies that he just left the bodies there. I mean, he did that when he murdered his first victim. Yeah, but she was in an alleyway. That's like not. That's He's not out. really leaving her out in the open. That's pretty out in the open. That's pretty out in the open. Yeah, but nobody's like okay. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, there's a difference between hiding her in a dark alleyway and just leaving a bunch of kids on the ground. At the place you work. <laughs> I just think that there's a huge difference, you know? <laughs> I don't disagree, yeah. but I do. Th I think I don't really have a problem with the idea of William Afton keeping them in the back room that he himself seems to stay in specifically. Maybe. I don't know. The question is, does he want to get caught or not? Because if he wants to get caught, then he would leave them out in the open. He didn't. I don't think he wants to get caught. And he would stuff them. That's how I see it. Is all of this a big leap? Yeah. Is it connecting a lot of dots that are very spread out across the franchise that I've been holding? Unless he just like had an agreement with the puppies, like, hey, I'll kill them. You mind stuffing them for me? Thanks. Have a hey, good day. Hey, look, I know I killed you and all, but like, <laughs> could you? Would you mind like cleaning up for me? And the puppet's like, oh, I'll clean up. <laughs> all right, thanks. Clean Have a up. lovely day. <laughs> That, nothing ominous about that at all. Please, uh, be quick about it, by the way. Uh on in the back of my mind for years? Absolutely. But I think it makes sense. It also serves as a clean answer to a lot of the random threads that Scott's been leaving dangling for years. So, with all of that in mind, my friends, we can close the book on the foundation of Freddy's. And don't worry, next week I'll be back to give you arguably one of the most confusing parts of this entire timeline situation, part two, the Afton era. I promise. As I recall, this, like... People got more and more mad at this as it went on. Yeah, for yeah. good reason. I never even saw the last part. You oh, oh, you're in for a treat. We're gonna have to watch that. What was that other one you said though? It was uh, enough. The monster we missed. Monster. We missed. It is such a weird theory that isn't even really a theory because I don't think Matt Pat ever even believed it. This but is it's interesting. Offer a close yep. Okay, help wants. It's also one of the only times we see like him sitting down at the couch. <laughs> okay. The books offer a closer peek at Henry and William Afton, how their partnership flourished early on, and how their view of the animatronics evolved over time. Thoughtful fans might want to give these sections a closer look to determine how they impact the story of the games as well. Right there clear as crystal there he is for years i've been trying to piece together the story of these games right but one thing has always served as a major sticking point and that thing has been these books now admittedly these books enter the series at a tough time fnaf 4 had released a few months prior the game that or scott this one this different ideas it played with toys kids that look like doing? established when does he actually like start talking about the theory is this I not just the intro know. I guess it is just an intro, yeah. As a whole. And then, shortly after know. that, FNAF World would enter the picture. I don't know. Well, we all know how well that one went. <laughs> okay. So, I'm stupid, that made me laugh. 
<laughs> wah, 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 lol, XD. Did you just say wah, wah? <laughs> oh, Needless to say, it was oh, a sensitive time for the series, and sandwiched in between it all was the Silver Eyes, the start of the novels, a story set in the FNAF universe, but not really? Question mark? Scott Cawthon, when the books first came out, not tried to make clear what role these played in the greater story, but I don't know if it helped things. Here's his quote. The truth is that after a while, lore can become so dense that there isn't any room for a story anymore. Another truth is that what makes for a good game doesn't necessarily make for a good book. Sometimes a timeline gets so full that the only way to tell a real story is have that story set in a different timeline, an alternate universe, a different location, or perhaps from a vantage point that isn't entirely what it appears to be. It's Scott is quote. so good at saying Scott things style, weirdly. It doesn't Scott's give so good at away. saying things that I mean, mean fucking everyone nothing. Everyone immediately latched onto this idea that the books were somehow a separate and alternate universe. But if you come back and read, that's because they are. Matt, <laughs> where where are you taking <laughs> this? Uh, basically, uh, no. I can tell you exactly where he's taking this. I don't like where this is going already. Not at all. Alternate universe at all. None of that. He basically ties the books to the games like exactly. It's very, it's very weird. We don't need to watch this. <laughs> no, okay, no, we will, we will. I've not given up already. <laughs> but uh, it's such a, it's this is already painful. Theory. This is already painful. Read that quote again, like I just did here for the first time in years, writing this script. It's actually only one of the possibilities that he raised. In fact, now that all three of the books have come out and completed the main story arc. We actually know what they really were. It was that last thing, a vantage point that wasn't entirely what it appeared to be. Now, spoiler alert for the books, but whatever the what fuck does that, that means, means. whatever the fuck that means. In fourth closet, it's revealed that our main character Charlie is an animatronic recreation of a dead girl. That the brilliant like robotist Henry, co-founder of Freddy's, had a daughter named Charlotte who was kidnapped and killed by his partner William Afton at the age of three, and that that is really three... that is really, That's really fucking young. young. That's really young. Holy shit. Okay, like. Let, let, let's don't get it twisted. That is far more evil than I expected William to be. That's like that's, yeah, that's basically spawn camping. That's the weird thing about the app is that spawn camping. Yeah. <laughs> that's the weird thing about the book. The books is that the books partic particularly go like way darker than like most of it. Well, except for things like fucking Fazgu, but yeah, a God. lot of the books just go in really dark territory. Three years old. Wow. Especially with like the way they explain his motive and whatnot. Messy. And that the character that we've been following for all three of these books isn't actually a human being, but just a glorified animatronic that grows older with time. Now, it sounds really weird, but here, let me explain. So, the four closets, what that's in reference to. Basically, Henry created four versions of that robot, each one meant to simulate a different life stage that she would never get to experience. Toddler, tween, teen, adult. Thus allowing this robot child to grow up over time, infusing each one of those robots with fabricated memories of a childhood he created using a camera and tripod. And if you think that sounds weird, then you haven't finished reading this book, my friends, because this book jumps so many sharks. But that is nothing compared to what it's this book good. does to the animatronic <laughs> baby it's that bad. we all know and love. Baby, you know, the clown girl. Well, in the books, she's actually the perfect fourth adult version of Charlotte, but she's also the robot that still, like we see in the games, devours William Afton's daughter Elizabeth and then goes on to get possessed by her. So this the robot same. is simultaneously Elizabeth's soul inside of Charlie's adult body, but in addition to dancing and singing and extruding out ice cream, she also has the ability to switch between looking They're like the a same. passable human, so much so that a character in here actually gets aroused by her, I'm very no glad joke. you acknowledged and that. And also expanding yeah. somehow into a giant clown shaped robot, the one that we all know and love. She does this by using a combination of needles with little balls on the end, as well as sound illusion discs. I mean, I don't I like hate that. Baby. Yeah, she's one. You said Happy Frog. Favorite. I think Baby is still my least favorite. The entire baby's, series. Like, Baby's one I have a very low opinion of as well. 
I just, I hate her lore, and, like, she just makes me uncomfortable and not in any good way. She is still the only character that I have made, like, an entire video just dunking on. It's like, holy shit. I just, I can't stand her. I actually just cannot stand her. She's just so weird. She doesn't make sense. And, like, the fact that she's supposed to be a recreation of William Afton or Henry's daughter, and yet in the book she's depicted super seductive, will always be fucking weird to me. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> glad that Matt, uh, I'm, I'm glad that Matt also seems uncomfortable about it, at least. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that Matt <laughs> called it out. To point out how fucking weird that is. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't always agree with this man, but sometimes he's just so goddamn right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He also, he also, like, I remember, I think it was on, like, a GT Live, he talked about how dumb it is of a Charlie robot was, like, the twist, because, like, we see her literally, like, eating and whatnot in those <laughs> books and bleeding, which, like, how? I don't know, I guess they put fake blood in her or something. She's Great idea. Fake blood in her endoskeleton. See, here's the real question. Um, did Henry design a robot that menstruates? That is a great question, actually. I'd love to know Scott's answer. Yeah. <laughs> like, like how... Like, there's so many things that the human body does that would be really weird for a robot to do. But in order for this to be convincing, yeah, in order for this to be convincing, it would have had to do all these things, or maybe she would have at some point realized, huh, you know, I've gone my entire adult life without ever having shit. <laughs> They're all, all of her, like, childhood friends are, like, sitting around, and one of them just pipes up, just, you guys ever notice that Charlie's never gone to the washroom? Ever? <laughs> Not Even once? once? <laughs> you ever notice, too, that she never eats? And I Can swear I've never sex? seen her breathe? Or blink before. <laughs> yeah. And the robot have sex, and if so, will it feel like regular sex, or will it feel like a fucking chunk of metal? Have you have you ever touched Charlie's hand and realized she has no body heat? She went on a date, and they were like holding hands and everything. The illusion is so strong that she just felt like skin. God, this is awful. Stuff. <laughs> I hate, I hate The Fourth Closet. I hate it so much. I do, it's too. Bad book. I do, too. Isaac's right. The series sucks. <laughs> how ridiculous is this, right? It's a good thing nothing that stupid Crazy how all of this is games. still better than Security Breach. We see them, Matt. That last one was her microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Stop bringing that up. Yeah, they're in the games, aren't they? Oh, they aren't. It's okay. You don't have you don't have to cringe anymore, Matt. Cuz they're not there. They are. Actually. No, they Hey. <laughs> 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 hey! Oh, oh, oh. oh my God! How? How? How did, how did that line up? How did that line up? So oh well? my God! Like someone clipped what? that. <laughs> someone. They're not Matt. Yes. Oh my. Yes, they are. <laughs> Fucking dying. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> Baby's design as it's presented in the games, you see oh, exactly God. what this book is talking about. The needles with the little balls on the end, and yeah, even the weirdo sound illusion discs. You might see where I'm going with this, right? Well, many hardcore fans want to dismiss the books and treat them as a separate entity. Isaac, you've seen this before. Is this like his beginning of his whole everything's connected to the books arc? Uh, yes and no, because this is the first time he really did it. However, he doesn't stand by a single thing he says in this video, pretty much. Oh, because, okay. okay. I'll tell you basically what this, like, a big part of what this comes down to is, like, 
Uh, one big thing, just to give you an idea of how bonkers this will be, is I'm pretty sure he says Henry is the father of the crying child in FNAF 4. Oh, that doesn't add up. <laughs> I think he's. I think he says that. Well, no, he says. He says the FNAF 4 house is Henry's house. So I assume that would also mean that. Um, um, unless Afton's kid is just there for fun. It's it's a, this, is, this is a wild one. This is a wild one. Yeah. All right. Let's let, let's keep going. We see what the discs look like, and that's true. The discs do not look like that. No, they don't. I I genuinely don't know where he originally got his idea that that little thing you pull out of Fun Time Freddy was an illusion disc. Because I was under the impression that was just something that gave him power, and we were retrieving it so that they could do more maintenance on him. Yeah, he that's beat the shit out of the last two technicians who tried. That's what it's supposed to be. They say it's a power module. Yeah. Which, by the way, module implies. There's probably multiple of them on his entire body. And it's not like it's a battery. It doesn't have to be huge. It just has to work. I, I don't think, like, the idea that it's too small to be what they actually say it is is worthwhile feel. Also... Yeah, like, I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really expect the point-and-click game to have a whole animation of you lugging out this massive brick of a battery from this animatronic. <laughs> Thank you, Poison, for the $5. Henry in the book is weird as hell. Henry in the game is built in an animal prison and torture. Animatronic, his daughter is possessed. Hefty. Yeah, fair enough. This man is actually insane. But hey, he gets results. Man made a puppet oh, spring oh, lock suit. Like, what's going on in the yeah. games? You just can't. This book right here, Silver Eyes, is what allowed me to know that Purple Guy's name was going to be revealed as William Afton before Sister Location actually revealed that to be the case. Those aren't the design choices we were curious about, Mr. Afton. <laughs> ah! Things. Okay, that was that's <laughs> kind of funny. He gets so excited about it. <laughs> he gets so excited, yeah. and it's 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 really endearing. I'm not music even lie. man. I I find his excitement for the series really really endearing. Yeah, where does he get all the energy? Where does he get it? Oh, because siphons it from Daco. Oh yeah. If if you're okay. if you're around Daco for long enough, it just radiates into you. True. Just slowly <laughs> absorb it like pollution. Yes. I believe it. Like radiation. <laughs> that Susie and Fritz were missing children's incident victims before it appeared in FNAF 6. The fourth closet explained what Candy Cadet stories were all about. Five animatronics, five Did souls they? all melted down into one entity. But because my theories based on the books tended to frustrate hardcore community members, I backed off of using them. But here we are now. Fail, Pat. Fail, Pat. They called fail him pack. Fail Pack. Also, good. That good, was the beginning of his Joker arc. Good freeze frame. <laughs> He's sitting on the couch reading this The Freddy Files Updated Edition, which, in addition to including more fan art than a typical game theory episode, <laughs> also has that quote that I mentioned from earlier. Here on page All right. 22. Yeah. Like I said, sometimes he's too I, right. I, 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 I appreciate that. that joke. Oh my yeah. god. Second to last page in the book. Thoughtful fans might want to give these sections about Henry and William a closer look to determine how they impact the story of the games as well. It's no denying it now, friends. These things, right over here, these three, they're important. They are here to stay. So, for today's theory, I threw was away it the Baldi's basic sound? All our I was just about to say that. things that I <laughs> thought we had solved from the game. I, I think this is him overanalyzing one line again. <laughs> he does that a lot. He fixates on one line. What? Matt Pat doing that exact thing you just said? Nah, never. There's I've this never thing. Never ever done that. I'm not sure if Matt's ever heard of this thing. Um, Occam's Razor? The idea that the simplest explanation is probably the correct one see that doesn't apply to fnaf though but like <sighs> i mean basic sentences yes it does <laughs> but fnaf just doesn't really i took a fresh god isn't real is what i'm saying this franchise this time starting from the perspective oh. of the books and that <laughs> brought me down an insane thought train now I don't necessarily think that today's theory is right. I definitely think. All right. 
<laughs> now look, I don't think anything I'm saying makes sense. But anyway, here's the next now, 20 minutes. I am full of shit, but hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... All right, we'll we'll continue because I am curious as to what he's he's actually been. This is I don't know what it is about this episode so far, but it's been like really entertaining. <laughs> this one's a really good episode. I yeah, there it. should be more game theories that are in this format. Yeah, that there are plenty of holes in it, but I also don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for the story. That you know what? I bet it is. I bet it's that we're actually seeing him talk. I was gonna, I was just about to say mm -hmm. I think I just like it a lot more when I'm actually just seeing Matt himself talking to us rather than his PNG on the background of where he normally films. Yeah, <laughs> this is good presentation. Very good presentation. Scott is trying to tell. It's a theory that's worth chewing on because it simultaneously overturns a lot of the assumptions that we've made about this series, while also filling in a lot of logical holes in the timeline of events. This is a big one. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. Big. It's like, a big one. That's why it never came back. In FNAF <laughs> kind of big. Here's my we never referenced it Mustard ever after. This. this was literally a one-off. From FNAF 6. I'm gonna say he's Henry, original creator of the animatronics, mm. co-owner of Fred Bear's Family Diner. That eh. would make this. No, actually, I do hate that. Turn that would thereby make FNAF 4 his house. In fact, I think I might hate that more than the idea that the yellow guy is William. Yeah, that's it, it's really well. Weird. Then you're gonna love more. this video because again, oh, yeah. he did just say FNAF 4 house is Henry's house, so yeah. And if that's his house, then this is Henry's son, and this is Henry's other son. That's right. Yeah, here it is. Crying child isn't any member of the Afton family, he is Henry's son, and then that would make this and this Henry's daughter, and therefore, this then would be Henry's daughter's empty room. Now, Hold on! I am sure there are plenty of you hardcore FNAFers out there who are ready to tear this huge list apart. I love that this PNG he uses. Yeah. We have established this time and time again. That's what I look like in the real world. But stay with me. I believe Sit it. back. Damn. Relax. <laughs> My kidding. Pull out your pen and paper. Start taking notes for your angry rage comment down below. This is a FNAF theory unlike anything we've ever talked about. So let's just jump into it. So I already told you the big reveal came <laughs> in the fourth closet that our protagonist Charlie is a robot built in the image of Henry's dead daughter. But there is one last twist here. On the very last page of the book, we go to visit Charlie's grave, the real Charlie, the child who was kidnapped and killed at an early age. It's a grave that ends up high on a hill under a lone tree, similar to a very familiar scene that we see in the games. I'm like fully with him on this one, to be honest. I, I think he was just right about this one. I'm liking this a lot more than I thought I would. <laughs> I don't know. So maybe... yeah, so here's the thing. This theory is so obviously not correct. Like, Henry Emily is not the father of the crying child. Or, or Foxy Bro. But this is like... A very interesting way of piecing together the story. Uh, I think, no, I think right. what I like about this video isn't, a, isn't necessarily the theory itself. But just the fact that he's actively trying to encourage the FNAF community to look at things that are, like, normally decided to be one way in a completely different way. Yeah. I wish he would do that more well, often. I really wish, because I really love that sort of uh, thought process of, like, trying to encourage people to interpret the lore differently and, you know, see what other, like, new conclusions we can come to. Like, because that's, that's the appeal of the story to me. Yeah. You need to be able to welcome new ideas that challenge your own instead of just like trying to morph new evidence to fit whatever current I that's the mm -hmm. thing at the end of FNAF 6 the gravestone ending and on it we're told the following words were etched into the stone beloved daughter Charlotte Emily 1980 to 1983 uh, I just thought of something how do we know that that how how do we know that Emily is her last name and not her middle? Or maybe because it you know like it, sometimes it people go on her tombstone. Yeah, but sometimes people will go by the name like uh, oh, uh, uh, Jean Marie or something like. That. Although I, mean, I guess it would be weird if she didn't have a last name. 
I was gonna say, like, yeah. why wouldn't her last name be on her tombstone? Yeah, never mind. First off, her last name is Emily. I mean, there's no other name written here, so that it is, is a strange name. last name. So Henry's last name is Emily? We're talking about the Emily family household? It's just weird. I mean, this is a book series filled with animatronics that are possessed by- I mean, Being fair, that doesn't mean that Henry's last name is Emily. It could have been his wife's last name. What, 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 what should Henry's last name be if it's not Emily? What, uh, what, do you, what do you think would be fitting for his character? Diana. McDonald. Henry Steele. Steele. <laughs> yeah. Henry, Henry Aluminum. Henry Burn for Eternity. Hen <laughs> Henry Fredbear. There you go. Henry Carter. <laughs> Henry Carter is his name. Henry Fredbear's Family Diner. Yeah. <laughs> Henry, my daughter is dead. Fredbear. That's his name. Henry, Henry. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. Henry Springlock Suit Failure. <laughs> uh, got it. Finkelstein? What the fuck? Finkelstein. <laughs> by human children and metallic soul glue, but Emily as your last name? That has to be the single largest stretch of imagination out there. And no offense to anyone with Emily as their actual last name. I know it's a real thing. I'm just over-exaggerating my- I'm not convinced it's a real thing. But the important thing here is the date, right? Born in 1980, died in 1983. 83. Should sound familiar, right? Well, why does it matter? Oh no. FNAF 4. FNAF 4, a game that ends with someone getting themselves bitten is not depicting the bite of 87 like we all assumed when we first saw that scene, but instead is a game that is set in the year 1983. It frustrated Henry everyone. Henry I mean, why would you choose to do that, Scott? It made no sense for the story that we had become familiar with by that point in the series. It made no sense until today. We know that the gravestone is real. We know that Henry truly has a daughter who dies and goes on to become the puppet in the games. So what if that death took place in 1983, like we see in the book? Did anyone else hear that noise? What noise? Let me see if I can hear it again. That death took place in 1983, like we see... Okay, I didn't hear that time. Hey, whatever. No, he's lost it. Book. He's lost uh -oh. it. Yep. Opens up a lot of possibilities. You see, the other thing that never quite gets explained is this empty girl's room that we're allowed to explore throughout FNAF 4's minigame. Clearly, there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Map pets in the walls. <laughs> Map pets in the walls of this girl's room. <laughs> That's not weird at all. Yeah. <laughs> Here, but we never oh get a clue God. as to why or who that room could belong to. He, he's 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 on the watch for lore. <laughs> I see lore in this room. The, where, I I smell lore. This in turn led all us FNAF theorists to speculate wildly about the owner of this room. Anyone with two X chromosomes was up for debate. <laughs> this pigtail girl. <laughs> And that was it, honestly, because she was literally Damn. the only right. girl that was introduced into the series at this point. That is Later, true. when Sister Location came out, we got ourselves a second girl, and everyone celebrated. It was Afton's daughter, Elizabeth, so that room had to be hers, right? I mean, the game was even alluding to it being hers because it was the Sister Location. But I don't think that's why. For a minute in well, no, the, the idea is that the bunker is itself the location of the main character's sister. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think the sister location was referring to that room in FNAF 4. Yeah. That's a bit of a stretch. Question all of those assumptions, because that's what they are, really. There's not a whole lot of proof here. What if that sister location is FNAF a great title? To Charlie? Thank you, Poison, for the $2. How old were Afton's the games? It's never confirmed. We have no way of knowing. I yeah, would yeah, no probably, idea. I don't know, fucking eight, nine. He killed Charlie when she was three. I can't imagine they'd be that much older. I know, it's- I'm so confused by that, that's so... strange. Yeah. Charlotte, Henry's daughter- Like, do you- do you even need to lure a three-year-old away? Like- Just fucking pick them up and throw them. 
Yeah, you could literally pick one up and fucking punt it. <laughs> and that yeah, would like, probably like, kill it. I like to think that's what happened in the friggin' mini game in FNAF 6. Instead of him, like, sneaking up behind her and, like, stabbing her or whatever, he just grabs her and throws her into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, oh my god. I believe it. <laughs> he dies in 1983. I mean, the room is empty, after all. And we're not seeing a whole heck of a lot of girls wandering around the playground area. And the year certainly... Oh, there was a second. The the there was a second. He was wrong. I forgot about Take that. Wound that. on Come by on your own editors. <laughs> Disappearance and death from the books. Could that girl's room in FNAF 4 actually be Charlotte Emily's room? Could this whole house from FNAF 4 actually be the Henry Emily household? Consider this, in the second novel, The Twisted Ones, a climactic final battle happens in an underground animatronic facility. Sounds a bit like our sister location. When our heroes emerge to the surface, they <laughs> find themselves in the ruins of a familiar house. Here's the quote. Don't you see where we are? Charlie whispered. John, it's my dad's house. It's the room we found. The underground facility isn't under William Afton's house. Instead, in the books, it's hidden under Henry's house. That is really weird, but it's it's also probably because I don't think they're meant to be the same location. They're not. But I just There's no way. It's find it weird that we really haven't seen much of Henry at all. Like there, it, mm -hmm. the story is very much lopsided into telling Williams not Henry. I want to see more Absolutely. of Henry. Absolutely. Because like the, the other thing is like. The fourth closet, we see the sister location, we see the fun time animatronics, and in that game, isn't there, or not a game, in that book, there is, like, an underground area where the fun time animatronics were, and it was not under Henry's house. I don't think it was. I don't remember where no, exactly. It, I don't remember where, like, that underground part of the sister location was, but it was not under Henry's house, it was a different location that William Afton made. I'm like, I might be wrong, but I'm, I think it's supposed to be the guy. Could be wrong. Oh. Huh. What do we see in the games? A hidden facility buried directly under the FNAF 4 house. A house that we've been assuming up until this point to be Afton's house. But it's starting to look more and more like it might be Henry's. And that's not all. Let's and take then a minute this was to flash back to 6, shall we? No. Yeah, no. literally never again. I, I, I couldn't help but notice the cloud speck on the walls. It just <laughs> made me laugh a little. Just thinking now, like... Is William's designing the character, he's like, ah, you know what texture would be great? <laughs> My wall. <laughs> <laughs> My wall looks sick. I've gotta use this for my robot. Maybe there's lore to that. Oh, there is, totally. Overall, I feel like we've done a pretty darn good job of wrapping up this game's loose ends. We know all the names on the different gravestones. We know what Candy Cadet is rambling on about. We know that Fruity Maze girl here is Susie who gets lured away and stuffed into Chica. Heck, we even know that the game itself, this building, could be the potential box where the pieces all come together and eventually get burned away. But the one- I do find it really funny that he says we know and could be in the same sentence. <laughs> that is very funny. Yeah. Uh. Thing that we don't know is the answer to Midnight Motorist, a mini game that. And we still don't. The one moment in every FNAF game where everyone collectively looks at the screen and then slams their head on the desk. What? There's an orange guy now? Who the heck is the kid? Where did he go? Why is his window broken? Why are there footprints outside of the window? What is going on? I mean, we have smoothed over and we still so don't... much of this franchise, and I feel so confident about so much of this lore, and that game, that one little mini game is the one that just, like, niggles the back of my mind. If I could ask... Just what? Could you say that again, Matt? <laughs> what word <laughs> did you just conjure <laughs> for this theory? One little mini game is the one that just, like, niggles the back of my mind. If I could ask Scott Hoffman... <laughs> What is- I am looking up the definition of that word. That's a word, I know- that's a word. I know it's a just, word, I know, I know it's, it's a word. word. I just want to know what it means. I know it's a word, but as a YouTuber, you do not get that dangerously close to the forbidden <laughs> word. Cause slight but persistence, annoyance, discomfort, or anxiety. Yeah, that word definitely does that. 
That's not what definitions are, Zach. Oh my god. I love the comment. I, lo I love the chat going, Erm? What the scallop? It's not. Guys, it's not the that weird. Mr. Wiggles knock on! <laughs> oh my god. That's. Chat. Often one thing. You are all chronically online. This is the one that I'd want him to explain. No joke. I don't care about anything else. This is the one that I feel so befuddled on. Why I'm so determined to solve it and why I'm doing today's theory. Because I hope you sent that email. <laughs> Me too, yeah. <laughs> Scotty past, C I at my nightmares. I'm confident saying that the mustard man here is William Afton because he drives a purple car and he's driving away from the scene where the puppet girl died. But now I'm not so sure. It always bothered me and literally everyone else that a guy who has been associated with one color, the color purple for the entirety of this franchise is suddenly orange. I tried to dismiss it as Scott pulling a Scott, but you know, that's not the most satisfying answer. It doesn't feel conclusive, you know? And more I'm fully on board with those that. Those footprints outside of the window. I mean, why are they there? Either an animatronic went to meet this boy outside of his window, but that seems unlikely based on how do you pick Rockstar Anson Freddy? Rushes in. Why do you pick Rockstar Freddy? Rockstar Freddy going up to a kid's window and knocking on it. Please deposit five coins. Maybe he thought Rockstar Freddy looked the most pedophilic. I don't know. Well, no, wait. Help Wanted came out by now. True. <laughs> by the way, he's gotten this entire video so far without ever mentioning Help Wanted, despite it being in the title. It's in the fucking title here. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, you're right. Cave, or it was someone in a costume showing up to lure the boy <laughs> out of his room. That one definitely seems like the more likely solution, but the only person in the entirety of this franchise who would do something like that is big ol' Willie A. And why That's would he Michael. Do something like Never that call him Willie A again. Wait, he used Michael Sprite. That's true. You know, oh, Isaac... God. This just convinced me that you might be right. He made William Orange to prevent people from getting them confused. Exactly. <laughs> I think the reason I think Orange. Yep. I've said this before. Noah disagrees, and that's fine. But I said I think Orange guy is William Afton. I think the reason Scott made him orange is because 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 in the original four, he was depicted as purple, and then five. There is a new guy that's purple that isn't that same guy. So then he changed the guy who isn't literally purple to not be purple. So that way the two can be separate. See, but it's still bad, can, but Scott's incompetent. Can I explain why I don't think that that's the case? Um, you can, yes. Because I have the ultimate guide and I read up on Midnight Motorist in it. And Scott, in that book, Scott presents both sides. He says that uh, it could be William and it could not be William. And he's, the argument he says that it's not William, it, or the argument he says that it could be William is because, uh, well, William is sometimes associated with the color yellow because he wears the spring trap suit. But that can't be what's happening in that minigame because it's raining. He would fucking die immediately. It, it just, and like, why would he be wearing that outside of work? I mean, yeah, I've never interpreted... I've, I didn't know that was even a thing anyone has ever said. I've never interpreted that as William Afton wearing the spring bodysuit in that cutscene. To me, or in that mini -game. to me, that's Scott saying that if that was the case, this is how it would have to go down, so it's probably not the case. To me, like, I, I, feel, like, I feel like that minigame was never William Afton, because, like, I don't know, I, like, I think, I think the whole thing with those minigames, right, in every single other, like, mini game or cutscene that you find from those arcade games each one shows how one of william afton's victims was murdered and yeah. to me that mini game always felt like it was supposed to be that as well because the mascot footprints outside like to me really showcases like he showed up to some kid's house in the costume and lured him like somewhere that he could kill him outside yeah and you know that that's something else in my midnight owners video i i pulled a mat pad i counted the toes you know what suit has three toes in in Pizza Sim specifically? Fucking Scrap Trap. That, I, I think yeah, that's like, what it's supposed to be. I think it's another, me, it just like... Feels, yeah. it, 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 just, it just feels like it fits too well, because like the other 
The other mini games are clearly showing off how like one of the victims died. I feel like that's what all the mini games are supposed to be showing off. Yeah, that that's Help. that's my feeling as well. Hell, maybe the identity of the orange person actually doesn't matter because it's just supposed to be showing like an abusive father, which explains why the child would be so easily lured away in the first place. In which and case, the relevance of the minigame was never the identity of the orange man in the first place. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But guys, it's raining. Rain happens sometimes. You know when it's not raining? When you're on the fucking actual highway in Midnight Motorist. House. Well, let's let's keep going. About it. Things just don't add up cleanly. It's a question that really started to bother oh. me when I was playing FNAF <laughs> there VR it is. Help Wanted. Glitch Trap is clearly modeled after the first suit ever used by William Afton. You can tell based on his stitching. Oh, this okay. So he's about to say that the suit William was wearing in Men Motors was... Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. Oh, thank you, Insomnia, for the $2. Any game is called Later That Night. That could mean anything. Is a hand yeah, well, the, body the thing is, with there that, are right? many nights. There are many nights. Well, the thing, the thing is, with that, <laughs> the mini game's called Later That Night, and it's raining just like it was with the um with the cutscene of Charlie getting murdered, and that's why I think even more that the orange guy is not William Afton because to me that implies that you know he had already murdered someone and he was just like killing someone else that night. Yeah, just makes me think like there are many nights where it can be raining. There are many nights where people can die. No, we don't have any strong connection to it. Uh, thank you, Poison, for the $5. Doesn't that line up with some Toy Chica high school dialogue? I don't fuck. If you go into Toy Chica's thing looking for answers, you're looking at UCN wrong. <laughs> the joke cutscenes, I guarantee you, are not relevant. I can, in fact, I can promise you that. That is just Scott trying to be funny any sort of animatronic suit that we would see later in the series. This also coincides with the timing of the Midnight Motorist cutscene, which shows the birth of the puppet, one of the first major deaths of the entire FNAF story. Glitch Trap's suit also very distinctly has three toes, just like the footprints outside of the boy's window. Yeah. Now, as we know, Scott Cawthon likes to clarify things in his next game. Thank you, Insomnia, for two dollars. There's higher marks in the Charlie mini game. You cool. That, well, we already knew that a car was involved. No, that doesn't really change anything. Oh, there, there's this thing where, like, people don't understand that multiple people can own cars. Multiple people can, <laughs> like, it can rain on multiple days. There's more than one night to the story. There's so much shit. Huge question mark left from before. That Midnight Motorist minigame was it. So we have ourselves a suit that would have been in use around the time of the minigame, as well as a matching foot pattern to the design that we see in the minigame. Heck, we even have ourselves a potential reference to it from Ultimate Custom Night and the Toy Chica cutscenes. He'll be oh, mine no. by the end of the day. I just know it. I told him to come over later. That should be enough. And if he doesn't show up, I'll just go to his house. And if he doesn't open the door, I'll just find a window. And here's where everything starts coming oh. Let's assume that William Afton, in his okay. glitch trap suit with its three toes, is the one who's standing outside of that window, outside of Henry's house. He lures this is the a great crime friend. child out. Now Henry's son to did you, did you say one? That is genuinely like an unsettling visual to have like implied where there's just that costume standing outside your house in the middle of the night in the rain. Watch this shit again when he says he lured him. Henry's house. He lures the crying child out. Now with exotic letters. Exotic letters. I see no issue. Henry's son to bring him back to the place that he loves more than anywhere else in the world, Fred Bear's family diner. But we know that this is also the night where William takes his first victim, Charlotte, who's killed outside of the diner. This would explain why in FNAF 6, the crying child would actively run to Fred Bear's against his father's will. Wait, is he saying, is he saying that uh, in this hypothetical, William would have killed two of Henry's kids on the same night? What yes. an ass. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you know what? One wasn't enough, motherfucker. Yeah. I'll settle for two. I don't need I don't need to I don't need to take all three tonight. I like this I like this headcanon. I yeah. like this headcanon. But later come FNAF 4, 
he would be terrified of stepping foot there. Remember what you saw and all that, as psychic friend Fred Bear reminds him constantly. Oh, so he doesn't kill the crying child. Just brings him oh, to see God. his dead sister. They That's fucked up. Check this shit out. Hey, that your sister, right? Pretty cool. We still uh, don't even fucking know what the child saw. Yeah. Instantly. He saw the murder happen that night. I mean, he definitely, he, he definitely probably saw a murder. I had to guess. Yeah. Yeah. That I is do. what we're seeing in that FNAF If the timeline was better, the I'd like man. the idea Ooh. of him seeing Elizabeth getting scooped. Yeah, if it was better. It doesn't really line up exactly. No, I don't think it does. But I, I would have liked that out. That, that, I would have liked that. I think that would have been a smart way of doing it. If Scott knew how to do things. We're assuming is going to be Henry. He has a kid who has not only run away on multiple occasions, but is so determined to do so that he's willing to break through his own window to get there. So how do you <laughs> keep him safe at home? Well, you lock him in his room, just like we see happen in FNAF 4. But maybe locking him in his room isn't enough. Maybe you also have a series of security cameras hidden around. We got an analog horror map that hidden around your house, hiding a security camera inside the Fred Bear plushie that he takes everywhere to keep your son safe, to keep track of where he is at any given point in time. Heck, maybe you could go so far as to design sound illusion discs to make him scared of the animatronics that he's seeing. His once beloved animatronic friends. I, I think that's a bit much. <laughs> 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 it, uh, assuming, assuming that, assuming that, like, that is right here, this would mean that Henry gets so pissed that his son runs away to the place that he works. <laughs> so he's like, "Fuck you! I'm locking you in your room. I'm setting up security cameras all over the house, including in your fucking doll, and then I'm going to make monsters come after you." <laughs> I'm going to traumatize you in the worst way imaginable so you never get traumatized by that dangerous place. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing this traumatizing for your own good so you don't get traumatized. Man's it's preemptive trauma. If you're going to get traumatized, it's going to be how I want you to get traumatized. <laughs> you, you get traumatized on my terms. Thank you, Insomnia, for the $5. Dude, the purple car leaves Charlie to die. Midnight Motors happens, purple car comes back. Here that night, other than night, the MCI, nah. So the color of the car matters, but the fact that the character randomly becomes orange doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, he doesn't change color between those mini games. He starts off as a purple guy in the purple in in the, in, in, in FNAF two. In FNAF two, in we FNAF see two, that purple yeah. car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The purple car that's being brought up. We see that purple car come into frame. The purple guy climbs out, but then in Midnight Motorist, he becomes an orange guy. Thank you. I've, again, I've already given my reason for why I think that. Like, I, I, I literally, if, I can't think of a good reason they would be the same character. To me, it's either the colors matter or the colors don't matter because, like, they're so inconsistent that I feel like using them as a baseline for every theory is now just a flawed thing because the colors have been shown to be super inconsistent. Now terrifying to him, causing nightmarish hallucinations of the characters, just like the discs that we see hidden inside of Funtime Freddy's chest and sister location. The same discs that Henry is confirmed to have created in the books. These two, right here, they play a huge role in these two books, though most of them in the books bear. Thank you, Insomnia, for the $2. Scott's weird. Amen. Afton's name, they were originally created by Henry in an attempt to warp the world around him, to hide from the grief that he felt after the loss of his child. Discs that, wouldn't you know it, Afton hides inside the Funtime robots, just like we see in the games. But as we see in FNAF 4, it isn't enough. The crying child still winds up at Freddy's, he still gets himself bitten, and he dies. With that iconic line in yellow, I will put you back together. Now, this fox. remember that quote I keep going back to? Don't worry about this it. book right here, second to last page, thoughtful fans might want to revisit sections of how Henry and Afton's view of the robots change over time in order to determine Thank how Thank you, Insomniac, for the two hours Michael became well, white. Henry True. in the books uses the robots to bring his daughter back to life. He rebuilds her. 
he puts her quite literally back together he used more the kid robot robots to try and heal his grief i mean if anyone in this series is gonna say a line like i will put you back together it's henry heck maybe mustard man is the color that he is in order to better match the color of his fnaf 4 text i will put you back together in yellow and yeah sure it's yellow and not orange, but guess what? Purple guy was pink in his first outing. As the series has gotten darker, so Damn. too All has right. the color palette. But seriously, there are two colors that are relatively similar. Maybe there's a connection there. And if the crying child is indeed Michael, as I've talked about a lot in past theories, Henry literally <laughs> rebuilding his lost son like he does his lost daughter in the books explains all of the weirdness of Mike's behavior throughout the series. How he's able to survive being scooped, how he has fragmented memories of his past, how he doesn't die after puking up mom's robot spaghetti, how he's only able to die by fire. I should be dead. It's not. also worth noting that at no point in the series is Michael ever explicitly identified as Michael Afton. Now, it seems like it's Mike true. insists location is referring Damn. to William Afton as Which father. is weird, Papa, but it's, it's true. Me, and him saying, as spring travel I'm going years, to what? definitely makes it seem like he's going out and looking for William, but that may just be another Scott misdirect. It's open to interpretation. Thank you, Poison, for the $5. Obviously, the answer is that William and Henry are actually married, and they have identical cars. That means we don't need wives for them, too. True. That's my pref Oh I my god, we've never seen either of their wives. Because they're married. Neither, neither of them, yeah. We've yeah. never <laughs> seen either of their wives because they're a gay couple. That is funny. That not only, it doesn't just apply to one of them. Neither of their wives we've seen. We've never seen either of their wives. That's why it's Henry Afton. Exactly. <laughs> and then Henry I guess Afton. I guess in the books Charlie is homophobic, so she takes a different last name. Based. <laughs> I mean, this scene alone still has people convinced that Springtrap is Mike trapped inside of the suit. Mike Trap, even though I feel like it's pretty well established at this point that it's William Afton in there. It's, it's still Will Trap. But there are people who are vehemently determined that Mike Trap is the reality of the canon I'm not of convinced this series. those people Regardless are real. Of the whole Michael stuff, William Thank you. convinced those people stopped playing the games after sister location. Thank you, Bob, though, for the $5. Can you put Little Chungus on the desk? I don't see why not. Just a regular chungus. A little one. Hold on, let me find. Big, uh, big chungus, big chungus, big chungus. Big, big chungus. I'm going to use the official render. The official render. Yeah, because they put him in a mobile game. Yeah, they did. He's such a good boy. I love Big Chungus. 2018 was a great year for memes. I'd argue the last good year for memes we've had. It was pretty great. Somebody touch a my spaghetti. Was that the year of Tide Pods? It was, yes. Oh, boy. Absolute banger. <laughs> Absolute banger. People friggin' eating Tide Pods and dying. Mostly I mean, if you're going to eat a Tide Pod, you, you do deserve it. I'm going to be totally real with you. I mean, yeah, but... <laughs> you deserve whatever's coming. All right, let's keep going. William Afton in these books is all about achieving immortality through the robots. He's interested in the science of it all. He wants to study the original FNAF gang science and replicate rules. the living metal that resulted from their deaths. That's why we see him tearing apart the robots in FNAF 3's minigames. He wants access to their metal. He wants to harvest it to run experiments. He wants to melt down <laughs> those living endoskeletons so he can harness the possessed metal to create the fun time animatronics. <laughs> I mean, that is the... <laughs> Kind of wavy. Yeah, hold on, so he hold can on. Harness the possessed metal to create the fun time. Hmm. I, I'm not sure he made that middle one. Oh, the middle one. Yeah, whatever. Where the fuck did she come from? I don't know, man. It doesn't make sense. She is an enigma. It really is. Thank you, Bomberman, for the five dollars. Could you put bass.exe? What the fuck is bass.exe? Sure. 
Zach, you're a horror guy. Do you have a note? I could not tell you for the life of me. Oh, it's a Mega Man character. <laughs> oh, that's why, because it's not a freaking creepypasta. Yeah. Okay. I like Mega Man. I think there's something wrong with our heads. I've just been on the horror brain rot since I was a child. Exactly. Okay. Finish this one off. Animatronics. I mean, that is the whole point of Candy Cadet's stories in FNAF 6. Five things melted down to create one thing, and it's exactly what we see happen as a huge plot point in the final book. Henry, on the other hand, is the emotional one. He's a creator who gets too invested in his own work. He's a bit of a neglectful father while he's alive, but he's <laughs> devastated when he loses his daughter, turning to the one and only thing oh, that scream. understands to try and- Really out of place in a map head video. He goes to extreme lengths to use his <laughs> robotic skills to try and bring her back to life, and he does it. He succeeds. He creates the most absurdly lifelike humanoid animatronics ever in science fiction. And they have to be to do some of the stuff that you see happen in these books because it is absurd. But yep, if... he's talking about what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are truly meant to apply the themes of these books to the games. Then this isn't the Afton family household. It doesn't make sense. It's the Emily family household. It would explain the factory under the house. It would explain the empty girl's bedroom in FNAF 4. It would explain the 1983 date that we're presented with. It would say why Mustard Man is yellow, why there are footprints outside the window, why the crying child is suddenly scared of Freddy's, and it would even go so far as to explain the line, I will put you back together. I mean, are there holes to this thing? <laughs> Absolutely. Are there things that are difficult to explain? Are you kidding me? This is FNAF. It's gonna be true no matter this is William's house, Henry's house, or the frickin' White House. It's an extreme Damn. thing, but I think it's one that's worth considering because of its alignment with the books, and because of the lingering threads that it answers. Which is why today, I encourage you to discuss down below in the comments, discuss over on Reddit. Who is this guy? This ain't map, eh? That it's all Wait, yeah, what the... Theory. A game... A game theory. All right, Thanks. well, that's another one down. Um, 4.15 now. I think we got time for one more. Bam, uh, bam. Let's do ooh, the timeline finale. <laughs> oh. oh. So, Isaac, you haven't oh, seen this one, right? I didn't, well, I didn't bother. Zach, you have seen this, right? I have seen them all, yes. Okay, this one, Isaac? Be prepared. Mm -hmm. I don't even <laughs> care, man. <sighs> <laughs> Alright. This Hello, one, Internet. Like... Welcome to Game Theory. And the final part of my FNAF timeline where today we're bringing our story to a close by talking about the most complicated and controversial part of the timeline. The part that I've been dreading most of all, the end. The moment where we're finally forced to come to some definitive and difficult answers trying to yes. explain what the heck we were watching in <laughs> Security Breach. The last two episodes have been about death. The death of Afton's family, the deaths <laughs> of multiple children, the death I of the franchise death. Kill itself me, as Mike and Henry. Thank you, Poison, for the five dollars. Can you put Doc Trap lurking behind you? Yeah, sure. Why not? How, how do you even get Doc Trap? I don't know. I'll probably use the U2's figure. I I hate FNAF. Oh, come on, Google. Don't shit out on me now. Okay, Google is shitting the bed. Oh no, no. Yoink an image from Microsoft Edge. Seems like I'm gonna have to.
If so, there are no so tools. If CC saw Elizabeth uh, Elizabeth dead, where Nightmare Baby in Baby's Nightmare Circus. That's that's where you can get Nightmare Baby. It's a good game. I like that one. It's the superior sister location. It is. It really is. Matt Pat's timeline videos are worse pink sauce. <laughs> no. What, is, what does that mean? What was what's so worse than pink sauce? Okay. Uh, I I I uh yeah, I mean uh, yeah. I don't know. See, here's the thing. Oh uh, yeah, um, I don't, I I don't even really blame Matt Pat for how bad his theories are because he's just working with an awful fucking story. So I can't even mm -hmm. put that much blame onto him. He's just doing what we're all doing. It's not like his theories are even that much worse than like a lot of other people's. Like I think John from FNAF is about on par, and like I have nothing. I have no disrespect towards him, but I don't think one's better than the other. From to my knowledge, Rytos does a pretty good job, but like I just it's just this series is unsolvable, so you can't even really get me to care. Like I like Rytos and IG's fantasy and obviously Noah demuted. You know, I, I respect that they're trying, I guess, but I can't get myself to care because you're solving something that can't be solved. Yeah, that's my thing. Like you get to a certain point where it is literally impossible. Why is Alice in a jar with Clyde? Okay. Why do you think? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully that satisfies the need, and I'll never have to open Microsoft Edge again. Uh, I, I, you probably will. I am not prepared for that moment. <laughs> okay, let's let's get through this timeline. <laughs> Ooh, this is the one that nobody liked. Like straight up nobody. Even the people who are genuinely like they agree with Matt Pat, even they were like, No, dude, no. No, but definitely not. I think one of those was like Ozone. Ozone usually likes a lot of that stuff, but I think even Ozone was like, This seems really wrong. <laughs> figuratively and literally burn it all down. Today's episode though, and the current end of this franchise, is instead all about rebirth. The return of old characters in new forms, and the controversial rebirth of a That's franchise every entering the next era <laughs> of its story. But before we hop into the timeline, due to scheduling conflicts, I won't be able to have any live talk back after this episode. I know, I promised one, I was really excited about it, but I just couldn't make it work with my schedule and all the other guests' schedules. That's <sighs> this talk, I, I've seen the talk back. I think the talkback is great, general, genuinely. It's um, literally just a bunch of theorists talking about Ben. Why do you? Why did you think this? <laughs> uh, but also, generally speaking, I'm like kind of low. That said, I still do plan on doing one over the coming weeks with special guests. Just uh, make sure that you're subscribed and either have all notifications turned on or you're just watching our community tab Is for the here somewhere? He's in a jar right now, and smoking now, a blunt. Further ado, we finally yeah, reached the, the end the and jar. a new beginning to our story. FNAF 3 sounds. Fazbear Entertainment Yay, is dead. The there is no sound. need for you to return to work next week as Fazbear Entertainment is no longer a corporate entity. All debts had been paid. All assets redistributed. The company was outright dissolved. Even the memories of the horrors that had happened there started to fade away in the public consciousness. The people were gone too. William was dead. Henry was gone. A whole generation Yay, of young Emilys and Aftons had lost their lives to the horrors of the pizzeria. Wish. All of them collateral damage to the man in the bunny suit. Everyone the company had ever touched was dead and gone well all except one pay your child support you deadbeat i'm keeping the diamond oh, ring the i also what? set the house on <sighs> you're not ready for this you're not ready for this ready for it. fire 
Uh, Clara Afton. She'd been there in the early days, back when things uh, were good. They'd had the perfect home, a thriving business, the ideal family. But shortly after their youngest son died, things started to change. William had become distant, <laughs> lost in his work, obsessive. She had watched him change from this irritatingly brilliant man that. Yep, Isaac. Huh? Is there anything anything wrong with this? Where the <laughs> fuck did the name Clara come out of the show? Yeah, the, the cartoon. Her name was Clara because she was based off of the vampire cartoon, definitely. That she had fallen in love with to a drunken monster. You see, I don't, underst I don't understand where and she's coming from because I think William is hotter post-murderer. This is also a great uh, screenshot. <laughs> this is quite... The screen, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and despite her trying to reach out to him in those desperate days, he was just too far gone. Third turn. That's Ballora. sake she mm, that's pretty gay hold on one sec mm, mm. if you know I'm, I'm just thinking about this from the perspective of if he believes that she survived she's alive and why mm -hmm. is he still using below as ever right well I, I don't think he ever thought she died i think he thinks she left him Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's the whole thing that like Ballora was based off of this Clara Afton character, and the song represents their struggling marriage. Ah, uh, so I see. William built himself a sex doll based on his ex-wife. Great. That is exactly what happened. The relationship. Absolutely. From there, she largely faded into obscurity, a mystery from William's past, a footnote in his history, and that was fine for her. She wanted to leave that part of her life behind. She tried to move forward, never wanting to hear the name Freddie Fazbear again. A time <laughs> defined by mistakes. <laughs> Me too. Honestly, same. Yeah. Then, for real. Her work started to arrive. As Fazbear Entertainment began to close as a corporate entity, suddenly her mail was flooded with notifications, requests. What are you fucking on about? He's saying that she would technically be the last Afton alive, so everything. Not if they were divorced. I'm more so thinking Henry fucking dissolved the company, there wouldn't be anything left to give her. Yeah, there'd yeah. be nothing. It was no longer a corporate entity. Also, if, Aft if Afton has his wife who's being passed all this shit, does Henry's wife have any role in this? Uh, well, you see, Henry is gay. He has no wife. Henry had his husband. Okay, Willie. Henry's husband? What happened to him? Uh, dead. I don't know. Whatever, okay. Motorcycle William accident. Shot him. That, <laughs> that, that's more believable, yes. Yep. Okay. Been there since the beginning, helping William in the early days of his business, and now, as a shareholder and sole living member of the Afton family, all copyrights and trademarks of Imagine both Afton that. Robotics and... Imagine that. Your entire fucking family, including all three of your kids and your husband, they all drop dead before you do. <laughs> Hold this L, bozos. Last one standing. <laughs> Last one standing! Clara Afton got that number one victory royale. Oh, no. <laughs> imagine, imagine she opens up her mailbox and just says, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winner, winner, congratulations! She starts doing the default dance. Oh my god. <laughs> and Fazbear Entertainment passed on to her memories of this past life that she had long left behind. Looking at the blueprints, the contracts, the memos, she felt old wounds begin to reopen. The regret <laughs> of a happy family. I love the frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fucking table. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. had been torn away from her. William had always Staples been brilliant. Logo. That's what had attracted her to him in the first place. No, it just but is a staple. <laughs> blinded by it's just a staple. Pride. He was too jealous, too petty, too unable to actually see a bigger picture. But now, holding the paperwork that contained decades of heartbreak and trauma, she realized it was her turn. She was holding the paperwork. What? This was her My husband killed all those kids years ago. I think I should give it a shot. What do you mean it's your <laughs> turn for what? 
Oh, her no. chance and one thought resonated in her head i will put them back together i will put kill them yourself all back together <laughs> she would be the one to rebuild this family to rebuild the pieces of that shattered mean? life to reclaim the kids that fazbear had stolen from her but how oh, trust me isaac you're gonna you're not gonna like her. this <laughs> she knew that he had been onto something collecting remnant robotic humanoids digital conscience so transfers the great. pieces were all in place they were just scattered fragmented it was almost like there were too many ideas going in too many different directions it was such an important idea that she reiterated that point to herself there were too many ideas going in too many different directions that said <laughs> okay i love that part of the video i know he's talking about the series but like what? i know he's talking about the series but like you could literally say that it's about his entire fucking timeline <laughs> it's both his timeline and the game like <laughs> also <laughs> He should not use the cartoon eyes on himself. <laughs> what do you mean? I love when he does it. <laughs> this looks weird. It's great. Yeah, there had to be a way to save it all. She just needed to put it all back together. But how? To Does rebuild she even mention family, security she would first need Depends to on what you mean by mention. That stolen them away from she them. mentioned the ever. Of the characters, their licenses, the technology patents, and the Fazbear name. She converted the corporation back to an LLC, a structure for smaller businesses that are usually family-owned. <sighs> this is such a weird screen. theory. From there, she would need yeah. Because <laughs> this is a theory following a character that doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, this is, he is literally trying to claim that the, like, main, most important character in the entire FNAF timeline, post FNAF 6, is a character who he literally made up in every <laughs> single way. <laughs> Everything about this character that he has brought up has been completely made up from her name to her very existence. <laughs> yes. Yes, the, oh, here's the thing. We know that she kind of would have to exist in order for the kids to be around, but like, there's nothing explicitly stating that Afton didn't just mitosis himself, you know? Yeah, like, it, it, we have just as much evidence to support the idea that William Afton gave birth through budding than we do <laughs> to believe he had a wife. <laughs> there's just as much evidence there. If anything, there's more proof that he reproduced through budding since Michael apparently looks so much like him. Yeah, exactly! <laughs> There's more evidence proving that he's some weird asexual entity! I believe it. Thank you, Poison, for the $5 missed piece voice. Last person among the living wins the franchise and the family tree. Killing children. <laughs> Damn. I'd compete. Lots of it. Remnant was the key. Clearly, in the later years remnant. of his life, William had been using Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals as a remnant farm, sending robots to kids' birthday parties in the hopes of nabbing bits of the stuff here and there. But clearly, it wasn't enough. He had, what, like four, maybe five animatronics going out every week? No. It was a decent idea, but to get the remnant they required, it needed scale. Dozens, hundreds oh, of boy. animatronics all out there, all gathering remnant oh, from here unsuspecting comes customers. AR. But to yep. do that would require help, something William would never ask for. William had kept everything in-house. His obsession with control limited him. Clara, though, she wasn't nearly that precious. A plan like this required partners, people outside of Fazbear to do the heavy lifting. So she contacted a mid-sized delivery company, DLZ Shipping Solutions, to help build replicas of all the original animatronics. And with field delivery apps being all the rage, they wouldn't have been the ones to make them, right? Because they're, they're very clearly a shipping company. They don't... I, I, do shipping companies necessarily make fucking robots? No. I don't, I don't think so. Well, I have to disagree with that part. What gets me about this too is like, so she got these guys to deliver these animatronics, which canonically explains FNAF AR, but that also implies that she's been paying these guys to send Springtrap to people's houses. <laughs> yeah. And Circus Baby. I and think endoskeletons it's... that carry flamethrowers yeah, and spring it... trap out on fire. Yep. Uh, as well as 8-bit baby, somehow. Whatever the fuck that Some... thing is. Somehow she's summoning 8-bit pixelated sprites and sending them after people. Yeah. Or there's also the time she turned her husband into a fucking clown. Yeah. Or, you know, got him hooked on lean. <laughs> True. That was the darkest arc of his story. <laughs> 
Oh god. Needs to help build replicas of all the original animatronics. And with field delivery apps being all the rage, why not an animatronic delivery service? Order one to celebrate what do you mean, why not? Halloween party. <laughs> Fourth of July picnic. We'll invite Liberty Chica and Fourth of July <laughs> play on over. She would make sure that that's the best part. So yeah, you see, this implies that he takes the skins into account, which means flamethrower Endo is being yeah. invited to parties. Yeah, that, that one's for gender reveals so that you can burn down the neighborhood. <laughs> 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 that they made skins for every occasion. Chocolate Bonnies for Easter, Shamrock Freddy's for St. Patrick's Day, Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, S5, for the $2. Eleanor Schmidt versus Clara Afton, who wins? <laughs> You're talking about the two Neither. different fictional William wives? Neither. Fucking Eleanor. They form, a, they form a blissful relationship and... Yeah, no, they're, they're, and they're better together than competing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. I can't wait to see the poor fucking family that ordered piranha plush trap to their house. Yeah, we 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 thought it'd be cool. Our son really likes fish. He really <laughs> likes fish, and he really likes that tiny little ankle biter animatronic. We don't yeah. have a son anymore. What well, what occasion <laughs> are you? What occasion are you inviting like Frost Bear to? Yeah, like, what, he's, a, he's an actual, like, icicle he stabs people with. What about the Jacko <laughs> animatronics? Yeah, what, what are you inviting them to? Oh Gee, man, my son us. loves the this funny little fun time animatronic that's going on around by like, the fire that forms a turtle. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, that also means that Markiplier is canon. <laughs> I want that to be true, I love yeah. him. <laughs> You'll always have someone watching your back. Was it ridiculous? Absolutely. Yeah, who's buying that? No doubt. It was exactly <laughs> the sort of thing. What occasion is this one for? Who's <laughs> buying Steampunk Balloon Boy? Or for that matter, what about the one that's just made of swamp mud? Yeah, what about the trash ones? <laughs> Thank you, Insomnia, for the two hours. This means she turned William into a clown. No, Scott did that. But yeah. <laughs> that William would have hated, but it needed to be done to get enough remnant. Normally, the novelty of ordering an animatronic wore off after, like, what, one, maybe two times? But with new... Ick fucking excuse me? With Freddy Frostbear. Oh. Skins this for new holidays? Stupid. Suddenly you had yourself an animatronic perfect for every occasion. <laughs> it would keep people hooked. It would keep them ordering the latest and greatest that Fazbear Entertainment LLC had to Where offer. They and them all after the, the while, they'd be collecting and returning. So, um, I do have a theory video on that. Oh? I do. You should, you should watch it sometime. I'll send it in chat later. <laughs> gonna be real, I won't. I know, I, won't. <laughs> I know you won't. I know you won't. In a word, it was brilliant. There was just one problem with it. No one trusted the Fazbear name. Who is ordering Curse of Spring Trap to their home? It's <laughs> a good point. I'm, invi I'm inviting the curse to my next Mayan execution. <laughs> <laughs> what about the freaking like Great Escape Golden Freddy or whatever that's literally wearing like a straight jacket? Yeah, I'm inviting. Uh, my dad just got out of prison, so I ordered that to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on getting out of prison, Dad. We bought this expensive ass animatronic. It's you. Yeah, don't you like it? It can turn invisible. <laughs> Game. The company's brand was still Just mud in the public eye. No one would want to hire animatronics from the restaurant franchise known for murdering children. Nothing kills a party quite like the threat of death, you know. So she needed to find Damn, a way right. to discredit the stories that had come before. She needed to win back the public's affections, oh, reactivate some nostalgia yep. for the spooky stories of their childhoods. She needed a game. Multiple games, in fact. They lied to us. They lied to all of us. They told us that the whole point of this VR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer. But that's not true at all. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. Struggling game developers were a dime a dozen online, most working on their <laughs> magnum opus between shifts at the Dollar General. Am so, I'm you right. found one. Steve, <laughs> 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 Oh my god, it's Steve! It's Steve, Steve Snodgrass! This is, this is the best picture of him ever. <laughs> Operation Thank You, Scott, has succeeded. Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Stevia. <laughs> it's the guy from Minecraft. 
the right mix of desperate and doofus willing to say and do anything for a couple extra bucks. And he fell right in line, as expected, delivering stupid little things with dumb generic names like Mangle's Quest, Balloon Boy's Air Adventure, Five Nights at Freddy's. Bad gameplay mm. with even worse graphics, but hey, they got the Damn, Damn, really, you're really shitting on FNAF. <laughs> yeah, you're really, you're really shitting on Scott right now. What the fuck, dude? Especially Scott's when these games ga look ugly on purpose. Especially when these games look like a million times better than Help Wanted. <laughs> like, legitimately. Job done. People were suddenly talking about the clues inside of these things, searching for the hidden lore. They were actively making oh jokes God. about dead kids at pizzerias. Her husband's twisted history of serial murder had suddenly been reduced to a mere Nancy Drew mystery to be solved. The plan had worked. Freddy Fazbear's was suddenly more popular than ever. Things were going shockingly well. Her takeover and reboot of the franchise imagine was someone did that complete. IRL. Suddenly, yeah, like imagine. imagine that that would Imagine, be equivalent like, to like their uh, that would be equivalent to like the designers of the World Trade Center making a bunch of video games based on 9/11 and just be like yeah no it never happened yeah that what is going to talk about that is what is equivalent to like that is the most that is the most like insensitive and like blatantly awful stuff like people would see that happening and they'd be pissed it's like you're making a video game about these actual child murders that are proven to have happened yeah yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't go very well. Like, no, no, Fazbear Entertainment would not become even more popular. They'd probably lose. Like, they'd probably go bankrupt. Thank you, Poison, for the two dollars. In universe, do you think they sold adult models? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. And I bought all. I bought all of them. No, you did not. Let's move on. Infused with cash. I did. Built the largest, <laughs> most ambitious project. No, because that would mean some of them are women. Yeah, I, I, uh, Egg a pizza plex. Yeah, I, I have them, always I have them so as collectibles. But always thought so small scale. I can appreciate the woman fault. body. Not her female, though. Female she knew that this anatomy. latest project needed to be big. It needed to be flashy. I think you better stop it talking. It needed to be a palace for okay. <laughs> A place that got people talking and... You know, before you, before you dig a bigger hole for yourself. <laughs> Checking out the latest in Fazbear products. So with a steady I just supply point out of remnant that flowing in... Before I thought of the phrase female anatomy, I said woman body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> One moment. One moment. No, yeah. The, the person woman asked, yeah, no, she literally made an entire game series to make light of her drama so that her brand would sell better. <laughs> and you know what? Based. Which, like, that is, if if anything, describe the grind set more. Like, the <laughs> grind set. Oh, great. This is so, this is such, this is so good. You did so good, Matt Pat. Isaac, you once said you hate women on stream. I bet, I bet that Isaac has said that more times. Yeah, it's definitely been more than once. Time. The stage was set. It was time that's to get crazy. to a real goal. Yeah. Literally uh, rebuild. We're still at the start of the video. Wait, what do you mean? Oh fuck! March, Jesus Christ! The first was obvious. The crying child, her little boy, yeah. the one that was the first to get ripped away from her. She'd seen down in his bunker that William had gotten very close to replicating artificial humans what using the animatronic fuck are technology. What the fuck So that's exactly what she would do. Oh yeah, the bitty babs are recreations of real people. Oh, no. In what fucking world? Are you ready yeah. for Greg Butt? <laughs> I'm totally on board with Greg Bot. You know how you're the one that doesn't like that. I want Greg Bot to be true. There's a specific line coming up that I viscerally, it just makes me like pause and scream. Okay. I hope that happens. Shirt, even down to small details that no one would notice, like the band aid on his left. That's a characteristic. That's a physical characteristic of the creature. No, I'm focusing I on like the that citation. I the crying yeah. child part of the character encyclopedia. The same book that pages later says that he's wrong. Well, that's <laughs> the book that proves him wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Left knee. Williams research had even found ways of making animatronics that could bleed and process food, making them virtually indistinguishable from a typical human. He would never have any idea of what he actually was. That doesn't look he was like a human. I'm gonna be real. Told. The uh. only <laughs> things that could possibly ruin the illusion were any overrides to his internal systems. If something were to say interfere with the cameras that he had in his eyes, or cause some sort of a core <laughs> reboot to his hard drive, or X-ray his metallic bones, then yeah, he would be exposed. But otherwise, to the outside world, he was just your. 
typical normal human boy. She worked down in the bowels of the pizza plex giving I him hate life, Gregory. but it was one thing to build him. I want him to, to burn. Him remember his identity. He died so young, so early in their history that there was no preserved memories for him. No documentation that she could just download into his digital brain. So bit by bit, she trained him, forcing him yeah, to Yeah, because that's a thing you could do with someone in that was older. In the corner of the yeah. room, she even made a makeshift dinner table. A reminder of their happier it's days. I, no, it's, it's Clara. <laughs> he's, he's about to say that she built her youngest son without a head. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Emily recreated two brothers, a sister, a father, and the mother at the head of the table. The one in charge. The one in command. The one bringing The one you should not have killed. After everyone else died. <laughs> this was admittedly slower than she would have liked. At first, he could only communicate through simple ones and zeros, then rudimentary drawings and crude letters. But by Yum. Night, Yum. images of his Yum. past life started to come through. Balloons, colors, houses, bears and faces, birthday parties. All for me. Gregory was alive. As the robot boy embraced her, she felt a warmth that she hadn't in decades. No, this, she didn't. this was not the joy she did not. Yeah. This was what it was all for. Her son, back in her arms again. The plan was working. She had to keep going. Next was William. If the family was truly going to be put together, she would need him. And she knew it. Why? Uh, I still just love how that's no the serial killer. ever backed up, like, how sh this character actually exists, by the way. No. We are 11 minutes in, and Clara Afton has never been explained through any citations or anything. Because she, she just don't, she just doesn't exist. I guess we'll get to that eventually. I don't she think exactly so. where he was in the ruins of that old Freddy Fazbear's pizza place where Henry had trapped him. In fact, that's specifically why she this insisted one didn't on well. the pizza plex no. there over the sinkhole. It was the best place to hide what her true intentions were with the entire operation. Digging through the wreckage, she found him. He was right where she thought he'd be. The Seeing mimic. the putrid shell of the Springtrap suit, the though, mimic. was not something she was prepared for. The rotting corpse of William Adams. Whose model is this? Scorched flesh fused. I'm really the confused. Mimics. Hollow black sockets were the eyes mimics. once were. A smell that... I went... Uh, Someone said earlier that Matt is not allowed to use, uh, like, official models with new renders or whatever. I wonder if he, like, pays his team to make, like, distinctly different models that still kind of resemble the characters he's talking about, so that he can I use those. So. I do wonder. I, I, I doubt that. I mean, but it's possible. Reeked of burned carbon and bloody iron. He was no longer flesh. He was just the tangled sinews of a creature that was once called human. How far this brilliant man had fallen. It was Still clear a dead that body. Work was cut out for her on this one. Afton was practically lifeless. The man may not have been able to die, but what do you mean practically? <laughs> By all just accounts, that is a corpse. No, 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 practically. <laughs> was about as close as you could come, and his body would need a lot of reconstruction. Isaac? Replacing arms and endoskeleton reinforcements was the top priority. Maybe he pulled from I could their hear new the gears turning in your head. So you'd have to see if they had hey, any I, I was thinking things, around that they could but... steal. In the meantime, though, she threw the husk that was once her husband into a life support pod infused with aerosolized remnant to help keep him stable. But more important uh, than yes, recovering his body was the aerosolized remnant. Because that is a thing that has been shown to be able to aerosolize. Just... I yeah, just love the... to breathe in that soul dust. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the good shit. I snort lines of remnant. Uh, I snort the deceased. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, you can do that. You can snort. You, you ever snort grandma's ashes? <laughs> Yo, that, this, that... Is, this, is a, this is like a whole step further. You're, you're snorting grandma's essence. <laughs> you, you know, that was that, that, that was the... That... <laughs> That was the largest problem with Security Reach. We never we never saw Burn Trap take out a vape pen full of remnant and just take a hit off of it. That would be so <laughs> Bro, I would I would go on the record saying Security Breach is the best FNAF game if that was a thing that happened. <laughs> Burn Trap hit a vape pen full of Yes. Remnant. That would that would literally be all I need. Hell yeah. Covering his mind. In his current state, he was also, comatose. An empty shell. Out too, by the way, brain real quick. Have we never t thought about how fucking old Clara would be? Ex I I was going to mention that, but I just couldn't be fucking bothered. Yeah, she'd be yeah. like 80 or 90. <laughs> Ass Clara would assuming be she's the same actual, age as Afton. Like, Clara mm -hmm. would be a hag by this point. She'd be knocking on death's door. There would be nothing left of her. She'd literally <laughs> look like that one old lady from Spongebob who hates chocolate. 
Why does she want to rebuild the family? She's gonna die like next year. <laughs> She's not gonna have much time to spend with them. I know. What is this? What is this like, for? She can catch the common cold and she'll drop. Why does she want her family back now? <laughs> yeah, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Damage starts at temperatures over 108 degrees Fahrenheit, 42 degrees Celsius, and years of repeated fires what had burned what? his brain to goo. Gone was the brilliant. What? Did he briefly throw in science there to prove a point? I, I guess. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I have no idea what that has to do with anything. Also, this is one hell of a screenshot as well. Yeah, what is this? Yeah. It, it looks like. Look, look, wife. Look at my head. Look at my animatronic head. Look at him. You could fit a whole a child in that mouth. Drawn her to oh my god. But she had... Well, not necessarily the whole thing, just the head, you know, the important part. En enough, to, enough to crush. Plan. Unlike her darling boy Gregory, Afton had found ways to record his consciousness. Fundamentally, the brain is only a series of electrical connections after all, so why couldn't you replicate that in the form of a standard circuit board? In essence... Well, I mean, <laughs> we try that, like, all the time. Why is it Williams the one who figured it out? <laughs> did, he do, did he do that like in between child deaths? Yes, Charlie's <laughs> dead and my son's probably gonna die next. I think I'd better record my brain now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, again, the mimic just shits all over this part. Yeah. In essence, you could create a digital consciousness. And one thing she knew about William, he was nothing if not cautious. A planner. Someone who had backup plans to his backup plans. And sure enough, there it was. Buried in piles of old ants. Keep in mind that his backup plan for uh, seeing a bunch of ghost kids surrounding was running into the old rabbit suit that he would have known uh, was dangerous as fuck. Um, and then he died. He did a swan dive into it. Man jumped in the air and like hopped right inside and started giggling. Man did a swan dive into his own personal Iron Maiden. This is too much. Like, what, what was he? What was he expecting to happen if he didn't die in that suit? By the way, was he just gonna sit there and stare at them? Maybe think they're too scared. Like, oh shit, the bunny guy's back. I think we better go, guys. All right, see ya. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh, gee, gang, we better head out. <laughs> animatronic CPUs, a record of Afton himself. But she needed someone to test it. How the someone fuck do you know that? Someone was here during the night. It had to have been the client. I mean, they sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation, told us to scan it, said it would expedite the process so we wouldn't need to program any pathfinding ourselves. Unlike the other games that she'd paid to have made in the past, this one had a different purpose. This wasn't about PR, it was about getting William back up and running, spreading his virus to the masses. Oh, it's spreading. is not responsible for accidental digital consciousness transference. Real world manifestations of digital characters. She hired a new developer, Silver Parasol Games, that is to pretty odd. <laughs> and bring her husband into the system. And because of the immersive nature of bit. VR, William's consciousness would be able to merge with the player, giving him a new body, a new agency. There was just one complication. Afton's hold wasn't as powerful as she had hoped. He wasn't able to gain complete control. The first trial run, Jeremy, was so desperate to escape from his grasp that he sliced his own face off with a paper shred. <laughs> Messy. Afton's. That's pretty funny. I'm still not convinced he did that of his own accord. I think that was the mimic, I guess. The mimic? I think he was I told like to do that. Sense. Unless, like, every single FNAF character just has really elaborate ways of killing themselves. Yeah, like, come on, Jeremy. Are you too good to, like, stick a revolver in your mouth like a normal person? Why do you have to go <laughs> like with a fucking paper person. shredder? <laughs> like a normal person. Yeah. Come on, why, why do you gotta pick the most fucked up way to do it? And then why would you also put the headset back on? Because that's what he does after he cuts his own face off. That's true, yeah. This is just... My, my brain is shutting off. I don't know, I want to die. Reluctant, to say the least. But it was the second oh my God, is that attempt that looked from like dreams of insomnia? to kill two birds with one oh, yeah. stone. Enter why Wait, is what? that being brought up in this? Isaac, did you hear that? No, I did not. It was the second attempt that looked like it had the potential to kill two birds with one stone. Enter. <laughs> Three. <laughs> no. Oh, this part of this part gets fucking. Darling Elizabeth would have been a young woman at this. Yeah. 
this point if she had lived. And Clara wanted someone who wasn't Elizabeth, but could be just like her. Could she have just rebuilt her? What like do you Rachel? mean? Sure. She decided against it because she wanted an actual human mother-daughter connection. Well, that, and it would be redundant and narratively unsatisfying to have two robot kids in the same family. Matt. Matt. You fuck. Matt, this entire thing was narratively unsatisfying. What's narratively unsatisfying, Matt, is her solution to getting her daughter back being to have her daughter be possessed by her husband. You think it's narratively satisfying to have her daughter and her husband be the same guy? <laughs> is that narratively satisfying? To yes. have your husband possessing your daughter so they are the same person? Is that your perfect family? <laughs> this blows. Okay. What could she say? William had put a lot of... T also, just saying, she supposedly built Jerry to be the same age he was when he died, but now Elizabeth gets to be an adult. I know, I was thinking, uh, I don't get the... What's the point? Who cares? Why? What do you mean? What's the two? What the wah? But the bull? But the ba? Yeah. Tools on the table for her to use, and she was planning on using them all. Plus, Elizabeth had always been so loyal to Daddy. It was time to give her a second <laughs> chance, a true choice. Not funny, and sorry. Vanessa seemed no, to be no the jokes. perfect candidate to fill the role. Your dad's name was Bill. Your dad didn't play fair, did he? He used to make your mom look bad in court. He manipulated you. I know your mom after she lost the custody case. Hmm. I wonder what... Vanessa's mom did. Um, Surely it was move on and then start rebuilding the family. Yes, of course. <laughs> Sorry, yes. I had, I had nothing different in mind. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Cheetoroid11, for the $5. In honor of the narratively unsatisfying robot children, add Wally to the desk. Wally. Are you guys drunk? No, Isaac just sounds like that. That is just I me. Just sounds like that. I'm running on four hours of sleep, and Muted's also running on little sleep. Oh my god! I will say it now, though. I would, I, I would call William Afton daddy. Okay. And be loyal to him. I'd be quite loyal okay. if he so, if he so desired. I want to die. <laughs> I want death. It's called R. Uh, because it... all he was rated R. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Wally was a game for a third game movie for adults. Yeah, Isaac. What happened to streams? Uh, I was gonna stream on my own channel a couple times this week, and I just, I just, it didn't work out time wise. I'll be streaming. I'll be streaming next week. <sighs> okay. I was supposed to. She started as a QA tester at Silver Parasol Games, a VR game development company that was part of her plan to bring back William. Thank you, Insomnia, for the $2. The mimic ruining people's lives to rebuild his fam. Yep. Pretty much it. Pretty much it. Importantly, Why is she Vanessa looking at me like all that? the correct boxes. <laughs> right age, blonde, green eyes, with a fondness for... Fun. Okay. Well, in literally every image, he's... I thought you were going to make your joke. What? A um, joke. The the sneezing joke. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That doesn't fit for the for They need to look pissed fair. off for it to fit. Yeah, that's true. You guys are too, In many ways yeah. it was it's her too much of like a all shock. over again. Yeah. Except it wasn't just looks and personality. What really mattered was Vanessa's mind. So you're telling me wait, so is this like the home. first time in forty years Clara Athen has seen a blonde woman? Like <laughs> what the Green fuck eyes. is this? Yeah. Right? Oh my god. Maybe she just like saw the first one after her plan started and she was like, you know what? You're my oh. daughter and my husband. Oh now. shit. Whoops, I forgot to put <laughs> You that's you you silly. Sorry folks. All right, it's back. back. I always Mother come was back. Able to be manipulated. Yes. She would do nicely. She would be the one. What to is save that? What do you mean? Just as the real Elizabeth would have wanted. I will make you proud, Daddy. While testing the VR game, William's digital Same. consciousness merged with Vanessa. Oh sure, she fought, fragmenting Afton's code into a series of tapes hidden across the game, trying to do web searches to regain control over her life. But it wasn't enough. She was weaker than Jeremy. So she was a threat. Exercise the demon. Moments of lucidity <laughs> and, to and with Vanessa, it was a two-for-one deal. She was getting a daughter back, while also bringing 
bringing her husband one step closer to the one who thinks that's Just really a... fucking weird. It that, is weird. That he wrote it to be that her plan was to have her husband and her daughter be the same person. <laughs> yeah. No, that that's is... fucking weird. That's really funny. That is, I that I is really odd. I had to make sure that Vanessa was headed the right way. The reborn Gregory was an expert hacker, part of the benefits of being an Afton and a robot. So Clara what is had this to keep tabs on Vanessa. I don't know. That's a good. That's a good screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> She's saying Vanessa. Hacking into oh, her emails woman. and trailing her therapy sessions to ensure the future Elizabeth was falling in line. If any of the therapists started to ask too many questions, they were promptly dismissed from their positions. And while Gregory kept tabs on Vanessa's personal life, Mrs. Afton made sure to clear a path for her professionally. With silver parasols collapsed, it's the amazing how much that can Vanessa conjure out of nothing. The contaminated circuit yeah. boards to DLZ shipping and the Fazbear Fun Time service. Like this More is a glitches, character that doesn't more... exist. <laughs> I don't, I just, I just don't understand. How to remove people AI from Like, with the Remnant first few, and keep in mind, this is my first time seeing this video. That... With the first few, I said, he just turned fan fiction into theories. This is like that on steroids. Like, this is a character that doesn't exist, therefore couldn't have done any of these things. Why does he think that any of this happened? Where, what is this even remotely based off of? Where did any of this come from? I feel like I'm just watching an alternative universe written by the Matthew Patrick. Patrick. I was going to say Patthew. I like Matthew Patthew. That's what I like to call him. I like calling I don't him Patrick. Why this Patrick. Matrick Patrick. <laughs> I just don't understand. I don't understand how he came up with any of this. That was the best. In a true masterpiece of poetry, she brought Vanessa over to be chief security officer at the Pizzaplex. A true family tradition to don the hat and badge, and all it took was a recommendation from the top as well as some emails marked for deletion. Mm. Sure, Vanessa didn't have relevant experience for the job, but when it comes directly from the CEO, does it really matter? Husband, son, daughter. A corpse, a robot. More like husband twice, daughter half, and son once. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, sort of, if you stretch it a bit. Yeah. A human. All that was left was Michael. Poor, troubled Michael. The boy that killed her youngest. The one that would spend years trying to make his guilty conscience <laughs> right again. A self-professed protector. That sprite looked Most weird. He changed eye color. Yeah. The one that, that would spend years... <laughs> <laughs> Look how different these sprites are. He just looks on. He, he looks a little bit, like, angry. Like, really, dog? Do I really need to go through this? Do I really need to try to do this shit? Man woke up, saw he was in the FNAF 4 house, and was just like... <sighs> God Same, fucking though. damn it. <laughs> trying to make his guilty conscience right again. A self-professed protector. Well, she knew she needed him to complete the family, something that is a really the disturbing had screenshot. Yeah. Itself. Something had <laughs> shifted when using Glamrock Freddy to excavate the buried pizza place. I have been here before. What the this fuck render. is this shot? Man <laughs> looks like he doesn't even know where he is. You know, like, you know, whenever they, you know, whenever, like, anime does, like, the angle to show that a character's crazy. Yeah, the, or, like, like, Stanley Kubrick stare. <laughs> no yeah, you got, like, the Kubrick stare where they're staring up. It looks like Freddy's doing that. <laughs> I found myself for the first time when I cleared the path. I have changed. My friends are here, but I can protect you. I am not me. Maybe it was the remnant that had coursed through Michael's veins. Maybe it was the spirit of Michael living on as a protector. But he was there, somewhere inside that of Glamrock. No she could feel it. And just like that, she'd won. She'd done it. Sure, there were still some kinks to work out, some final brainwashing of Vanessa, some rehabilitation of William, but they were there. Finally, all together again under one roof, the Aftons reunited. A happy ending. And that's how it could have ended. That's how it should have ended. Had it not been for no, a few it years, should, it should have ended way sooner. For one, something was just wrong with the pizza plex. Almost as if the entire building was haunted, possessed. Puppet plushies hiding. I wonder why. Crates, places that they had no <laughs> earthly way of belonging. Staff boxes. Can we pause for a second so eyes. I can just be happy for a moment? Um, Chad, I know none of you care, but. This is something I like. On the stream today, Mob Entertainment confirmed that PJ Pugapillar was in development for Project Playtime's next monster. Ooh. And I think that's I think nice. that's fun. 
And apparently they also have two maps in development. I'm sure that'll take a very long time, but apparently they're working on two. And I think that's pretty fucking cool. That's Can I, that's uh, actually kind of cool. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. PJ is baby. Yeah, PJ is the one I wanted. Okay, can, I, can I also <laughs> point out something that's uh, quite exciting? Yeah. What? The Clyde Plush just is about to sell 400 as of a... Uh, Oh wow! As of a minute shit. ago, it is about to double the minimum I needed to sell. Let's go! In the span of a couple hours. God Everyone damn! Chat, make sure you go buy that Clyde plushie. Yes, if we you don't, I don't sold... like you. I don't. <laughs> That's a bit much. <laughs> we, as of right now, we have sold 392 Clyde plushes within the span of four hours. That's insane. That's awesome. All right, let's. I am so happy. Let's finish That's this 11, off. We, we got <laughs> about 11, 11 minutes left. thousand dollars worth. We got about 11 minutes left. Guys acting like they were being How's this so by long? Some sort of a nightmare. Even their sounds had the echo of nightmares long past. <laughs> it was as though. That is true. I, I, I got so hyped when I heard that. Because it is there. I like that. Mm hmm. Oh, a guardian spirit of the past refused to move on. As long as her husband was around, it too would linger. Only now, it wasn't just in one body, but it was in the essence of the building itself. She had seen stories of houses built on burial grounds getting possessed by angry spirits, but she'd never assumed that it could be real. Then again, in a world of living spirit metal and mind-controlling glitches, who was she to be so judgmental? The whole thing was ridiculous. Why would this be the line that she refused to cross? After all, the Pizzaplex was built over the burial ground of angry spirits. But it was the power cords that finally oh. convinced her that something was wrong. Suddenly, these cords were striped black and white, like the security uh, lappy van winkle. Ago. The very foundation. <laughs> That's what you were paying attention to. <laughs> yes, Not that is what I picked. I don't care. Evidence is the fact that the cords are stripy. No, no, no. I don't give a fuck about yeah. that. Slappy van winkle. What the fuck kind of name is that? Power cords, which, by the way, are only in one section of the game and nowhere else. I thought they were in. Aren't, can't those be seen in the kitchen? No. I'm also not. I'm not. Oh. I'm also not even sure they're power cords. They kind of just look like string lights. Yeah, they do look like. They do just look like string lights. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure really what they're meant to be. Yeah of this place. The materials and wires that constituted it were rebelling against <clears> her, <throat> against the Aftons, against the quest to bring them all together again. And it was being helped by something else, something slithering through the building. Maybe they were connected, she couldn't be sure. This is the all more believable than Slappy Van Winkle. Oozing through the walls, stealing pieces and parts of the old animatronics showcased what the in Rockstar Row. So you could only assume okay, that it was whatever. a byproduct of all the remnants <laughs> they were collecting. From Afton's yeah, testing, she knew that both light and dark remnant existed. One of positive Lunis emotions honest. and the other created from anguish. Ang How do you create light remnant? <laughs> I don't fucking know. It's Is there a good way to die and then get stuffed into a robot? Yeah. Um never mind, I won't say that on your stream. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you Imagine those reins again? Pull them. <laughs> you die by intercourse with the robots. Anger, agony. <laughs> Perhaps this this thing was an amalgamation of all the dark that's a bad blob history model history a collection of the hatred yeah. still housed inside yes two blob he looks so silly as long as it was left alone it seemed to be harmless but if any afton outside you of the got okay. too close it would lash out wildly even young gregory looking to punish the family that had been complicit in its horrible creation little did she know though that gregory should have been her biggest concern that bringing the family together would have some unforeseen consequences gregory was normally the goodest of boys she had literally built him out. Lately, appearing more and more often, disobeying her orders, <laughs> requests. She knew that he loved playing on the arcade machines once the pizza plex closed, being so good as to top the Where is any of this coming all. from? But lately, he was nowhere to be found. She suspected his absence had to do with Glamrock Freddy's failed performance the other night, when he malfunctioned Glamrock live Freddy. on stage. Almost as though the core programming of Freddy responded to seeing this rebuilt small toy. <laughs> Almost what like it fuck? awakened something inside of him. She'd have to make sure that Vanessa was on the lookout for him, but she'd soon come to learn that Vanessa wasn't enough. Whether it was the influence of the nightmare, Wait, why don't or reawakened. What, uh, why? Why doesn't like if why don't these characters know who each other are if this is the context? I don't know. I don't know. 
This isn't a fucking family. You just made a bunch of people somewhat almost resembling people that are dead. I don't... One of her sons is Freddy Fazbear. (laughs) Yeah. Which, by the way, she made her son incredibly attractive. All right, moving on. (laughs) Hatred of animatronics seated deep in Gregory's code, something had caused him to rebel. To rip apart each animatronic in the pizza plex. They were trying to fucking kill him. True. He's not, like, incredibly aggressive and crazy. He was, like, self-defense. And also, hey, we get these parts, we can use them so that the robot who's actually on my side gets stronger. Alright? Why does Vanessa hate Gregory? I mean, if she didn't, she'd be on base, to be fair. Gregory deserves to be hated. Oh my god, Isaac. I hate that child. Bit by bit, this boy was tearing Let's down the empire going. that she'd so painstakingly built. Freeing Vanessa from her mind control, destroying the remains of Afton in the basement, setting Glamrock Freddy loose as her carefully created world... What do you mean, loose? <laughs> Freddy loose. One more time, she began to plot her revenge. She would have to bring them all to ruin. And there you have it, my friends. Nearly a, a ruin. decade oh, in the making of my FNAF timeline for where the franchise is get here it. in... So that's the end of the timeline. The rest of this What's is him explaining. Agent? Oh, that's so good. This is him explaining all the, like... Uh, I do need to, I need to hear him explain how Clara Afton is even a thing that exists. Does he do that? Yes. Okay. 2023, the year of Fazbear Frights, by the way. As always, it wouldn't be right for me to finish without going over some of the more controversial takes that I just handed out. I think we can all agree that this part of the timeline was always going to be the hardest. So let me just break down some I mean, of the sure. points. First of all, the biggest swing of this episode, and obviously the one that everything else rests upon, Mrs. Afton being the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment LLC. <laughs> or even Here's existing. Why I went with this route. Yeah. Now, first and foremost, the head of Fazbear Entertainment is the single biggest mystery that we're meant to solve at this point in the lore. The ultimate no, guy. I- really isn't we know who he is we know who he is and he's just an old fuck we know who it is is that in the books i don't know yep his name is mr burrows and he's just an old bastard oh yeah mr burrows just a jerk that's all who's running the show who is okaying these decisions and in the security breach memos we get multiple mentions of someone manipulating things from the top down whoever this is they are the person driving forward every other facet of late stage fnaf lore here they're the puppet master who's hiring the indie dev they're the ones relaunching the brand building the pizza plex over the burial ground so everything at the end of the timeline relies on this one singular answer now as i see it there are two possibilities here one an adult robot elizabeth like we see older versions of robot kids an entirely new character. Could it be someone completely new to the franchise? Yes. Yes, but in a game with so many returning faces and repeated themes, it would be pretty random and arbitrary. No. Between these two girl bosses, who then would it be? Well, Elizabeth Between always wants to please her daddy, so bosses. she'd be most likely wanting to bring him to life. But then, what's Vanessa's role in all of this? Vanessa is clearly meant to be a parallel for Elizabeth. Same hairs. They don't even have this. This oh, is God. your own artistic. De- this is your own depiction of these characters, and the hair still doesn't even match. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean the hair matches? You designed this, and you still didn't make it match. But if the main goal is getting the Afton family back together, which seems to clearly be the case in Security Breach, then there's no need for Vanessa to be involved at all. We already have Elizabeth (sighs) running the show. It would also mean that we suddenly have two robot kids running around, which feels narratively repetitive and, quite frankly, kind of dumb. Now look at Mrs. Afton. We know having any robot kids running around is fucking dumb. (laughs) All right. God, I gotta stop being so mean if I see you live, but... Honestly, Greg Butt is my least favorite theory. It really is. It's my favorite. It's my favorite of all time. I really gotta stop being mean, though. It's just a theory. It's just a theory. It's just a theory. That's just a theory! The rage building. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Nothing about her outside of any clues that we can get from Immortal and the Restless and Ballora's song. But what her being head of Fazbear does is make every other piece of the lore fit. Suddenly, you can have one of every other type of character. I don't think one those robot pieces kidding Gregory, would fit one together in a puzzle. human in Elizabeth slash Vanessa, one OG corpse in William, and one possessed animatronic one OG cor- <laughs> in Mike. Oh. What kind of fucking image is that? Oh. Who thought this was okay? The mic puzzle piece. (laughs) 
narratively, it makes everything else cleaner. Legally, it's also the option oh, that makes yeah. the most sense. As I call out my narrative, she'd likely have some stake in the original company and all of its assets. So as Fazbear folds as a company, I'd suspect a lot of it would return back to her. But there was one clue her that age. really sold me on this Matt, particular are you gonna talk to? Are you going to talk about her age? Right here, in the post-it <laughs> room, the big lore central of Security Breach, a dinner table scene with the whole family, including... I did point this out that it's strange she's at the head of the table. It is very weird. Because it does weird. it does establish that she's a character, and it does make it out like it's important. But I could almost see this as just me misinterpreting this scene. Like, who's to say that this is even the Aftons at all? Just be a family. Any family. I don't know the mother and not only is she there she is at the head of that table the position of highest honor and responsibility she is the one in charge with william being relegated off to the side that one scene shows that we have to include mom in there somewhere and the only place it makes sense for her to be is at the top now there is one big dilemma with what? my interpretation of all this the ultimate guide really seems to point out that the head of fazbear doesn't want the glitch trap virus to spread they call out one particular email in fnaf ar where the legal team calls Thank you, Insomnia, for the $5. Michael came back because of the Immortal and the Restless reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's the new best theory. Good job, Insomnia. <laughs> that is the great theory. Oh my god. <laughs> the cease and desist to all action about scanning the circuit boards and even in fnaf vr we're told that the circuit boards get stolen back by the client presumably once they realize what danger is on there trying to stop glitch trap before he spreads and gets out of hand here's the problem with that though if the head of fazbear doesn't want afton to rise again why'd they restart the company in the first place why'd they money over the fnaf 6 pizza money game? why'd they go through an elaborate they own that land and they want money so they do things as cheaply as possible like literally yeah. th this whole company is so goddamn awful <laughs> you think they're not going to build over the dead pizza place they own that fucking land they're gonna use it <laughs> <laughs> you think they give a shit about morals and ethics nah <laughs> nah <laughs> cover up to make the possessed Vanessa an important part of the company it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense it would be the most inconsistent series of actions ever but I did want to call attention to it since it seems to be the route that the official guide is trying to steer us towards moving on to minor point number one the five nights at Freddy's games were made by the rogue indie developer here's the thing FNAF Scott VR Coffin. opens with this line that's why we have recreated many of these completely fictitious scenarios what what is he trying to prove here fed over the last several years into a hilarious VR game. It's recreating the lies told to you by the indie developer. And since Help Wanted has direct recreations of FNAFs 1 through 3, it means the games must be part of the fabrications that this developer made up. Also, all of this is heavily implied in the story of uh. the same name, Help Wanted and Tales of the Pizzaplex. Hence, FNAF 1 through 3, canon games within the lore of the series. Oh, Big boy. swing number two, the elephant or ghost in the room, Charlie infecting the Pizzaplex. John from the channel FNAF has made some great findings. Hey, about got FNAF. Influence over Fun half cameo. The cables that looked like the striped arms of the puppet. The nightmare. Yeah, he's also not very good at these theories. <laughs> the pizza plex in weird places. The staff bots with creepy smiles and in your dreams written on the front. All of these things scream puppets. Plus, with the puppet mask not having tears in the blob seems to imply that Charlie's spirit exists elsewhere. She. Eh. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know. Thank you, Bob, Duff, for the five dollars. Can you put Spiky Mikey from TF2 on the desk? I have no idea who that. Is. How, how does the lack of tears imply that she exists elsewhere? Because the have tears until again. How does that imply she still exists elsewhere, and the others? Well, actually, I guess he believes all of them do, pretty much. Is there a single character that like died, died that MatPat believes to be dead? No. Right. Cool. In his mind, death isn't real. Yeah. FNAF at least has decent characters. <laughs> yeah, sure, those. <laughs> I guess. Uh... FNAF at least has some decent theories, does he? <laughs> He's got a couple that oh. I don't outwardly like. <laughs> That's such a low bar. <laughs> I like John, play, and she but has he's kind of just role. Matt Pat, but worse at taking criticism. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. 
especially Let's in Gregory's post-it room. The doors to the post-it room in the game's code are called Charlie Doors. And inside, we see a bunch of lit-up Nightmare Staff bot heads. Suspicious to That is strange. I doubt that's relevant at all. That just seems like something they'd put in and forget, forget about and be like, I hope we didn't leave any, like, misleading clues. <laughs> the least. The channel all ID's Security Fantasy Rich. did a great theory looking at the post-it notes, concluding that oh, the prime ID's child slash Gregory cameo. isn't alone in this room, but I rather like might be communicating with someone. A spirit, Charlie. Charlie's spirit seems to have pulled a poltergeist. Instead of controlling one thing, she's affecting a lot of little details. Foundational elements of the Pizzaplex. And this isn't the first time that we've seen this in the franchise either. We've seen spirits communicating with people through physical writing in the survival logbook. So we know that this is an established means of spirit communication within this franchise. And I suspect that to some extent it might be Charlie's influence mm. making Gregory go haywire. Which brings me then isn't to my Charlie final, door a type of door? Hold on, is that true? Charlie Door a real thing? I have never heard of that, but I don't doubt it. Let me look it up. Imagine. Charlie Door. Ah, oh, well, I got an English singer-songwriter. I'm doubting that's what it means. Yeah, I don't see anything like that. Sorry. Controversy in recent FNAF history, Gregory as Patient 46, the evil robot mastermind. Now, I know when I first came yeah, out we with just this know theory that this a year is true. ago, people were mad. But here's the thing, you don't have to take my evidence points for it anymore. The recent Tales from the Pizzaplex story... I mean the ones you are going to later ignore? <laughs> the ones that are definitely parallels and not canon? Are you saying that those are canon in this timeline? Please, clarify that. <laughs> I think I want to burn a lot. His relationship with this specific book series drives me nuts. It is weird. Yeah. GGY basically goes and just outright proves it. In GGY, we find out about a boy named Gregory who's getting all the high scores in the Pizzaplex arcade machines. When therapists that's start to go wild. missing, it's confirmed that GGY is the one that's working to bump him off. And when animatronics start getting corrupted by a mysterious Let's glitch, GGY is Gregory. Come on. found inside the code. He even chooses the code name Dr. Rabbit for crying out loud. But obviously, by the time a security breach, is Gregory is reference? working against Burn Trap, Vanessa, there should and be. animatronics. Why? How? The well, is doc the really D is for clear. doctor. I tend to believe that something yep. must have happened to cause him to either lose his memory or be reset in some way. Maybe it was Charlie talking to him in his post-it room. Maybe he hit his head. Maybe it was the connection that he made with Mike on stage in Glamrock Freddy. Not exactly sure, and I don't think we have enough clues to solve any of it yet. But it makes sense from a story perspective why he'd start off evil on Afton's side and then switch to trying to destroy him and not knowing- Thank you, Insomnia, for the two dollars. The book says he has a family. Great. <laughs> okay. So, just none of this is true. None, none of the robot stuff is true. Great. <laughs> ...who he is in Security Breach. And with that, my friends, I'm wrapping this thing up. Congratulations, we are on page 40. 22,000 words of FNAF, baby. Practically just wrote myself a Tales of the Pizzaplex short story. Have I I'm answered everything? Yeah. Does everything fit cleanly? No. <laughs> Does it feel like the best and most cohesive narrative for all these characters that addresses most of the evidence we're given? Yeah. Nope. For me all right, moving on. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll, we'll let it play uh, out. Honestly, it really does. Uh, so let's be honest with ourselves. The DLC uh, will probably come out later this year and prove uh, me completely wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Then comes the movie. Whatever. My descent into madness continues. But regardless, I am so proud of this. This was a massive undertaking. And I'm so proud of our editors who have just destroyed the editing across all four of these installments. You guys are the best. Thank you for pushing through on 20 plus minute uploads. You are unreal and your talent uh, is unrivaled. I'm so lucky to work with you guys every single day and like i mentioned before keep an eye on the channel for an announcement regarding a talk back all right that's th that's pretty much it well uh, here we have it there we have it i don't understand what do you what is there not to understand all thank of you. it thank you to uh, thank you insomnia for the therapy session so does the therapy sessions and the reveal I, I don't know what that's in reference to. Oh, oh, the therapy session saying he has a family. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> Hear what trailer says? Pessimistic. <laughs> All right, well. Isaac, what'd you think? Ah! Yep. Zach, how about you?
I find his passion endearing, but my god, some of these miss the mark so hard it hurts. I don't understand how you do this. <laughs> I don't get it. What do you... What, what, man invented characters. I don't get it. <laughs> well, that was like, none of, the, none of the characters that actually exist in FNAF make sense, so I'm gonna make one that makes more sense. Oh Honestly, I respect that. You know what? It's a great idea, actually. Yeah, totally. Uh, because his characters are clearly better. You know? I mean, yeah. Girl boss Clara was? That was that was fire. That was unlike anything we've ever seen. She was like 100 years old and she was still doing stuff. Yeah, peak. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing wrong with that. Me. Nothing at yeah. all. Nothing. Not a single thing. Nothing at all. None. Zero. Ah. Ah. <laughs> yeah, ah. Much the okay. We are not watching that th uh, Okay. Yep. Timed out. Thank you. I'm guessing it was Zach who did that. <laughs> it was me. Yep. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I got you. <laughs> let me check something out real quick before I uh, end this stream because we are, we are at the end of it. This has been a very long stream. There is so much. There's, I don't like FNAF. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure, buddy. Yeah. Hey. It's it's bad. <laughs> it's really really bad. All right, folks. Oh, and thank you, Sin, for the five dollars supper rats. What's happening? Also, can we add a low poly pigeon into the glass? Ben. Yeah, we can do that, but we're at the end of the stream now. Sin, help me. I, 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 so much FNAF. Help, help me, Sin. Save me, please. The pain. The pain. Isaac will be fine. No, I won't. Anyway, guys, this here is the final look of the desk. There's a lot of stuff. In it. I like that Zach has been in the jar the whole time with on fire. And I'm here with... I do have Dave though. Dave, I love you. You're you're perfect. What? Dave, you're the best. <laughs> He's so good. This has been an amazing stream. Yet another uh, best stream ever, twice in a row. This this is honestly insane. I guess Matt Bat really does bring all the uh, bring all the attention. Thank you, Insomnia, for the posture of the film lore. It's gonna be crazy. Oh yeah, it will oh, be. Yeah. That stream's gonna go hard. Yeah, and remember to tune in on Monday when just uh, been donating. I uh, will be joining me for a nostalgia stream. We're gonna be watching a bunch of older animation musics. Um, we'll be playing some early fan games uh, like Fuck Boys and I think Day Shift. So Ooh. Day shift is so good. Yep. It's not that old, <laughs> but Day shift I guess one. it. I guess it counts. Sure. It counts. It counts because I says it do. There's um, so many older games though. Why are you picking that one? Because it's good. Anyway. It is good. It is good. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed being here, and thank you, to Zach and Isaac, for being here as well. I. I why why did you do this to me? Well, you want the honest answer because it was fun. <laughs> it was fun to fun. get mad. No, no, no. This this was this was this was fun. I have severe brain rot, but this was fun. Yep. I have like a weird relationship with Matt Pat, where even whenever his theories are wrong, I just generally enjoy watching his content. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I find him very entertaining. I like him a lot. Anyway, that's all out of me. Uh, Have a good day, guys.